<laughs> Marvel's bad. Buh, buh, buh. <laughs> No. But we all know it's actually really good. Marvel we is have pretty to good. Sit here and spin this narrative. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredibly difficult to spin this narrative. <laughs> we have so little to work with. <laughs> no. So many. We words just don't have a chance to show the people the greatness that they can't see. Hmm. This is pretty peak fire. Uh, peak fire, stuff. bro. Yeah. For real, for Mar real. Really, it's. It's the it's the peakest fire it's no been, but people it's aren't been giving peak it a on fire. That's accurate. What exactly is that title of the stream? <laughs> I don't know. I was feeling the title of the stream. You know what? Mouthful. Ask Ritsky? me again once we've seen all three of the video essays, and then I will try my best to explain why. I thought How do it was I always suitable? end up in these three triple threat scenarios or double duos? I'm just like. Kill me at the end. <laughs> Kill me, baby, one more time. Oh, that's a good song. I like that. That could be something that you don't. You have to be like a vampire or a zombie. To yeah, say yeah, it could work. Mm. Or like Raish Al Ghul ending up in the Lazarus Pit. Isn't that right, I Rags? Say Rage Whoa. <laughs> Rage no, did you guys? Did you get? No, Ray, Ray Jal Ghul boy isn't. He's not in the Lazarus Pit. That's the. Is, wait, is this the one being guarded by the Confederate general? You sure. don't know your DC shit. DC shows. 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 Yes, I do. He that's the <laughs> Lazarus Pit was guarded by the Confederate general. We bring watched he, this in Crisis on, on Infinite Earth. Oh, wait. I am serious. That's the only one where they pronounce it Raish. I can't remember. Why is it all? Why do you always have to talk about Raish? Rags is talking about uh, what's oh, his name? About Jonah Raish with you guys. Yeah, right, you're talking about shitty Jonah Hex. Hour, right? Yeah, Jonah. Green Arrow goes to to meet that guy. Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty sure it's Jonah Hex in that in in that shitty thing. I think I, I'm not right. sure. Well, I think he's the Jonah Confederate Hex general. Yeah, is Jonah Hex a warlock? I don't know. Let's see. With a last Jonah name like Hex that. Warlock? Question mark. Let's see what Google's got for us. Yeah, what? Uh, where did he get his degree? Is it's Jonah Hex a time traveler? Actually, he has time traveled a couple of times. All right, that answers my question. No. Good so on he's him. basically a warlock. Basically a warlock, a yeah. Times. You're a warlock. Does Jonah Hex ever wear a Confederate uniform? It's the only uh -oh. uniform he'll fit in. What? That's that's as long as he doesn't like, have a Confederate self dispenser. Right? Yeah. Do they mean like you can only fit into it in a in a personal way? Like he's, I don't yeah, I don't want to wear nothing else. Mean. Okay. Well, I only want to wear this. He wants to be ready for when the South rises again. You guys uh, learned a lot about Jonah Hex this stream. Uh, I think we could wrap there. I think it's just pretty solid uh, exploration of DC Comics. Um, but we got some other stuff we could do if you're interested. Like, well, you know, there's some videos. <sighs> which, to be fair, I want to shout out to the good old people in the audience. Hi. They're the ones that these three have been selected from. They uh, okay. will post asking people for what they would like to see us cover. And I scanned through a couple of them, and these caught my eye. And then of the ones that caught my eye, I gave a little look scene. I was like, ooh, these could cause some very interesting conversations. Uh, you know one of them is just for memes, though. Well, <laughs> we have to talk about one thing. I, I looked at the EFAP Discord before we started, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. someone posted that. And I thought that was the thumbnail. And I was wondering, okay, we got Kratos, Master Chief. Why don't we just have Iron Man's hand? <laughs> well, that, that, was, that was really weird for you to make the thumbnail of that. And then I was like, oh, this isn't EFAP number two. So I, it just wasn't pasting the full thumbnail. Right, so EFAP number like, two, oh, you're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm not here. So. Yes. Um, well, all of it will make sense um, the further we go through. And there's no reason for us not to start straight away, unless you know, this is something you guys wanted to bring up. Are you guys going to complain about something again? I would like to bring up something that I thought about <sighs> the other okay. day. This, shut up. Listen. <laughs> so, mother and father, mm -hmm. right? Mother starts with M, and father starts with F, mm -hmm. right? I can't wait where this is going. We're analyzing the words. I'm not following. Your I'm following. I'm, I'm getting it. No, then there's, um, I actually forgot where this was going. Oh, I am. Um, well. <laughs> <I started, laughs> wait, no, it was. It, uh, with yeah, male and yeah, that was where it was going. Yeah, male and female, right? Male starts with M, but mother starts with M. 
female starts with F, but father starts with F. And that just was a thought that occurred to me randomly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, make a, a movie little quirk it. of little, little quirk little. of linguistics. They did. They made the father. Inversion. And that was that was really good. Did you guys see Mother? Remember that movie with Jennifer Lawrence? Yeah. No, I, I saw I Am Mother, and that was really good. There, there was one called Mother that, as far as I remember, I haven't seen it. I just know that it's a it's a Gooba film with it's like Otzi and crazy. That's all I know. What a, what about Mamma Mia? Oh, classic. You get to hear bum, 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 Pierce Brosnan, bum, 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 Colin Firth, and Stellan Skarsgård singing it. Isn't that what you want? Isn't that just the one thing oh, you want? Oh, I was really. I was referring to the. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, we were talking about movies. I, think, I didn't think you were talking about the song. I love it. It's really good. Abba's good. Yeah. How is Stellan Skarsgård's singing voice? Uh, huh? I don't remember. Skarsgård's <laughs> singing voice. Like, is he is he any good? Chat, was it any good? The singing. I remember people making fun of Pierce Brosnan singing. I think. But I can't remember. Oh. Pierce Brosnan. Did, did you do it? Oh. Yeah. Pierce was considerably the worst. So. Oh. They should have Pierce Brosnan <laughs> singing. Sorry, Imagine I, I was like, surprise guest, Pierce Brosnan today. <laughs> 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 nice <tech guy. laughs> He he saw it on our podcast. We, he was the only <laughs> character we liked in Black Adam, so we got him on the podcast. Yay! He just comes in no, like Falcon I don't think I was that bad. Falcon okay. was all right. Falcon was all right. Falcon is that what you think his name is? Falcon. Hawkman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> get it right. <laughs> Falcon man. <laughs> Falcon man. Falcon he's man. the he's the he's the Mister Sega to our Mister Clean. Hmm. Oh, Professor also, disinfectant. of course, we just welcome in general. It's been a while to uh, CJ. How you doing, buddy? I would. Hello. I would do this with everybody, but we see these other fuckers all the time, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so they're <laughs> not like, important. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're not you as prestigious. You know how to make a man feel special. Too important. Exactly. To you're, just, you're in the perfect Hello. episode, I would say, because we're covering things that you know about, like Iron Man. You know about Kratos and lot. Master Chief and Iron Man's hand. Iron Man's hand is quite a big character yeah. in the Iron Man movies. <laughs> It's people with his little pulses. Um, but uh, I, I provided. No, you're me off. Uh, I'll think is that about it. Chris Redfield. <laughs> it is. Oh my god! I was for a second there. I was like, "Who could that be?" It could be seventy-eight different people. And I was like, "Oh my god! It's Chris Redfield from it's actually Resident only one Evil person. 8, Village, Everyone's the amazing favorite. video game. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, is everyone in the watch together? I see six. I don't see seven. Yeah. I'm ready to watch Big Buck Bunny. Oh, well, I guess someone is missing. Mm. They show the still for Big Buck Bunny is him about to be murdered. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's funny, so it's okay. Seconds this before is, the disaster. Um, if they did the furry version of uh, what? What's the Brendan Fraser Fat Man movie? Um, oh, whale. The whale. The whale. Then this would he would be the guy playing it. He looks whaleish for a rabbit. And rabbits you know what? are normally quite lithe and small, but this rabbit is like gargantuan. I mean, maybe that's why they call him Big Buck Bunny. That's probably Big it. Yeah. Buck. Ah, there Big we go. We have seven. Bunny. All right. Whoa. Well, there's no Sorry reason not to get going. This video is called "When the Filmmakers Get Stuck with an Unlikable Character," and it's I'd, focused. I'd... <laughs> I thought you were going to say, when filmmakers get stuck, man. <laughs> 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 filmmakers get stuck, man. Pray um, it doesn't happen to you. Yeah. Now, it, the, the reason this would trigger people, I think, in general, is because Tony Stark is the focus of it. And it's like, unlikable. But that what? might just be a... A, a a form of just the the you know the, who knows what the video is about. It's well received. Well, it so could be a lie. It could be a a conf a We've, twist of words. You know what I mean? This would not be unprecedented for EFAP for the title to just be a fucking lie. But That's we'll true, but it could also just be a hot take. Who knows, really? It could and be. Yeah. Maybe. You know what? We're gonna find out. Why, this, Iron Man. Look at him go. why is this? Why is this title all lowercase? I don't know. Lowercase. Why do you stop fucking doing that? Have some hey, goddamn respect for Maybe your that's his style. Are you jealous that he his can get away with it? His style sucks balls. And you can't. Whoa. Very postmodern. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe it's a bit of time we you have some postmodern because everyone's using too many capital letters and it's ruined. Yeah, well, it. I, and I don't even care if any of you people fucking do it either <gasps> in your videos. I'll own it. Oh, wait. I got the cover on. I'll here. carry on. One second, guys. There you go. <laughs> Chat getting spanked. No offense. There oh, we go. Yeah. All right. Warning. Critical damage. Warning. Critical damage. Whoa. Status. Thrusters well. offline. 
Oh my goodness. Which mm -hmm. game is that? He's fallen. I assume it's a game. It was a good be an animation. Be be him because he is. Whoa, who's doing that? Oh my oh. goodness gracious. Oh, Stop. someone's doing something. Someone user, is skipping through the video, is. and whoever did that, you banned officially from Oh no! It's my unfortunate. Fault. It's my push to talk is right. I didn't know it would um, also control the video. It's just, skipping uh, us I through the whole video. Mark. You can't just skip to the end, okay, Mark? <laughs> That's not oh, how it works. Goodness. Ruining it again. Spoil the video. Gotta get through this. No cheating. Yeah. Warning: critical damage. Mark causing critical damage to the EVA. No. Oh. I am man. Yep, he's falling. This is gonna hurt. This is a 2007 Iron Man advertorial video created by then future Deadpool director Tim Miller. It was All one right. of three promotional shorts Alrighty. designed to introduce the character of Tony Stark and Iron Man to a generation of kids and mainstream moviegoers, many of whom at the time really didn't know who Iron Man Can't was. You beat in the background. Do you sure, know yeah. where I learned about Iron Man? Where did you learn about Iron Man? I learned about Iron Man at the Mecca of Childhood, which was of course Chuck E. Cheese. Hmm. Because oh. there was a there was an Iron Man arcade game. It was like a, it was a Marvel Avengers arcade game way before the Disney stuff. It was it was when I was a wee lad. And that's when I learned that there was this character called Iron Man and he looked really cool. He had the classic outfit. He shot laser beams, had rockets and stuff. I was like, wow, this Iron Man guy's really, really cool. Before that, 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 that's how I learned about Iron Man's existence. Never knew about him before then, because I wasn't like a comic guy. So I wonder how everyone learns about these sort of obscure-ish kind of heroes. The big blast of Marvel information I got was from watching episodes of the animated shows and the uh, Top Trumps and Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Those are like the Ooh. big sources where I was like, oh, I know stuff now. I know yeah. this guy does this thing. I bought a set of trading cards called like Marvel Universe Series 3 in like the early 90s. And it, it had, I think, like 350 cards in it. And every one of them had a, a pretty decent picture of the character and then a big list of their, their attributes, how fast they are, how strong they are, a brief summary of their origin. And that's kind of how I learned everything I know about Marvel heroes like, and when I was I don't know, eight, nine, something like that. I wish I could remember what the name of that game was called. If I if I scrolled around and found it, I'd, I'd know. It wasn't like a fighting game. It was one of those games. There's like the like there was one for the Simpsons, and there was one for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, where you'd go from left to right, and all of you would beat up the bad guys and fight a boss together, and you could go up and down and stuff. But it wasn't like a one v one fighting game. That's you Simpsons mean to beat him up? Fun. Like a beat him up? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. Rage. Exactly. Uh, yeah, the Simpsons one is fun. It is fun. It is, yeah. That was one of my very few and possibly first exposure to The Simpsons when I was very young, because my parents wouldn't let me watch The Simpsons. It was, mm. it was too uh, see, that, that was... brutal. My, my parents didn't let me watch it either, but fuck them. <laughs> oh. Damn. I would, mine not, let me see I would Simpsons. not fuck my parents. I'll fuck your parents, but I won't fuck mine. <laughs> I think that Simpsons and that X Men game were probably my first exposure to to multiplayer gaming having more than two players at one time. Uh, I uh, think video think games was, just two players. And... I, I think there was an X Men one something. as well. Yeah, there is an X Men one. It plays really similarly. I think it's made by the same people. Yeah. I like those styles of games. Uh, I played Castle Crashers with a friend. Ooh. That was really fun. That was uh, I like those man. styles. They're, those are fun uh, kinds of games. It's not nah, a man, neat style. Castle When's the last time that you played a uh, beat 'em up? I think it was it was last year. It was late last year, probably around. No, not late. Like August or September, when I went to a friend's house and he had Castle Crashers on his Xbox 360. We were playing like Halo Reach and stuff together on the Xbox 360. Oh. It was fun. It was fun. Just nice. doing some nostalgia. We played Four Swords on the GameCube slash Game Boy with the connection, the little, the little cable that would link your Game Boy Advance to oh, your yeah, GameCube. Oh, man. Remember yeah. When he actually won. has all the components. He has the Game Boys, the Four Sword games, and all the cables, and a GameCube. And we put it on a little CRTV and we played, uh, yeah. Little, uh, I remember uh, in, fun uh, nostalgia games in uh, Pokemon Sapphire when they they had like the GameCube there and they talked about the like the System Link cable thing and I was like, wait a minute, can I play my Game Boy on my on my GameCube? <laughs> Holy shit, that's exciting! 
Well, we're since we're we're, we're already on a deep deep tangent. Uh, <laughs> do you remember speaking of Pokemon and crossovers? Do you remember the e the the e reader Pokemon cards? Uh, Does anyone I, here remember I, those? I know I know of them, but I've never used let them. Me, or let seen me post, them in action. I can explain this. Let me post a picture, and you might remember. But the e-reader Pokemon cards were these fucking abominations, where they'd have a <laughs> Pokemon card, but it would have these little e-reader thingies on the 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 left and the bottom, and you would slide it into a. Here, I can get a picture here. It's like you basically a... slide it into something that looks like a credit card reader that yeah. you would attach to the top of your Game Boy Advance. You could even and, get, you could get the original Zelda as well as the original Metroid for e-reader as well, like little cards that just had those full games on them. And I remember how everyone like every, we all had Pokemon cards when we were in you know grade school and stuff. And then these fuckers, these fucking e-reader cards, they somehow it's like a virus. I don't remember anyone ever buying them, but somehow we all just ended up getting them we all had some of these in our collections somehow i don't know where they came from and no one had an e-reader but these cards just sort of <laughs> popped up and they came and went i don't i, I, they, I feel like i skipped this uh, somehow i don't know i don't, I don't remember i, I don't think it lasted very long i think it was one of those attempts at making this how do we get like the po we have got the pokemon cards we got the games we got the game boys and they did all of those things where they want to they, they want to get accessories in the early days of handheld stuff, like linking two Game Boy Advances together to play like multiplayer games by a physical cable. They had the e-reader stuff, you know, all the little knickknacks and doodads that they tried. Hmm. I think they was bundle really these with the regular card packs. I can't remember. Not the yeah, e-reader specifically. Like and they were specifically for e-readers, but you could get like mix packs of them, like that looked like a deck, a little pack of trading cards, like a three pack. I think. I think what happened a lot of the time was that young kids would go and buy a pack of Pokemon cards because, remember, gambling used to be fun. And then <laughs> they wouldn't realize that, oh, e-reader means it has these things on the left and the bottom, and it has that e-logo. I guess this is for some weird gadget that I just don't have. But at least I have Pokemon cards, so, you know, whatever. It's a, a similar thing they did with uh, PlayStation Vita was these little almost QR code things that would make AR games that you could interact with the touch screen and I the back camera that, yeah. yeah it looked like you were playing yeah, the yeah. game in your living room back when that was kind of an obsession with uh <laughs> games <laughs> for a little bit a couple of years nintendo even had that labo thing that has it's like a vr headset mm -hmm. that you can make out of cardboard the as well cardboard as well, yeah. weird accessories mm. i bet nintendo has a they've got a host of both successful and failed gadgets, knickknacks, doodads, add-ons, all sorts of stuff. From especially Remember Amiibos? When... Yeah. Oh, I oh, think yeah. so. I there's a little plastic were, minifigures, uh, right? Little trophies. Yeah. Yeah. I've got pretty much all the Zelda and Metroid Amiibos. Those, they're, they're cute. You know, kind of a waste of money, but Dude, I like them. You could like, put them on the thing and they'd unlock something in the game, right? Like a skin or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, are they not still actively making those? I think yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 They I think they are. They, got, uh, they were discontinued while I was working at the toy store, as far as I remember. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not true. I, I think they're still making them. I remember okay. that there was, there was like a new one for the new Zelda. Yeah, I, I have the Tears of the Kingdom, Zelda, and Link. Yeah. yeah. I, so I think there was a game that I kind of didn't care. I was like, oh, that's fine. Well, it's very possible that maybe they yeah. uh, maybe they only sell it in certain countries. Other, maybe they scale it back. Remember, there were other things that were happening at that time, oh, like Disney Infinity, Infinity and stuff. Yeah. That's the one that yeah. they totally canceled. Oh, it might have been. I, I don't might even, be mixing them up. Yeah, I don't even know about Disney Infinity. God, well, keeping track of all that in the Toy Store was a fucking nightmare because there were so was, many um, characters that I didn't even know well, which they belonged to. Wasn't the beginning of it was the what was the Spyro spin off thing? What was that called? What, what yeah, the, was the Skylanders? Was yeah, there was that. Yep, yeah, yeah, I remember that like as well. Yeah, yeah, oh, a wait. billion. We of have full thing. sections for all this of them. This Infinity logo, like, looks familiar. They started to like. Uh, it was funny because the the fully stocked one was clearly the unsuccessful one. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Was, uh, mm -hmm. 
I have Disney Infinity 2 with um, an Anakin and Obi-Wan thing for it because Ninja Theory, the people who did Hellblade and um, like that Devil May Cry reboot and Heavenly Sword, they actually did the Ninja Jedi Warrior. combat when they added Star Wars to Disney Infinity. So I was like, oh, I might actually fire that up. It was okay, but it kind of just played like a Lego game with slightly better combat. I'm assuming Amiibo came Devil first May out of those, Cry, right? the Skylanders uh, and the... Skylanders was first. Oh, was first. interesting. Okay. Money. And then everybody wanted you, to do it. Yeah, I you, think even a lot of people. Um, chips that was like, it had a Star Fox crossover. I think it was called like Star oh, Starlink or Star Command or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that was a game on. Uh, I think it was on Switch. Yeah, that Ubisoft made that. A lot of people who are um, really young. Wait, what's this? Holy shit, Maz. Five hundred dollars, my dude. Thank you so much. That's I don't know when you'll point him out, but like, geez, thank you so much. A red boy. Dang. That's a sad one. Let's um, see. After Halloween 2019, my wife sent more. Pictures. Well, I'll just read it. Right? <laughs> Why half read okay. it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm After really Halloween in the lore. 2019, my wife sent Mola pictures of our pumpkins carved as Mola rags and wolf. I remember that. Uh, we I got him on a meme that. fab, I think. That was one month after she was diagnosed with cancer and given a year to live. Yesterday, uh, she finally lost the battle. Any of you toxic drinkers tonight, please toast to Corinne, I assume, pronounced Corin. Corin. Oh, Corin. Uh, she was 33. Well, mm. sorry to hear that, man. That's, that's, that that sucks, man. That. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, but... that's... But she, wait, so they, so she, they told her that she only had a year and she managed to get another four years. Looks like it, yeah. So that's, okay. Uh, At least yeah. I'm I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Obligatory fuck cancer, of course. Uh. One of the yeah, cancer's messed uh, up. We've lost so many good people to cancer. cancer. But I, I mean, at least you got more time than you thought that you were gonna get. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean, you know, thanks for uh the the, the carvings. We thought they were awesome, but uh, they were very awesome. Mm. You certainly remember them. Thirty three. Way too soon. The tragedy. That sucks, especially when, like, that's basically my age. I can't, you know, imagine, in, you know, being that age and have it cut short. It's a terrible thing. No, it is crazy the amount of people that we lose to all kinds of uh, insane shit like that. Cancer's one of those ones that just, uh, I've, I've said before, it feels like a, it literally is a glitch, right? Like, in terms of how, how it would be categorized or explained to, like, a yeah, child, how it, it ain't works. it fair, yeah. you know? Some people just get cancer, and then it, you know can kill them or give them this really long terrible battle they have to fight and it it just ain't right you know the sooner we get rid of it the better hopefully every year we get closer to stamping it out for good but yeah uh absolutely appreciate uh all of that and uh we will we'll really do our do best to you. keep your mind in a in a more entertainment focused place perhaps a bit of escapism tonight because we got these three videos there's, there's some wacky opinions in here especially if we want to you know end up talking about Pokemon uh, e-cards. You know, it's just something that comes <laughs> up, so hopefully that's alright too, but yes. Uh, sorry for your loss, and um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, uh, the one thing I was going to actually ask is, because uh, I didn't hear a freaky give it ads, but what, what cause I don't think I've ever heard you answer this question. What was your introduction to Marvel, like, knowing stuff about it? Was it comics, or? My introduction to Marvel in general? Yeah. Uh... I don't know, it probably would have been, like, uh, X-Men, like, one of the, like, Animation? the X-Men movies. Oh, X-Men movies, No, okay. uh, would have been, yeah, would have been, like, X-Men or X-Men 2. Because it was so funny for me, because I just had, like, random, deeper, specific knowledge, but then a general lack of knowledge on Marvel. Like, I knew that Apocalypse's name was, uh, it's, like, En Saba Nur or something like that. Like, I just knew that. I was like, why? I was like, I don't know, I just saw the Top Trumps. <laughs> like, that's where the description had it, so I yeah. that's just information that's in my head now. Um, and then, of course, the Ultimate Alliance game, like, filling in lots of really cool shit. In the same way the ba Batman Arkham games will have all this kind of crazy lore from the comics, almost like direct uh, references or adaptations of, like, works from similar writers that are a part of the project, but that it introduces a whole new set of people in a really cool way. Um, we're not really at that point right now. Any new audiences that Marvel's pulling in aren't exactly going to encourage people to search <laughs> further into their stories. No. You know? Um, anyway, let us see where this video is heading. Because most people never heard of Iron Man, most of the population. 
guess it helped, because a year later, Jon Favreau's linchpin blockbuster would go on to gross over half a billion at the box office, launching the most successful film franchise of all time. Better times, eh? <laughs> Man, looking yeah. back, he looks Remember so that? young and full of life and in the sand and in now the sand he's full of life. And now and now the MCU is just Oh, it really takes you back to the beginning. Absolutely. Push it! But while Iron Man's international appeal would rejuvenate the comic book movie industry, and Robert Downey Jr. in the MCU would solidify the character as one of Marvel's most likable comic book heroes, Iron Man didn't exactly start out that way. Back in 2008, under the impending shadow of Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight, Marvel- They're dead. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, I'm, I'm more kidding it's a maybe but you could definitely have killed them by doing that you could have killed them and also how what are you could you your legs are broke i was gonna say he's, he's got some big old booties i think i'm not sure exactly i, I guess steel boots uh like well Mario it has boots. to it still has to transmit all that force and to land like that and to not be phased by it that's He's got rip bad knees. springs. I mean, no, no, no. The Dark Knight is a very, very good movie. It's great. It's amazing. The Dark Knight's really good, guys. I don't know what we were thinking. I don't know what we were thinking. Why would someone sounds uh, passive aggressive there? You coming after? No, the night, right? play the video. Future. Whoa, 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 okay, fine. I guess we can. I, I just, uh, I, I, I had, love like, the I've Dark Knight. Ever actually thought about his, the safety of his knees in this moment? But, yeah, you know. <laughs> he has bat knees. They're very like, Marvel. <laughs> was staking their future as an independent movie studio on a character who is literally designed to be oppositional. Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Oppositional is an interesting That's word to use, but we'll see what he says about it, see where he's going. On creating Iron Man, Stan Lee once said, I think I gave myself a dare. It was the height of the Cold War. If there was one thing the young readers hated, it was war. It was the military. I got a hero who represented that to the hundredth degree, a weapons manufacturer, an industrialist. I thought it would be fun to take the kind of character nobody would like and make them like him. But it's exactly yep. what makes Tony Stark so unlike conventional superheroes that ended up paving the way for one of the most compelling and successful narrative through lines in mainstream cinema. Because more okay. than any other character in the MCU... Yeah, the thing is so far, this is all still kind of... Yeah, just... it, he's setting up. He's it's just yeah, set yeah. up. Still setting establishment up, so. stuff, yeah. So I don't far, disagree we're... yet. <laughs> we're yeah. on like a shaky <laughs> crowd. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pretty reasonable Tony so far. Character Characterization and his true character. Are the hmm. Characterization <laughs> okay. and his true character. So, characterization, true mm. character, not a distinguishing set of categories that I would use, but I'm always up for mm -hmm. people to give me what they mean by that, I guess. I would assume it would be who he acts or how he acts and versus what he truly is privately or on the inside, but. But the know. problem with that, I guess, is the true character in that instance would still come under characterization. And say a lot. That, say that. So if you're going to put them to two things, like how he acts typically and then what he does in private, whatever you said, I'd be like, well, aren't both of those still characterization, though? There's a movie, you know? A story. Yeah, the fact that he is, even if, yeah, even if he's pretending to be something in front of people, that that is who he is that's him acting a certain way him exhibiting elements of his character whether it's because he's trying to whether he's very full of himself or egotistical or he's always comparing himself to everyone he's overly competitive insecure there could be a number of reasons for it but that would be an uh, that would be an element of his true character yeah yeah the most <laughs> at odds with each other I, i'm just not the the hero type clearly in his seminal book, Story, Robert McKee writes, Characterization is the sum of all observable qualities of a human being, all aspects of humanity we could know by taking notes on someone day in and day out. Okay. Now this, on the other hand, okay. is Agent Romanoff's assessment of you. Now, if you've watched through the MCU, then you know how Tony Stark is characterized. A uh, genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Um, that's actually not... Uh, uh, so, the problem is that I mean, that clip is already past Iron Man 1 and 2, which have way more than those categories, right? Like, he's a very layered, well, detailed I mean, character, but... 
one of the points in that scene is that, that you know it's like steve says right after that i you know i guys with none of that worth 10 of you because the 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 actual more important thing that's being driven at that tony stark has is like hot you know yeah, if he's, he's talking actually... about how many in the world see him versus who he is that's one thing but mm -hmm. he's characterized this as characterization, which I'd be like, well, yeah, that's what I don't understand. There's a lot. Uh, to, to summarize, every characteristic Tony presents in Iron Man One, Two, and Avengers would take a bit, you know, a lot of stuff. And what do you say to your other nickname, the Merchant of Death? Yeah, apparently I'm volatile, self-obsessed, play well with others. Textbook narcissism. Agreed. That's good stuff. <laughs> but uh, also, mm -hmm. yes, the, <laughs> most of those are more so how people see him than what, yeah. he, who he is. It's quite the laundry list of flaws to sell to a mass audience. But director Jon Favreau and his team on the first Iron Man movie did something clever. I mean, aside from the obvious. They pitted their fundamentally flawed protagonist against a similarly characterized antagonist. Tony Stark and Obadiah Stane share a profession, wealth, power, hubris, a dictator's need for control. I mean, Stanley's cursory description of Iron Man could have just as easily been used to describe Ironmonger. A dictator's need for control yeah, in Tony Stark? I, I don't agree. Uh, I, why wouldn't we have just put it as a desire for control, which is much more of a human yeah. nature thing, to be honest with you? Yeah, dictators people, need. I mean, that's why that's why people are nervous when they get into airplanes, even though it's the safest way to travel. It's that lack of control that makes you worried. Mm. Um, we want to have control over things. And it's pretty natural. If he's about to highlight like Tony doesn't come across anywhere near as likable without Obadiah Stain as a foil, I don't know that I agree with that. Um, no, I mean, the first scene you see him is super well, like, super charismatic and likable immediately. Obadiah is not revealed as a villain, like as a no. much more antagonistic role until far later in the film. At that point, I'm pretty sure everyone's on Tony's side because of what you see him oh, go through. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, and we see him trying to be better, which is already super invigorating in, in a sense of like, oh, yeah, I, mean, I want that, this guy that, to win. Because at that point, he already said like, oh, we're going to stop producing weapons uh, altogether, going to shut down everything. Yeah, and, and Obadiah really... panicking on that note. I don't yeah. think even I don't even call that like a, uh, a you know like a desire for. He's just like a businessman at that point, being like, "Whoa, yeah, our like, stock okay, is going to uh, explode!" Hang on, hang on. Like, yeah. yeah, you were just in terror, terrorist captivity for three months. Uh, yeah, now you go you're about to nap. torpedo our company. Please don't. Like, if you want yeah. to you know, have a conversation, but then later on, it becomes clear that he's he's going to stop him no matter what. So. Right, right. But I mean, even if, if he's trying to look at Tony Stark's character as a whole over the entire series, the dictator's need for control thing really doesn't make sense because of civil war. He was the one trying to give away control. I would go as far I mean, as the just knock out the dictator the part. Company. I'm fine with him desi desiring some form of control. He wants to control the situation to prevent suffering, right? That's what Tony yeah. would probably yeah. say. You could even say that to Captain America to a degree. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's to yeah. His own, you know, I think to an extent, you could argue that all superheroes are uh, agents of, ex you know, putting their control on the world in some way, shape, or form, but usually in the form of trying to protect people. Yeah. Um, Nothing wrong I think with it's that. also interesting... Uh, by him saying that we need Oda, Obadiah Stane as a foil to, you know, get us to like Tony Stark is interesting, considering that while he was playing all of those clips of Tony Stark that were sans Obadiah, we were all going, huh, oh boy, I sure do like Tony Stark. It's so, some, I, I mean, the, the what people usually talk about is like, why do we like Tony? It's like, well, you, you see him go through something horrible, and then he sees that it's a result of his own potential, like, manufacturing. He sees what happens to... Uh, so many people as a result of it and then starts to want to change it himself personally and designs himself a weapon to go against the weapons of his that have been sold to the people that are hurting people. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a story mm -hmm. in and of itself. It's so interesting. It's like, what about Obadiah? It's like, no, no, sure, Obadiah is a part of it, but like, I, I, I don't even think he's the main factor for having Tony become so likable so quickly. I mean, especially because he's only in the first movie. Spoiler. Um, but there's no, other. like, the, all, <laughs> yeah, all the other ones too. add and add and add and add, and those are <clears throat> without Obadiah Stane. I think he's talking about in the still... context of just the first movie, but I'd still say it's fair Maybe. to say that people, most people seem to like Tony the most out of all characters in the MCU by the end of his story, even. So, you know, it's worth thinking about uh, how did that happen, mm -hmm. especially if Obadiah's not in most of it, like, the vast yeah. majority of it, but, he, uh, yeah. Probably probably also worth noting that the sort of 
general character archetype and personality that you get in Tony Stark is probably similar to a few other um, sort of character types that we see done more poorly than well. Uh, like Harley Quinn comes to mind. Um, you have like Jinx in uh, Arcane is a good example of that sort of kind of character done really well and written really well. well Manic um, Pixie um, Dream Girl is the Alice in Batwoman. That's a good example of it done well. Oh, yeah, she's great. She's uh, really, really good. Absolutely. Good stuff, yeah. Uh, but yeah, with Tony Stark, you have that kind of personality in a character. If it's written poorly or even so-so, a lot of people will come across as you know really not liking them at all. Um, well, you so can almost see like maybe... The, uh, yeah. almost like a first half of that is accepting as best I can uh, along with that like how this point could be defended that Obadiah is important as a, a mirror to, to Tony but as some people in chat have highlighted and I, I was just thinking about yeah when, when these movies were coming out do you remember one of the many primary complaints about the state of the MCU in phase one and sort of in every and sort of in single two? villain is the inverse of the hero yeah in a bad way mm. like oh look I'm you but bigger or I'm you, but I have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, okay, okay. I'm you, but the serum did not work on me. Yeah, and I'm all... I'm, yeah, and I'm then with the... Iron Man, it was starting to get a bit... Is it? it was just like, oh, he fights another Iron Man. You know, oh, he, when, when he says is Iron Man. inverse, I assume he means, like, morally. Like, they're, they're the same, but they, they're like... Oh, okay, I gotcha, gonna... I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But Red Skull, who I was referring to there, did... It, he got power from the yes. serum taking the yeah. inverse effect it did to... to um. Yeah, and then you have Abomination, who's like, I'm the Hulk, but gross. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure. And then Thor, you end up having him fight Loki, which is probably the most interesting in terms of a dynamic, because that's the one they ended up banking on several times. He's back in Thor 2, and he's back in Avengers. But yeah, that was a good one. Iron Monger, yeah, no, would... one, no one really misses Iron Monger. Mm. They're like, oh man, I wish Iron Monger comes back. You know? <laughs> they want a great character. <laughs> Oh, but I stay. No, and that was that were the problems we had with the MCU. Ah, better <laughs> times, mate. Because so that's the nice. thing. One of the criticisms that many people have of Iron Man's third act is Obadiah goes from being an interesting kind of antagonistic force to Yo, straight up super villain. Fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is so. I, guess I need what I'm this reactor. Like, I'm gonna rip it out of Tony Stark and let him die. It's like, uh, oh, that's a bad idea. <laughs> feel like this video has presented something that sounds true, but fundamentally isn't both when the film came out and in retrospect. Uh, Obadiah Stane was not really an important factor to making everyone like Tony Stark. I would argue the most important I, factor was Robbie Downey Jr. I think so. Mm -hmm. He is incredibly charismatic and he plays that role perfectly, perfectly well. Perfect casting. Um, yeah. Uh, I, would, I would say that the, the bad version of Tony Stark, like Tony Stark but done shittily with a lot of parallels, would be Galadriel from Rings of Power. Ugh. I think there's a lot of parallels you could draw, except she's a really shitty character in how she's written. Tony's well written in that same thing. But at some point, things change. Their arcs diverge, revealing a separation between what a character seems to be on the surface and who they truly are. So you didn't need that bubble okay. there when your audio balancing would have been a bit different. <laughs> yeah, or you have to, you're, you're giving me, you want me to listen to you talk, but you also want me to read yeah. something that I, I can sort of hear, but not bubble. really hear. Well, just play the clip without... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah just I mean. play, the, play the short little clip. It's like two seconds. Just, just, just play the clip instead of, you know? Um, I, I was also going to bring, it seems like he's made it clear now, so he's saying... How they how they present on the surface versus who they are underneath is his characterization okay. versus true character. Hmm. But of course, I assume but everyone I feel here like that's would... all characterization is. Yes. You know, that's just all characterization. It's almost like when he's a saying character it reveals from an in-universe perspective someone. or something. Um, but I don't even. That's just strange to me. Yeah, it is. I don't. I don't know why it wouldn't just be categorized as characterization. It's just. Like it's it's all encompassed in describing who they are to some extent, and I wouldn't even argue. You know, like if if he was selfish throughout the entire movie, but then he does a selfless act at the end, it's not even like that. Like Iron Man has his character scene. I, I say that as, as though I'm being critical of it. I'm not. When he's uh, talking to Pepper, right, and she basically says like, "You're gonna yeah, die if you keep um... doing this," and then he explains his fundamental motivation, which is entirely like something that leads you into seeing his selfless acts. 
it's not common where you would have an instance of what this video would describe as true character not being seen by other people in the same way that the characterization is seen by the other people, which is why I find it, I guess, a bit of a strange distinction to make. Yeah, because yeah, kind of everything you do, how you carry yourself in front of others, that's a part of who you are. That is your mm -hmm. nature. We don't, nobody behaves in public the exact same way that they behave in private. They're just fundamentally different things. You're just not mm -hmm. going to do the same things in front of other people that you do alone. Well, yeah, so we that's, can... that's like everybody. We obviously know there are many people out there who would claim to be like some of the most moral and selfless people ever, but that if push came to shove, they would just like immediately run away. Certain mm. scenarios, and it's like, and vice versa. Might be a lot of people who are like, yeah, I, I think... don't care about anything, and then they see a kid in trouble, and they're like, I gotta help him. I think the term characterization is a function of like what the audience is seeing, what they're observing and learning. Like I could see, like you could have a, a character that has a true nature that is unseen in a movie, but all the stuff that's in the movie is the characterization of them, and so, like potentially, you could have an audience perception of a character that's way different than when, what they actually are. I don't know why you would make a movie like that. I'm just saying for the sake of example, but... I think the yeah. way people normally split this up is how the character is seen, how we see them, how they see themselves, and then who they are fundamentally. You can make those categories, not characterization versus true character. I feel like these are confusing. Um, well, because right. uh, it, part of what would make it confusing is what happens when we're dealing with a character who... What if they're static, you know? What if they are a static character who doesn't change? And so their characterization and true character would be one and the same because there is nothing that they're concealing or hiding, you know? Or they're super secure about themselves, so they mm -hmm. behave virtually identically between, um, you know, what they, how they are in front of others and how they are alone, which is yeah. a very rare thing. Very, very rare thing. Uh, well, I mean, but, uh, here's a... I mean, the interesting thing would be if you applied it to villains, there are plenty of villains where the characterization and true character distinction is not useful. Where what the, you know, especially if you're talking about some of the, what's the name of the, the one in Thor The Dark World? What was that guy's name? Malekith. Yeah, what's the difference between his, what, where is the characterization and true character line drawn for him and his motives, you know? You're asking me to remember <laughs> Thor of the Dark World, so I, I don't know. I can't help you, man. I was, I was half tempted to make his name up and see how many people knew, like Malados or something. And you like, well, it started I with M A L, so I'll buy it, whatever. It's fine. Malevolas. The... Malevolas, played by Orlando Bloom. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so just point out, like, I'm not too psyched by his categories, but let's see how he uses them. Maybe uh, this will make some sense. And it's here that we begin to lean into McKee's next point, which is that characterization is not the same as true character. Okay. True character, McKee says, mm. is revealed in the choices a human being makes under pressure, and the revelation of true character in contrast or contradiction to characterization is fundamental to all fine storytelling. So I, yeah, I want to hear that again. I'm, like, I'm, I hear that again. I'm finding these definitions a bit Watching Trash. Iron Man save yeah. that guy, I would happily tweet. argue his characterization instead of That's true what I character. Yeah. Call it, yeah. It That's is true. characterizing him. It is a choice that he made that tells us who he is. I don't know why that would be attributed to true character as a distinction. Yeah. I don't, I don't even I mean, know if that makes sense in... in... Uh, hmm. How why do you say it's true character? Um, he said, uh, he said that it was true character, it was the decisions they make under pressure. I'm not sure why the under pressure part, why wouldn't we just be uh, saying that any decision well, that a I character don't... makes contributes to their characterization? Whether because they're also, I, I just don't like that. I don't like the idea that what you do under pressure is who you really are. I think it's kind of the opposite. I think that uh, when you're under pressure, you often do things that are just like, they're, they're out of panic. You don't think about them. You just... Yeah, it can go both ways, really. Yeah, I can go, understand yeah, it, both. Yeah, so there's this idea of maybe. I mean, it's like the old saying: don't uh, don't judge two people for the don't don't judge too harshly people who've made decisions under pressure or um, you know, in high stakes scenarios when you're in a place of like safety and comfort. You know, so if yeah i don't like the idea of oh you, who you really are is when you're under pressure i don't think i don't think that's necessarily true at all 
necessarily time... I'll agree but like because oh. there are times where it totally reveals something about a person when they hope it to certainly keep it can secret, yeah. you know or just yeah but at the time he he saves that guy and opens his parachute at that time I don't believe that I, I wouldn't think that Tony Stark wouldn't do that because he'd never try to like not save anyone like the whole point he's here is to get rid of all these terrorists here to <clears throat> Save all these civilians. I think you are so absolutely why would it... right, because what you're probably uh, inching out there is that that's a moment in which it's going to cost him, you know, time he could sp spend escaping against people who are actively trying to hurt him slash are antagonistic toward him. However, yes. are absolutely not like heroes, but they're innocent people. They're just doing their job. And uh, Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it makes sense to us with everything that we know that Tony would absolutely try and save them. So we don't go in that scene. We don't see him do that and go, ah, see, that's who he truly is. We 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 was like no that that's in line and it's it's like a good moment because yeah. it backs up a lot of what we thought to be true anyway. Yeah, exactly. Character, true character, true character. McKee says is Wait. revealed in the choices a human <laughs> being no, makes epic. under pressure, and the revelation of true character, in contrast or contradiction to characterization, is fundamental to all fine storytelling. Yeah, see, I, I I find the the distinction strange when you could simply say that any contradiction, like contrast or even potential contradiction to other aspects of their characterization is what makes for, you know, an interesting story rather than trying to separate it into like completely distinct categories. Cuz like at what point do you say that the the choice was made under a sufficient amount of pressure that it rises to the category of true character mm. rather than just saying it is characterization, all of it is? Well, there's I mean, an equal there there's a good argument to be made that your character can come through when there are no stakes or cost for you at all and yeah. at the same time who you really are is also when the stakes are really really high it depends on the person and the scenario if you have nothing to lose and nothing to gain and it doesn't impact you at all and you still decide to make a particular choice well maybe that says something about you but is that to say that a guy like Steve Rogers, who is genuinely pretty good and characterized as being an all-around good dude all the time, is he not a hero because he's just never pushed beyond his limit in that respect? No, I, I think we get that in the in, in the sort of the first act, I guess you could say, of the the first uh, Captain America movie when he is. You know, I imagine when he is, that yeah, when he this guy the would. I, I imagine this guy would absolutely limit. agree that there are plenty of he would he would say that there are plenty of instances where uh you see Cap's true character, which is hyper selfless, um, you know, the hero man. Well, yeah, they make uh, sure to establish that before he becomes a but superhero. Again, like if I if I watched the scene of him jumping on the grenade to save everybody, I wouldn't view that yeah. as ah, uh, that's his true character. It'd just be well that's that's his characterization. That's who, yeah. yeah, that's him. That's, that's yeah. who he is. I just find the I find the categories strange because they kind of seem um they they, they seem feed into each other like, very blurry and and that it only makes things more confusing than just saying it's all characterization. I'm not necessarily going to say this is like fallacious or anything, but there is an element of me that kind of wants him to explain why this gentleman he's quoting should really be taken super seriously and why this is the definition that's well, being used. Well, the implication is he agrees um, with him, right? And he's going to explain why he's right. I, I guess, yeah, I, I guess so. It's just, like, why, I mean, like, this is a, this is basically, to me, it's some guy. No, um, but, right. The, which is... <laughs> remember the, um, wasn't it the, the glass <laughs> onion one, or was it... I know, I know Brown Table did it once, but the the famous one is, this reminds me of Karl Marx. It was just this like, what the Karl Marx. fuck? <laughs> like, it's like, why the this fuck do I even care about what Karl Marx says? It's absolutely <laughs> a video essay playbook thing of just just quote someone. You just gotta quote, quote somebody. Someone, yes. um, obviously we did, that's where the, like, the Bilbo beam partially comes from. A lot of other things. Yeah, up, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's just a thing they have to do. It makes you seem more well-read or more considered when... Like I said, I, I feel like he needs to address the fact that these could easily be the same thing and there's nothing stopping them from being the same thing. And the line between them is incredibly blurry, like uh, Fringy mentioned. Um, but for re reference, everybody, this is called when filmmakers get stuck with an unlikable character and we are halfway through exactly. So. And also, I, I don't think it was ever established that he was an unlikable character. I don't remember him ever being well, so he said earlier, unlikable. He has a lot of traits was, he... that are like, you know, it's difficult to make someone like them when they're when labeling all those traits, right? Like narcissistic yeah. or self-centered, whatever. Mm. 
well, being a weapons time, manufacturer the... and stuff like that. I think that's what he mentioned as well. Yeah, it's just cool. the... I guess that's already... Well, that's kind of the, the built-in baggage you're bringing with that, is that if you make mm. weapons, you're a bad person. Well, not even though in the test for the Jericho missiles, he shows a, like, a very high degree of charm, like charisma exactly. and showmanship. So, like... The... That's the like, yeah, performance he's an arms dealer, but he's definitely charming. As was mentioned, the performance from Robert Downey Jr. gave him so much likability, it was insane. I'm not going to deny the writing, of course, too, it's, it's absolutely, but to imply, as was mentioned earlier, that Obadiah Stain as a foil is partly, like, or significantly, whatever, however he sort of put it, I, I just don't think it has much to do with Obadiah at all. And then secondly, the, um, we come to like Tony with, like, before the first act's even over. Like, uh, it's... Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of it is just watching a human try to get out of a horrible, horrible situation. And then we're kind of on his side, and then we start to, you know, build him back up uh, when he's when he's home. So, yeah, this um, not working so far, but we'll see. We're not doing a good enough job. We can do better. We're going to do something else. Like what? This relationship is in some ways the inverse of what we see in, say, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. Intelligence is not a privilege. It's a gift. And you use it for the good of mankind. There we had two characteristically good men of similar sense. I, it's, would you say intelligence is a privilege? Well, he wouldn't say it. He said it's a gift that you need to use for the good of mankind. Are you saying oh. that, like oh, Otto, right, just... Otto thinks that calling it a privilege is incorrect? Yeah. I don't know. I guess in a way it is. I don't know. Just thinking abilities and passions, where one is driven to use a common power for evil. And here, we have two characteristic- Oh wait, he's like mind controlled. But, you know, mm. like from his it's, tentacles. Yeah, it's a bit weird to say he was using it for evil, I guess you could say yeah. that. Right. Yeah. ...bad men, where one is driven to use a common power for good. Wait, sorry, did we just categorize Tony was just a bad man? Go back, go back, yeah. I, I need to hear this again. Here, we have two characteristically bad men, where one is driven to use a common power. I don't think I agree with that. I don't agree. I, I no. just, I don't, yeah, not I even don't. Not Obadiah agree. I'll agree on, right? Once we find out that he's willing to just kill people to make as much money as he can, selling to whatever markets were possible. Tony, the fact that he sees that he, he himself is blown up by his own missile isn't necessarily the thing that makes him so that he doesn't want to sell them anymore. It's the nature of how his missiles are being sold to people he doesn't want them to be sold to. Yeah, um, because remember, this is a little-known fact, is that after that, he makes this this suit with all of these these weapon systems in them, and it could fly and go around and blow things up. I and mean, we were literally watching him on the screen blowing something up as he walks away very cool-like. Mm -hmm. So he's still making weapons. Yeah. Now, and and he's, he's, direct, he's taking more of a fucking interest in exactly where they go and how they're used. Um, yeah, and because, because a big part of what he's been why he was still doing all the things well except just taking it from his dad basically when he uh, when he passed it's just he wants to protect america basically and the u.s military and provide weapons for them and so they like the u.s is protected because he's like that's like his thing yeah and, and his role in the responsibility like, I, he takes in that i don't I think mean, any of his is any of the things he does before he becomes iron man are it's meant to be malicious in any kind. Well, the the reason this is all funky is because he's trying to create like a mirror with uh, Spider-Man Two. Two good men, one of them mm. uses their power for evil. Two bad men, one of them uses their power for good. And it's like no, neither of those really Which works. Which is like because <laughs> like that's thematically that's really cute, but unfortunately it's not accurate. Well, it's Tony one of those uh, yeah. square peg round hole because, like I said, I feel like it's a bit of a gap there with with Octavius not even being in control. Certainly not fully. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit. It's a bit malformed on both sides. Uh, as as lovely and poetic a thought as it is, it is unfortunately not correct. For good. I, I figured he was going to get to an unlikable character like later in the video, and he was just using Tony Stark as like a positive. Oh, it's all about Tony. Example. But it's all Tony. What the fuck? I mean, this is the, okay. what I mean. I think it was kind of just said a, a bit ago. But like, was there ever a time in the film where we were like, "Ugh, that Tony Stark guy is so fucking lame and annoying." Like, not really. Yeah. We, he was even if he was a womanizer like a or a bit selfish or a showboater or like narcissistic, do you remember his opening scene? He's being chill with like the military people, right? The soldiers in the Humvee, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's super charismatic. Uh, like, yeah. and, it and just starts course, with like rock never. music playing and he's just like, so yeah. what's up? I and think also, I'm going to be executed soon because nobody's saying anything. And then just kind of 
just loosens up the mood and it's like super charismatic. It's like I, I love that intro to so, our I mean, uh, this, Tony Stark. This video should be about stuff like that. That's that's all the work. Mm -hmm. It's the extensive I remember work. Even in that scene. This was back in the day when heroes would actually like either try or express some sentiment relating to trying to save people. Like when it was uh, 2008. Is a different yeah. time for heroes back then. I mean, we and, had them. And then on top of that, you know, he's he's going to be going on an arc in the film. And I think, you know, yeah. when you're going into these films, you're generally having some expectation of that. So even if you look at a character with flaws, um, who will still have flaws by the end of the story anyway, uh, that you're, you know, you know that they're going to be heading in a certain trajectory. So it'd be very strange if somebody was like, wow, this guy is just, like, worthless. And then they were stunned by the end of the film. Like, oh, my God, at first I thought I was going to hate him forever. But then <laughs> it turned out that he's a good guy after all. Just be a bit weird. Yeah, it feels like a rewrite yeah. of, of what actually happens in the film to fit, like, a point that wants to be made about characterization about versus true character. About the idea that a filmmaker is being stuck with an unlikable character. Yeah, yeah just, maybe, just, uh, maybe sort of a 2020... I guess four mindset, whenever this movie was a, a modern mindset that's being applied to maybe how that character would be looked at from you know, oh, the well, 2008 landscape. I'm guessing that whatever the book is that he's referencing is probably old would be my guess, but it's, but again, it almost probably I don't know, it's by the original the thing, Iron Man creator, right? Oh no, no, no. I mean the, the book where, where the, the characterization and true character distinctions come from. He said it was from a, like a writing book. Oh yeah. Hmm. The, um, I, I forget. I forget but, the name. Yeah, I, I don't. The I feel like uh, the name of the book. I feel like with a quote like that, you'd want to give it a bit of, and here's why it's correct, and here's why da da da, and here's why you should take this quote seriously, or this quote is a guideline to some idea that I'm going to present to you as being, you know, a, a truthful one. But um, I think he just sort of said the quote, and then we went with it. Now, granted, the true nature of Sam Raimi's Dr. Octavius is substantially more complex than Ironmongers and a topic I've covered before, but this is all... Ironmonger is... Complex to the point of it doesn't work as an analogy. Well, that, but I was also going to say, like, he's more complex than Ironmongers. Like, Ironmonger is, like, known to be a bit of a laughable villain. Why are we even... <laughs> There's no shock say, a protagonist should surprise us. The greater the dichotomy between true character and perceived characterization, the more captivating our hero becomes. I'm not, I, I don't I don't agree. know about that. Yeah, like, I just, I just look at Superman. Agree. There's something, uh, yeah, there's something to be I'm, said about a character who is just so self-assured, confident, stalwart, and secure that they will act very similarly outwards as they are inwards that I mean there's a lot of characters who really kind of imbue that and just saying that the difference is what makes them interesting i mean well, like you're, or, or, I, or to, to paint it as like sort of a broad rule i agree that it can be really cool when a character surprises you with yeah. the choices yeah. that they make absolutely um mm -hmm. but i don't think that it's the kind of general rule that could be applied to all characters that you should be uh, increasing the distance between the way that they present themselves to the world and who they actually are, because that 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 just doesn't encompass the every kind of character that you could write that people would agree are great. What about? I mean, of course, I presume this is only being applied to protagonists. Would be my guess, because with villains, if you did this, this can also this also locks off like a whole bunch of different types of villains that you can have in your story. Yeah, I mean, some of the most famous villains are going to be. Absolutely static. Uh, they ain't going to surprise yeah. you with the decisions. Yeah. They're going to be ruthless. Like, that's, you know, a big old... But if someone was to say, well, no, it doesn't apply to antagonists, I'd be like, okay. Uh, mm. Obviously Superman, but, like, someone just mentioned in chat, and I was like, oh, yeah, of course, Luffy. Like, he's not... Mm. He's, he's not going to surprise you with a sudden, like, villainous turn or a more selfish decision. Or at least he doesn't in the first season of the live-action adaptation, which is what I've seen. Uh, part of what's so interesting about him is his unrelenting positivity and support of people he loves. Like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> In terms of, like, despite all odds, he'll he'll always try and remain positive and supportive. It's like, oh, look at that, that's nice. Especially when you're surrounded by more nihilistic characters uh, in other pieces of yeah. culture, perhaps. Um, Sometimes he's just surrounded by oh, you know. yeah. all the evidence being stacked against him being positive. Yeah, and if someone wanted to say that, uh, I find that boring. It's like, that's fine. Anyone can find it boring or interesting. But to say a character's 
true character versus characterization being more and more at odds is more and more interesting. I'd just be like, careful encouraging that shit, because you're going to end up with assassinating your character, probably. Just, uh... And with a lot of characters who don't make sense. And I don't even... Potentially, yeah. It's, it, to me, like, I still don't agree this is what's him. happened to Tony. I don't agree. Like, we're, we're practically saying, like, that moment where he saved that guy is, like, is it somehow at odds with how he's characterized? Like, no, it's not. Yeah, like, if anything, you can make arguments for why him saving that guy just plays into his narcissism and how he wants to be perceived. If you want um, to, I yeah. Mean, there's plenty of there's plenty of stories that, you know, where the hero is going to be doing Homelander. things just because of their perception. I, that literally who I was thinking of, yes, Homelander. So... I mean, even, you know, Spider-Man, to a degree, is, is kind of like that, before he goes on his arc. Oh, you mean, uh, you mean Bully Maguire? Tom Holland. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 Homecoming. So, there's a lot of, uh... Yeah, I don't know, I feel like this is really something that deserves a bit more exploration, because right now it's more declaration than anything else. Well, we got else, three minutes left. So, like... Well, that's true. Percentage-wise, that's a big chunk of video. So. Yeah, that's true. See, the real trouble for the screenwriter doesn't come in crafting this contradiction. It comes in maintaining it over the course of multiple films. Don't push it, I'll give you a war you won't believe. <laughs> McKee notably cites Rambo as an example of how a failure to maintain this dichotomy can have a detrimental effect on franchise sequels. Gonna say up front. Don't remember much of Rambo, so I hope oh, first blood's great. I remember so, one and the three pretty well, um, and then I the, don't the newest one was Two's funny. Good. About Rambo, two is the second best one. The first blood's the absolute like no, none of them touch first blood. But, like it actually is the best movie, but two's fun. Although at the same time, they all kind of exist in separate universes in some way. Like they, the way. they are continuous, but you can definitely imagine that. Never in the history of the Rambo franchise was the next film considered while they were writing the one they were working on. I just find it amusing as well to just sort of be like, do we have time to bring in Rambo? Because <laughs> 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 kind of I, I was looking away for like two seconds, like just looking at something else. Like all of a sudden I look back to my other screens like, why is there Rambo all of a sudden? Mm -hmm. Are we talking about Iron Man? <laughs> What's going on? I mean, Metal, we are doing a Rev first blood forge at some point if you've not seen it. Mm. Sure. Yeah. In first yeah, the blood, Rambo the sequels are action schlock, but like the first one felt like I had actually something to say about PTSD. Oh, for sure. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. Mm. War veterans, yeah. In First Blood, Sylvester Stallone's Rambo begins a burned-out war veteran traveling on foot in search of peace and solitude. But when he's unceremoniously provoked by a local sheriff, a ruthless killer is uncaged. It's a gripping contradiction, but by the time the sequels rolled around... I, and all I don't, it's not a contradiction. It's, it's, it's yeah, not, that no. Was, that's kind it's of, not a contradiction at any point in yeah, the movie. Just because if I was happy five minutes ago and then this video makes me sad, that's not a contradiction <laughs> in character. No. Rambo is not yeah. only driven by circumstances, he's very driven by how he is treated by the people in the town that he ends up in. Well, yeah, because yeah. the thing with contradiction is it kind of bakes in an idea of irreconcilability, but, like, it's not... As in, like, it's it's there's something that's wrong, in a sense. There's a clash, a, a dysfunction. But I don't know if you would describe it as just, well, when certain events happen to a character, it changes the way that they you know, react to the world and move forward. I don't, I don't, yeah, contradiction just, I don't know, that's not, that's not the right word. Yeah, people behave, people are capable of expressing, you know, opposite emotions and actions in different contexts. You, you would, you, you would analyze a character having contradictions by them behaving in wildly different ways, given essentially two of the same scenario. Yeah, you or could say that it's important to seen... say and what they actually do. Like, you know, people saying contrast or dichotomy, these feel like better terms than, um, than, uh, contradiction. Also, it's so I, weird but to I find say... Rambo, Rambo yeah. in particular, though, is so consistent that during the entire film, he's still who he was in Vietnam. Well, part of, I, I, it seems like he's almost halfway there. It's like that, that, that person is being drawn back out of him through circumstances that he's expecting to absolutely not do that. Like the, the committing to action X and then experiencing something heavy and then doing action Y, that's seen as contradictory in the most like bland and mundane and clinical sense in terms of at X and Y are different. It's like yeah, but we have cause and effect for it, so I'm not sure why you're calling it a contradiction. It's very strange. 
and I, I just you know in reference to Iron Man as well it's still like hard to follow what exactly he thinks he's saying with this that revelation was already spent Rambo's characterization and his true character became one and the same what? So, so he's saying that in the future <laughs> films, they're not as effective because there's no revelation that there is that man that lives underneath the one that we saw at the beginning of Rambo, you know, because that reveal happens in the first one. And so the rest of the films are just that character that we saw revealed in Rambo. Uh, yeah, uh, so so much for okay. slow reveals of well, how it, characters change over time or how they have some character flaw that... The that, circumstances that, that bubbles to the surface as the context changes in their life. The circumstances in Rambo two and three and the rest of them—I forget how many there are now—is that uh, he's five in fucking warfare essentially. Like the the idea that we'll never see that man again who's come back from war and just wants to settle down, and so we don't see that contradiction. It's like, well, th those are different stories. They could have told those. They maybe they would have been better, maybe worse. It's, it's like take you can take care. It's weird because this mindset leads you to a point of thinking that there's only one place you're supposed to take a character uh, or supposed to do with a character if they are a particular way. It's like, how many different directions... Think, for example, if someone said Luke Skywalker's got to make the new Jedi Order and refuse to help the Republic in their war because he sees it as a contradiction of power or something. Give that to 70,000 directors and you'll get 70,000 different stories. Like they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to be the same just because they've got like a base... Even if... you Because know, I said that but compare it to, like, no guideline. The, the implication here is that Rambo 1 has a format that the rest of them failed to do. But the thing is, like, Rambo has every right to go any direction it wants. He's a human being. You can direct him in many different ways. Feels weird to say, like, that that's a failure on Rambo's part as a, as a franchise, I guess. Well, the, the term true characters feels so static. Like you, like uh, you can apply it to certain characters. I think, like Captain America, for instance, where it's just like you kind of want him to just be same old Cap all the time. But could you say Walter White is a what? What's Walter White's true character? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, some people change far more than others. I mean, we all change. All of us. We're not the same person we were, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If, if someone, especially, a lot of that has to do with the fact that we're all pretty young. And uh, when we Except first meet, how old are you? <laughs> forty. I just turned forty like last week. Neat. That's that's fine. I don't think that's not old. Oh, um, okay, fair enough. But you have. Uh, but when we first meet Tony, for instance, he's already like well into his adulthood, and most of his experiences are are behind him in that sense. So it it, it just it just seems different to me. I don't know. People change. Uh, Cap yeah. has a very very firm and foundational sort of underlying principle that would be that that would take a a lot of work to change to where it might not even be possible well, so you wouldn't expect him to change i could see this video being like cap is uh, in favor of helping people and yet in civil war he's punching iron man contradiction like and you know that that shows us true character visit. But I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, the, the, all these things mm -hmm. happen for very specific reasons that relate to fundamental pr principles. Why are we pretending otherwise? True character visit characterization is still annoying to to hear. But hey, we're coming back to Iron Man. So let's see what we got. All right. Oh wow. Producer Kevin Feige and the filmmakers throughout the MCU managed to avoid this trap by not resolving the discrepancy between Iron Man's character and characterization too early in the final scene of the first iron man now he's calling he's not even calling true character character <laughs> and characterization, character and characterization. Yeah. Uh, uh, that shit's confusing yeah it gets you lost again mm. video essayists used to do because this one is eight minutes so it's so short but they used to do the thing of like how he is like how he is seen by the people in the world versus who he is but even then that wouldn't because it's about th this video is about how we see him are they like? Is he trying to separate it into like ego, super ego stuff? Like this is how he acts, but these are the things he values. Um, if he wanted to do ego, super ego, and id, then he should have said those things. <laughs> like instead of yeah, well, character versus true character. I don't even know what his thesis is. Is he? Is it? He's. Is yeah, he saying that Tony's to me, unlikable? My guess like, here, especially with doing? the title, is that when you have a character that is definitively like unlikable at the baseline, being traits that are bad, let's say cowardice, let's say self-centeredness, selfishness, uh, 
I don't know, furious, uh, uh, just nice things happening. He's just a big old goblin. What you need to do is um, have those things presented and then show a truly good man in the times that matter and continue that formula throughout the films. Don't make Rambo's mistake where you show him to be like a mild-mannered, <laughs> chill, you know, yeah. veteran who then is really angry and then in the future films show him being angry still. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, if this feels very balked as a point of view. In the movie, Tony Stark is instructed by Agent Coulson to share with the press a story that would effectively cover up his involvement in the events of the film and maintain his secret identity. After all, that's why superheroes wear the mask. But for Stark, to do that would be to resolve his hubris, to undermine his need to control the narrative, and to align the true character, partially unveiled to us in this film, with a conventional characterization of a superhero, which is why, in a twist ending and a famously improvised line by Robert Downey Jr., Stark openly admits to the world, I am Iron Man. In one line, we're reminded that this character is still interesting. In one line, still interesting. What? Still what? Interesting. He wouldn't. He would, wasn't if he chose to remain. <laughs> well, it's weird to be like, oh, if he chose to remain hidden, he wouldn't be interesting. Yeah, that's just obviously not true. I almost want to play that section again because I, uh, I'm really not following what he's trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say the same thing. I'm just a little lost here. At what point is is Tony not an interesting character during the first Iron Man film? Because that scene happens at the end of the first film, uh, like right at the yeah. end of the movie. It's like, oh, you know what? This character is actually interesting. Well, he's he like, wasn't still interesting. Were you not right? compelled the, for the other the two hours? <laughs> I'm going to give it another go, see if I can follow it this time. The final scene of the first Iron Man movie, Tony Stark is instructed by Agent Coulson to share with the press a story that would effectively cover up his involvement in the events of the film mm -hmm. and maintain his secret identity. After all, that's why superheroes wear the mask. But for Stark, to do that would be to resolve his hubris, to undermine his need to control the narrative. It would resolve his hubris and undermine his need to control the narrative. I think those two things are potentially completely different. I'm not even sure if I agree with either about him as a character. Undermined like controlling his the narrative is not the right. Yeah. I also, hubris that. and pride yeah. are not interchangeable. A lot of people act as if they are, and they're not. They're different. He wants the spotlight. He wants people to he know wants attention. that he's Iron Man. He's... He wants the celebration of him. Yeah. Pride is how you feel you are. Mm. Hubris is what you think you can do. Correct? No, hub hubris is. Um, it's typically in stories if someone is is has hubris, it means that it's specifically their pride that leads to their downfall. You say, mm. ah, yeah, that was his. It was his hubris that killed him. Because everyone, you know, a lot of people have pride, right? But hubris is that taken to a degree that it becomes like self destructive. Yeah, the, to the point that your pride leads you to take an action, which becomes your undoing. Right. Okay, well, uh, Iron Man 2 would give us near the beginning, right, that he's happy to announce himself as Iron Man because he wants to be the face of the the sense that, like, don't fuck with us, and I will also be the, the person to stop. I, I have the tech, just me. I have the power. I am Iron Man. Uh, mm -hmm. The sort of like to, to to go immediately negative with that and be like it's a narcissism thing or whatever is like there's certainly elements that work with it, but simultaneously it's an interest in trying to be like why hide it instead of actually have a show of strength and be like yeah I don't like the whole point of me engaging in this is to try and prevent you know bad things from happening, so I'll be here right because like the ham attack is trying to develop shit and he's like laughing at the fact that they can't catch up to him. So he's the he ha he like owns the market on this kind of power, um, which you know the the desire for control, but it's not what what did he say a dictator's desire for control? When it that was, was earlier, yeah, yeah, which I assume is still relevant. Well, he's he's also dying of blood poisoning at the start of the second one, right? So that's like I imagine that's influencing his decision making quite a bit from there. He's like way more reckless. Like yeah, I think that's already basically. happening when we start the film up, yeah. And to align the true character, partially unveiled to us in this film, with a conventional characterization of a superhero. Which is why, in a twist ending and a famously improvised line by Robert Downey Jr., Stark openly admits to the world, I am Iron Man. Okay, so he, so with that part, he was saying that it's mm. created the contrast again because typically superheroes 
don't do this is i guess is the observation i just feel made. like this is like are we are we going with comparing him to maybe like one or two there's like a thousand different types of superhero uh, the, you know, the, the... I, I'm, I guess he'd probably be appealing to the the sort of the general um, idea that a lot of superheroes uh, have a secret identity. Well, yeah, we can say most. It just doesn't matter though, compared to there's so many that don't. Yeah, no, I, I I'm just saying. I think that's his observation. I just don't. I don't see what that assists. <laughs> well, it it plays into the idea of if you know contrasting him with, I guess, what the expected norm is might be sort of parallel to him saying that the only thing I mean, that we need Obadiah Stain to contrast with Tony to make him likable. Maybe it's sort of a similar kind of line of reasoning. I mean, it, I think a lot of. Go ahead. It comes across as like an it. interestingly different thing, but like uh, at the same time, I just why would this be the only interesting outcome, or the one that makes him interesting? Yeah. What if the what if the film decided at the end that maybe he's learned to be a bit more humble and secretive and something like that? And what if at the, the end he decided to become a dictator and just said, "Yeah, I am Iron Man, and now you all bow to me," and then just oh suited up? <laughs> he said, "I must control the narrative." Dictator man, because uh, like I think that he's arguing like this is a promise of that that lineup of uh, the narcissism and all those flaws and stuff is still present despite the heroic acts we've seen him do. Which, like, like I said, I feel like that's being treated weirdly as a contradiction, as opposed to that is the character. In yeah, one it's... line, we're reminded that this character is still interesting. In one line, uh, seeds of future <laughs> conflict are planted for a decade of films to follow. How will this? I really feel like the uh, I am I am I am Iron Man stuff. Like with the, like this is all to do with his parents. There's a whole different like yeah dimension yeah this to his is character. completely different. If he was very humble, I think that this fight would still yeah. There's no anyone could end yeah. up where he is here as a result of seeing oh, yeah. that video. There's the that's not to do with being a narcissist or wanting control necessarily. Or, or like announcing I am I am like not caring about a secret identity. Character struggle. I've friendly seen that fight uh, again recently. It's just so good. Oh, I <laughs> really good. Character struggle to reconcile who he is. Well, how's that? When was the last fight in the MCU that you thought was really good? I, I just I don't want to think uh, about it. Uh, Echo and Daredevil. Oh yeah, it's a classic. <laughs> classic. It's really really good. Does uh, that include fighting CGI monsters? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a fight, mm. just an MCU fight that you thought was actually, like, good. I that's didn't mind, I suppose I didn't mind the fight with Chiwetel Ejiofor and Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. It was shot kind of nice, but I didn't care about the fight. No, I didn't like that mm. one. Um, I might go with Shang-Chi, maybe. On the bus, there was some stuff. I remember oh, being bus, like, oh, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, I haven't well, seen everyone's, I don't know. everyone's jumping out of their seat to... Definitely, uh, <laughs> Spider-Man and Goblin, yeah. I love the, the fucking vicious yeah. fight on that. That was cool. That's true, yeah. No, no one that's, good. That's, that's right. Tough, yeah. that, might be the, that might be the one, actually. God, oh, yeah, there you go. I like the uh, Winter Soldier <laughs> fight on the highway. I thought that was cool. With Cap and Winter Soldier? Cap and Winter Soldier, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. This character's struggle to reconcile who he is with what he is. That is, after all, the quest question that drives the whole thing. Who he is with what he is. I'm so lost again. <laughs> I feel like we shouldn't be introducing that this late. What he is. Yeah, that's, that's weird. And also, I just, like, I feel like who he is is his character and his personality and things, and what he is is, like, a male homo sapien. You know, Flesh like, and bone. Mm. Yeah. Where's a tin can? I don't know. Yeah, like a, I, like I said, too late to introduce that because now I'm wondering if the whole thing was supposed to be about that. The reason we as an audience have even been able to trace Iron Man's arc through the MCU is because the conflicts in each film were built up and up from the incongruity between Tony Stark's true character as a superhero and his characterization as an abundantly flawed protagonist. Those aren't contradictions. Abundantly Wait, flawed? Those are both the same person. I'm sorry, the delivery of that sentence just makes me angry. It took him so long to say, <laughs> he's a flawed <laughs> person and a superhero contradiction. It's like, no. I wanted to yell so badly just now. 
Wait till he ta- wait, wait till he learns about a lot of famous people in history, and you learn about oh yeah, maybe people are complicated, especially when you go back in history and it was just a different world in terms of you know morality and expectations and attitudes about things. Like boy, this it'll blow your mind. People just, can be very complicated. Like fucking all the heroes we're very familiar with, with maybe some exceptions, have like significant flaws in their personality. It usually helps drive storylines. I don't know yeah. why we're pretending. You might even consider their strength to also be like a flaw. That's how that's how traits often work. Is that they have like a a trait that you have can be that it could also be you know a negative. Someone's greatest strength can be their greatest weakness, especially if it's something along the lines of you know, like being trusting or seeing the good in people, things of that nature. Sure. There is a character in a show who, when he's walking past a homeless man who says, "Have you got any change?" He says, get a job, you lazy piece of shit, or something like that. Who then, seven episodes later, uh, dies to save everybody. Um, if someone was to say that's a contradiction, because he clearly shows care enough to sacrifice his life, but he doesn't care enough to, I don't know, give a coin to a homeless person, you'd just be like, you're a very strange person, <laughs> like in terms of how you analyze media. <laughs> just saying. Flawed protagonist. As long as Stark had flaws, as long as he had ego and arrogance and hubris, he had conflict. Conflict for his true nature and for the franchise oh, to overcome. He keeps repeating it over and over again. He's got an <laughs> ego, but he'll also give his life to save people. Curious. Yeah, this like, see, this video should have been... I mean, it should have been... There should be more in it, because for eight yeah. minutes we can't be repeating ourselves this much. But also, maybe this needs to be an exploration as to how characters can have a multitude of traits, and yet uh, maybe how a character might seem complicated, something like that, an exploration into why people are the way they are and their attitudes and what they care about, something else, but it's, it just seems like a misplaced sort of topic. Um, I don't know. Quite poetically, Iron Man self-perpetuated his own arc, gradually working through that laundry list of defects along the way, until finally, his characterization and true character. Well, alive. why? No, why? What? You, no, no. In, in Avengers, why? In, in Iron Man, he did this. In Avengers, he did this. He just survived. Yes. Yeah. This is not. This is not a He's revelation done this before, of, yeah. of who Tony really <laughs> is. This is Tony being consistent with who. You he showed is. the scene where he flies the rocket into space. You, you dumbass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you showed the thing well, so, where he was like. <laughs> uh, I, the thing is, one might argue there's a line in Avengers where he says, save the rest for the trip back, Jay, like as in fuel and stuff. So he knew he would survive. It's like, he didn't know he would survive. He almost fucking died. Absolutely. He knew there was a good chance he'd die. But Iron Man 1, he believed he was going to die uh, when they activate the arc. Uh, she says, yeah. she literally says, but you'll die. And he says, push it. So this is bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> like this, this is this yeah. already happened in Iron Man One. And, and like, also, I think um, what I what I found weird as well in the observation he was saying, well, uh, the the contradiction means that they can self perpetuate the arc throughout the whole series. When I'd say it's pretty apparent that he's going on different arcs in different films, like the the storylines he's going yeah, through, civil war, like civil war different. through to you know. Or, you know, from after Avengers, right, that they really fumbled for a while of, of him dealing with, uh, the, like, them sort of fumbling with the PTSD until they actually decided to try and work yeah. with uh, the trauma that he had. And then leading up to the relationship that he started to build with Peter as well. These are different arcs. They're not the arc, they're not arcs that, yeah, sure, they're downstream from the arcs that happen earlier in his, his story, but it's not like they are the product of, um... It, it would be weird to say that they were the strict product of this contradiction between his true character and characterization. It's it's more so that different things happened that made him go on a different journey. And genuinely speaking, like if we did a breakdown of his arc specifically, we'd be going over like very specific lines and choices of action mm -hmm. and how they almost bungled it several times in different ways, but that recontextualized certain things to fix it back up. All the work that's done... For Iron Man is not look. He said, "I am Iron Man." What a narcissist! And then he did the snap and killed himself to save people. I guess he's not a narcissist. That's an incredible character. It's like no, no. It's done in all the tiny scenes between everything, connecting you all up, making you like him, all the relationships he develops, and the several arcs has been pointing out that he's on. Not just this one about whether or not he's selfish. Like it, 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 there's there's so much more to him, and I just feel like this video has not helped explain it at all. Because at this point, you'd be like, "So I've got to characterize them as X." 
But when it comes down to it, they do why. Okay. And then, you know, if they misunderstand this video enough, you end up with a Palpatine who fucking saves people randomly. But he could not save himself. No, he could not. Well, I guess he did, right? Because he was on Exegol. <laughs> oh, yeah, Somehow that's right. He, returned. he did. Fuck, you're right. Um, Resurrection is my true character. Yes, I feel like this doesn't <laughs> capture almost anything to do with why Tony Stark works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a uh, story. Could end. Hey, yeah, that was pretty uh, bad. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that. <laughs> uh, some, what even yeah. was that video? It's so short pretty too. Empty. Like it barely. He he mostly repeated himself. It was like um, the same. It was like a minute, and then the same minute, and the same minute, the same minute, the same minute. Yeah, this was, um, it was a lot of repetition, it was short, it wasn't a proper exploration of the topic as it presented itself, it breached into things that didn't make sense, it made incorrect statements, it arguably was all based off of a, a, appealing to an authority that I, I didn't necessarily, that I just, I don't think I do agree with. Uh, no attempt was made to make that, I guess, the thesis quotations like convince us that those are correct mm. uh yeah I, I really don't think it had i mean uh, and of course we had you know like golden rule of efap we had our visuals that contradicted the statements being made yeah i'd love to know how he contextualizes all the other times that tony did what he did in endgame and how they don't play into this i, I have no idea because he said like yeah, once he'd done the one in endgame his story could end it was like could it not end at the end of avengers could it not end at the end of iron man one like how how does how does your system work? Because the thing is, like yeah. I assume we all agree. You, if Iron Man had survived the snap, there's more stories to tell with him. Yeah. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, easily. I mean, you can speculate on, right? It's like it would have killed anyone else, but that the Iron Man suit protected him enough, and it's now like blast, like through the 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 snap, it's gone into his bloodstream and his his flesh to the point where he needs like serious surgery, and that he's like all of the. Like, half of him is machine now. Not to fucking Vader him, but you know what I mean. Like, there's, there's plenty we can do in terms of repercussions, but simultaneously moving him on, if you really want he's to. He's more iron now than man. Oh. He's more iron now than man. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, bad video. Better luck next time. I think it's just too much of a short man, okay? Short man bad. It is too short, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it needs, to be, it needs to be longer and better. I suppose so. the... Funny thing is, yeah, it's like for eight minutes you could have done way better. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh... You can pack a lot of info into eight minutes. You really can. He um... said he he said a little something there about like true character and characterization being one and the same, but he framed it in such a way that if it's ever out of alignment, then like the story's not being well told or something. That was the impression well, I got. But like, I think in the ideal screenwriting situation, you want to like in the characterization you want to contradict i'm not saying this applies in every case but you want to contradict the true character in the beginning and like the arc maybe as the character becomes less selfish over time due to certain plot things and then around like the end of act two or the third act fight then it's like oh he, that's his true character i get it this this is the character we all know and love like i i kind of get that but i'm not sure that was his point you also mentioned think, at one point um, that the more they contradict the characterization, true character, the more better, interesting. The better, the more interesting, yeah. which is just strange. This feels like getting tangled up in these weird writing concepts that just kind of distract from more fundamental, universally applicable principles that you can apply to storytelling. Um, this whole getting tangled up in what is characterization versus true character just seems counterproductive rather than it's all characterization. Just think about who your characters are and ways that you can challenge them and test them or change them. Yeah. Instead of, well, make sure that the contradiction between true character and characterization is sufficiently large that they're interesting. Weird. Yeah. It's a weird definition. Well, as you mentioned before, but true character thing. is simply character when things are high pressure. Yeah. I was it's thinking already, of, like, um... we, we we gotta explore when you say stuff like that. There's gotta be that voice <laughs> yeah. in your head that says like, "Man, you need to like explore that." that that's a, pretty, like that's a bold goal. thing to say. <laughs> yeah, well, that sounds like a thing that we could have a very long debate and discussion over that you just sort of say casually and then carry on with.
I'm surprised too if he's if he's mostly trying to highlight a difference between Tony Stark's personality and what his true character is. And what it seems like Iron Man two was sort of when he was at his lowest point, right? Like where they they did sort of the demon in the bottle story. But um, he, yeah, because he thought he was gonna die and that uh, he didn't know what his legacy would be at that point and what to do with his weaponry and stuff. Um, low point. It's a little bit complicated. You could argue his low point would be the beginning of Endgame. Oh, really? When he, oh, yeah, pulled, I mean, yeah, when you, Thanos sure. has snapped the whole world, they can't stop. You know, that's probably a low point. <laughs> <It's not exactly. laughs> that's pretty I'm, low. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I don't know, but I'm sure he probably felt pretty good about everything he'd done up to that point. Whereas it seemed like Iron Man two. I mean, character wise, he was he was in a pretty dark place there, and I don't think he'd ever gotten that dark after that. I mean, thinking like oh, I'm in a desperate situation, I'm gonna die is. Like, let's face it, something that happens I, quite a lot. I would say movies. that he uh, he definitely was at his lowest point in Endgame of having lost and presumably going to starve to death yeah, on okay, a ship enough. stranded <laughs> in the middle of space. Like, I'd yeah, say there's no way a character point. like him wouldn't have thought, man, if only I had done that move or this move to Thanos, you know? Yeah, that's true. Or, I'd be thinking, well, I tried. Kind of <laughs> way. I, I get why you'd, uh, you'd, you know, point it out, though. It's definitely a, a low point. Um... Next up, we're moving to the realm of video games. Oh, oh I like those. Boy, I sure do I'm not as controversial games. to say these days, but I'm a big mm. fan of video games. Now I that, sure do like them. This is something games that are for uh, nerds a couple people and suggested babies. to cover, and by God, from the title alone, I was like, yes, this sounds like our kind of thing. It's called Ooh, How boy. God of War Ruined Resident Evil Village. <laughs> Hang on, say that again. <laughs> How God of War <laughs> Ruined Resident Evil Village. Well, I seem to recall I'm already from lost. our episode on Resident Evil Village. God of War never came up in our discussion on why that game sucked balls. So, <laughs> yeah. well, uh, and vice versa, all right. right? Do we have a reference village in our God of War? I don't think so. But anyway, let's. Uh, I don't think so. Have oh, a little boy. look. See who knows what we're in for. Like a the two games had a fight one day. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll know. make sense. Oh, it's so weird. It's uh, let's. Uh, wait. Hmm? let's keep Mayo, no, I just saw. Eternal, I saw buddy. that. Uh, I saw that. That that footage of Ethan Winters in the in the in the castle on the balcony. I was like, man, all that makes me think of is how stupid the the so so many of the gameplay elements of that are. Like, oh, I'm a bad guy. I gotta kill you. I gotta get you. Oh, you went downstairs. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't possibly go down there to get you. I'll go to the bottom of the stairs, but I I won't actually go into that room to get you. I'm just gonna go back up here. So if you need me. I'll be back up here. The invisible line. Makes I just remember a uh, metal breaking Dimitrescu's AI and slapping her ass. That was nice. That was really funny. Be, Misogyny, of course, really, of course, really... but really good stuff. It's it's kind of interesting because I think I played through, the, through that game like four times, and Jeez. I barely remember anything about it. I did one full playthrough, and then I started a second where I just specifically tried to fuck around and see how easy it broke and I was shocked at how much the game needed you to stay on those yeah. uh, on that very yeah. narrow roller yeah. coaster. It was, I think it the, was the, bizarre. I think it I didn't want to go back to it. Later, I played yeah. it once and just found it oddly railroaded. Like oh, it, absolutely it seemed lackluster. like it's open because they're saying, hey, you've got all these four people to go fight. Go off and find them and oh, but you have to find them in this specific order. Yeah. Because I was like, why did they do that? I was like, they could have made that a go in any order kind of deal and i think it would have made the game feel a lot more flexible and interesting it's a game with very obvious yeah. very clear yeah. examples of very very bad video game design mm -hmm. and, i think i have uh, this like uh, one of those special weapons unlocked i think i did a full playthrough while we're doing the efep on that i think oh. <laughs> one of the um, points i made oh, you could just speed run through the game pretty easily I never played uh, Village, but I did play Seven, and I just found the main character really insufferable and <laughs> idiotic. He doesn't get better. Yeah, it's because he is. He gets. <laughs> oh, if anything, he gets uh, worse. Stark. Well, they at least in Village they do make an effort to try to explain how the hell he survives half the even... stuff he did in Seven. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it was, no, but that doesn't work because the explanation they give means he couldn't have ever died. But like. Who yeah, cares? Yeah. No one likes Ethan Winters. It's like, no oh, thank goodness you Ethan explained why he's Winters. still alive. I'm also like, true. Oh. He's, just, uh, <laughs> he's just one of those moron idiot loser nerds. Dark. <laughs> it's yeah, Ethan yeah, Winters in Seven too, right? Yes. yes. Has, it's the same in both. Yeah, yeah, yeah same yeah. guy. And yeah. the DLC of Village is um, third person, and you play as Ethan's daughter, and it's probably the worst thing I've played in the entire Resident Evil series. <laughs> I don't think I even played that. 
I, think I James, tried it. Yeah, I, I wasn't he, compelled at all. Yeah. I think James explained to me what happens in that. I forgot what it had something to do with he's mold now or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's just it's some nonsense. Well, yeah, he's mold because doesn't he yeah. crumble apart at the end of the game? Uh, sure. Yeah, it turns know. out he was mold all along and he can only die from some special <laughs> oh, no. bullshit, which makes you wonder how was there ever a game over in seven and eight up to this point? I don't know. How about we don't there think about have been. it? couldn't have been because they shot him enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's only I would say though, in um, canon. <laughs> if you, if, CJ, if you haven't played the Resident Evil 4 remake, I would highly suggest it. Yeah, I yeah, the original, that's good. But not the remake. You have you played the Death oh, yeah, Space I played, remake? Played the... I have, yes. What do you think? Good. I, I, I did like it. Yeah. All right. Is I that, think the Death Space <laughs> remake is the better anymore? remake. Well, we loved it. It is. I, think I did Dead really Space like it. Yeah. I love them both, but yeah, yeah. I was Craig's a bit skeptical about page. them. Having his character actually speak, right. as opposed to just being a silent protagonist the whole way. But I think it worked. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, I don't think it like ruined anything. They also yeah, fixed that fucking stupid turret section. There's certainly games where it's better that they don't talk, but that was an example where I think it actually works better the other way. Kind of Wright's performance was really good too. That helped. Yeah, good mm -hmm. old him, dinner. Tanya Clark, everyone else. Yeah. All right, can't talk about that. We've got to talk about how God of War ruined right, Resident Evil Village. Let's do it. Sorry about um, Under the Mayo. One of the points I made in my Resident Evil Village video was that it reminded me a lot of God of War 2018. Originally, how? I planned to expand on that more, and yeah, there was that's a okay. large... <laughs> that's a good idea, because yeah, I'm is... already confused. <laughs> Look, I haven't played God of War, but I have played Resident Evil Village, and boy, Village has some of the most mediocre, dull, bare-bones combat I've seen in a video game. It is so is such a boring slog of a game to play. Mm -hmm. The enemies uh, don't react to shots the way they do in even the original Resident Evil 4. It was uh Well yeah, it's just like oh, I we we spent so long. This game is about put that. the <laughs> Yeah, this game is put the reticle on the enemy's head and click eight times. Now do that for the whole fucking game. It is so boring, so dull, mm -hmm. just the bare necessity of what you need in combat. It's Awful. I hate it. There's there's virtually no interactivity with enemies. Awful. Expand on that more, and there was a large section I eventually decided to cut because it felt weird to just go off on a tangent about God of War 30 minutes into my village video. But I definitely wanted to address that point. Basically, what do I mean when I say village reminds me of God of War 2018? The aesthetic comparison isn't that important, though I wouldn't I, say yeah, it's insignificant. Maybe. Both games I, have been spending I, a lot. Well, they both have snow. Have snow They're so the well, Come on, come you, on. you didn't even let him complete the point before disagreeing. You gotta let him say what he says. He means. <laughs> I would say, I, does uh, God of War only do 30 FPS? Uh, uh, fuck, maybe I can't remember. No, maybe no, no. Uh, even because on, uh, if on our base PS4, yes, on even a PS4 Pro though, you could unlock the frame rate, and it usually kicked around 40 to 52. Never really hit a clean 60 though. Okay, because because the the footage on the right looks like his own capture because it it looks good and it's running at at least 60, and the one on the left is is from Gamers know, Little Playground. Nothing. Yeah, it's clearly not the best version of the game. It's it's obviously running at at least half the frame rate, and you can see. Uh, it. Yeah, well, that, that could be pulled off Let's YouTube or whatever, and yeah, yeah. encoded it in such a way. I yeah, but you would just get 60 FPS because... footage off YouTube, right? I want to know if it's snow, if it's because they're in snow. <laughs> <laughs> Let us find out. Important, though I wouldn't say it's insignificant. Both games have you spending lots of time in environments that look and feel the same, but it's not really the main issue. The okay, man, that was it, bad. I think it's safe <laughs> to say that it's. I think it's safe to say that it's because there's snow. Because <laughs> I don't even through areas that, that have that. snow. You don't want to make even... a point like that so quickly and show that as your evidence. That's bad. Mm. Well, well I, yeah, because, yeah, I dude, run the fucking about Alfheim. Village. Like, I don't even know yeah, where to begin in terms of. Think about all of the places that you go to that don't have snow. Oh, <laughs> and think about man. yeah, not a good start, but that's right. One of, yeah, them one of them is the opposite of snow. <laughs> yeah. I'm struggling. I'm struggling to find something that links them because I'm inclined to say they're actually quite polar opposite. In the I certainly would argue ah, they're polar, polar opposite. But... I, I, I like mean, I mean, fun. like, look, all right, it's got to be snow because the architecture <laughs> and the environments aren't even the same. One of them is set in like Norway, 
and with all of this like Norse architecture and old buildings, and the other one is set in a village in like Eastern Not Europe. Not Transylvania, yeah. Yeah. It's and I would, I don't even think I would, as for as shitty of a video game as Village is, like there's decent variety in the places that you go. Yeah, so I'd say, I, well, yeah, I mean, somewhat, yeah. you ain't exploring any like opulent sort of mansions in, in God of War. <laughs> You're not going through any of these crazy interiors of like yeah, I would Middle argue Ages. The um, level design manners. is even reflecting even the gameplay of both games, though, uh, as was mentioned earlier, like Resident Evil Village, you can take full advantage of the enemy eye a lot of the time, while God of War, good luck most of the time, because, you, you know, pick the difficulty you can fucking beat them at. Well, typically, it's set up into, it's the, the arena that it puts you in doesn't really give a huge amount of room for you to be able to exploit the, you know, the, the right. AI of the enemies, so. Yeah, because like, you're not you know going to be able to walk out of the AI. Then you exactly you, you, yeah. you make the play area such that you can't do that sort of thing. Yeah, no, um, uh, he's gonna go. He's saying whereas, it's beyond yeah. the aesthetic, so we'll, we'll feel the same. But it's not really the main issue. The issue is one of design philosophy and the kind of game they want to create for people. If you've seen my video on why God of War was Ugh. ruined, <laughs> ruined. Oh, Have you guys watched that one? Not a fan of God of War, the new one, I guess. Uh huh. Ruined. Was ruined. ruined. You'll be familiar with these points, and okay. I'll be repeating them here. Only this time, showing ruined. how Village just follows ruined. the same trends. Mm. Let's take a look at the old God of War games and the old Resident Evil oh, games, God. as right. well That's as newer good. titles. Now this is perfect because not cameras. only are me and uh, Metal, I want to say Mark and John maybe, but we're experts in all God of War games. And Fringy recently mm. was playing God of War Three. Yeah, yeah no, for I... a bit. Yeah, yeah, great. Game. But we're yeah, ready for I this. Saw... Yeah, and I saw Mahler play God of War Ragnarok. That <laughs> loser. It's also a great game. Movie game. It's controversial, <laughs> apparently. Movie game. <laughs> like I beat one to three, but I haven't played the new ones. Or, no, I played the new ones, but I... Or not Ragnarok. I haven't beat either of them yet. Ooh, you'd like Ooh, Ragnarok. I'm almost retreat. done the new first God of War. Almost. Play Valhalla after Ragnarok as well. The DLC it is very much Heck worked yeah. on. Yeah. I heard it's dope, yeah. Sick. And the old Resident Evil games, as well as newer titles like RE7 and RE2 Remake that mm -hmm. try to remain faithful to the classics. And we're going to look at how these games are designed in terms of their systems and player accountability. Old God of War games had three mm -hmm. starting difficulties and an unlockable extreme difficulty. You could go for easy and just mash your way through, or you could go for hard and actually have to fight smart and learn to defend and work to get enough XP for upgrades. You absolutely yeah. have to do that that's in the new games. That's just like the new games? Well, hey, he hasn't yep. said that's not the case yet, but that is absolutely the case in the new games too. Higher difficulties didn't mean you just died easier, they also meant you got less resources back from health and magic stations. So you're making smarter decisions about when to use- I mean, one also, could argue yes. that that is- you know, like, if th those are all, like, uh, meters you can move up and down, right? Make the enemy have more health, yeah. make you have less damage, make yeah, you have less health. Yeah, it's not clever. No, it's not. It does make clever. the game more difficult, well, but it's it's not very clever. Or I mean, it's often both, not very fun. Both Ragnarok and 2018 have, have like, the Give Me God of War difficulty adds mechanics to the combat. It, it is not just sliders. It's, it you, is also, I want to say, in, in, in Attack of the Design in 2018 and Ragnarok, that difficulty is, they warn you before going in, it's insane. Like, you'll get killed mm -hmm. in two hits when you start, sort of thing. But at the same yeah. time, those who are very good at the game, getting hit twice by the enemies is rare. You know what I mean? Like you're like that's how good mm. you would be at that point. Um, so it's it's like a it's a fifty fifty thing in terms of. I wouldn't look to God of War, both old and new, as a great example of how to crank difficulty. I see them as My more own. normal. You know. I, I think my only major complaint between, well, like, the thing I do think that the original God of War series does better than the new ones is one very simple thing. I think the camera perspective works better. And, and I think that God of War Ragnarok in 2018's gameplay would work with that camera, and um, you would have less I mean, issues the, with enemy awareness. That is the that's most same common about Resident Evil. Yeah. sort of discussion Maybe, that's yeah. had. And mm. I don't, uh, like, like, with with the new format for the fighting in God of War, I think it's worse, but I think it works. Like, I think people over-exaggerate like crazy how much is a broken system. Mm. Um, but I, Yeah, I never would have called it broken. I still got through it on both of them on well, the hardest like, difficulties, though. I mean, it's and like, I'm not that like good. There's like a 0.5% chance of all times I take damage where I'll go, hmm, I feel like I couldn't done anything about that. Like the, you know, something hits right. me from behind with a really shit warning that doesn't make sense from my uh, my head at the time, whoever it may be. I think a lot of problems would, have, would be solved if you just were able to 
move the camera back just a, a tad, just a little bit. Yeah. I think it would help a, a lot. I am inclined to See, agree. Even, even just Dark Souls angle, I think, would work a lot better than uh, mm. the, the Last of Us. Or, I mean, hey, Resident Evil 4 camera. You could argue that that's kind of the game that started the behind over the shoulder slash mid back close up. Yeah, it's I mad. think it's uh, I think it was a good move. And um, it says uh, someone in the chat said rags thinking he knows about Resident Evil is funny considering he hasn't played half of the entire series. No one has. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> and there's a shitload of Resident that's Evil. Well, wait, wait, just 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 for instance, because it's kind of funny. Fringy, would you consider yourself a Simpsons expert? Yeah. Yeah, well, you haven't yeah. seen probably half of it at this point. Yeah, that's that also might, true. Uh, that <laughs> might be. I might not have seen a third of it. Yes, at this point. That's probably. Well, I was going to concede. That's probably true. I don't really care though. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. I. I. Uh. What Rags will be referencing is what he can reference. You know what I mean? He's not going to yeah, be like. Will... I'm going to reference this game I've never played for why this this that. You know. Yeah, I'll only reference the things I have knowledge on. Uh, for, for instance, knowledge. I've only played one Metal Gear Solid game, and that was uh, five. So I can Ooh. speak to that, that but great I couldn't tell play. you, couldn't tell you anything about one, two, three, or four, was... or the the there was there a PSP one. Would you say four? Like, as a person who loves the Metal Gear Solid games, I think they are far too anime for regs to enjoy. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. like you will hate them. <laughs> Listen, I've seen people talk and gameplay and stuff, and I'm glad that people really like it, but I just don't think it would be my thing. And that's yeah, right. I, I think I can agree. I'm yeah, not a fan then, of the, uh, the 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 Resident Evil, you know, the originals. It's just not my thing. I don't like them. So. I know a lot about Resident Evil, but I simultaneously know very little about Resident Evil. It depends on what we're talking about. So. Right. And I think um, I think there's something as well you need to keep in mind. And that's that I've been playing video games for 30 years. Oh, dude. No, <laughs> fucking hell, uh, damn. Nice. Uh, well, yeah, no, I... What's interesting is uh, I can't yet claim that about God of War. I need another, what, fucking like 10 years or so? Uh, <laughs> something like that. So, or 12, maybe. But yeah, as soon as we get that, I will be claiming it. Because uh, thanks to a nice. visit from Metal as well, I have played all of the God of Wars. Every one. Hooray! Yeah. 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 Nice. God of War Even expert. the handheld ones? Yes. Oh, no, the, the we streamed one, them. Oh, probably none of us... There yeah, is one that made, there is one that probably none of us have played, and it was a JavaScript game that was only on some Sony phones. Yep, <laughs> it has a it has a unique well, story too. It takes place say between this. God of War one and two. You are not a true God of War fan until you press circle to abandon daughter. That's when you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. That's Thematically, funny though, it's as difficult for him to abandon his daughter as it is to rip the head off a of god, though. <laughs> He's abandoning his daughter to save her soul from utter destruction. Dude, you know it the makes thing, sense, and even, even I know that. The thing that it's really just... ruined that for me when I played it through with Metal was the Achievement Unlock Deadbeat Dad Dead or something. Beat, yeah. 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 Jesus. Like, what <laughs> the... <laughs> I seriously think that trophy is the reason people read that scene incorrectly. <laughs> what do you mean? What, like, what will be the correct read? Well, that he's doing it to save her soul in all of existence. Like, I feel he's, like he's everyone not, knows he's that. Be dead this, by letting her go. Like the, the trophy names are a bit tongue in cheek, is, deliberately, right? I think no, it just I, contributes to it being a funny meme that you're, yeah. you're, you're, it's a quick time event to abandon. <laughs> that's you know, that. That's funny in and of itself. I've, Listen, as per, as press circle to abandon made, your daughter crawled so that press have to pay your respects. I was about to say. Okay. Yeah, I've hundred percent right. been on a podcast where someone was bringing up that scene as a reason why Kratos was never a good dad before, and I lost my shit on the guy. <laughs> okay, that yeah, that's not. I would bring it up as the the writers not taking it as seriously. Uh, yeah. The fact that they would put yeah. that achievement on there, and the fact that they would make it a quick time event, that could just be they fucked up. But it's so funny. Like I don't know why they wouldn't have thought that would be funny. The fact they mentioned that in new games as well and make it meaningful is just yeah yeah insane. I, I kind of wonder like though, in a what's, good way. what's the connection though to, between the people who write the names of the trophies and the people who write the game? Do you think they all they oh, have any sure. say really? I do not. Yeah, I had, like my impression was that it was just a different team that like thinks up good, cool names for the trophies. Look, and stuff, whether but... the trophy was written by Santa Monica, oh well, I think it was uh, Ready at Dawn actually made those games. But whether it was yes. them or. Uh, or someone else, it doesn't change the fact that a quick time event to abandon your daughter is really it's combined yeah, with true. the trophy sound and deadbeat dad on screen. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, 
How much gamer score do I get for abandoning my daughter? Asians. <laughs> oh no, so it's PlayStation a small... trophy. That's I think right. it's a bronze trophy. trophy. Yeah, I believe, I believe yeah, that one is a bronze, but a if, bronze. if you told me it was a silver, I wouldn't be, be surprised. Should have been Dang. a platinum. <laughs> That's yeah. the platinum yeah. trophy. <laughs> That's the one that just gives you all the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. So you're making smarter decisions about when to use magic, and you're taking extra care of your health bar. If you played, I mean, all, just just pretty good for a PlayStation game. Want to plant the seed that all of what he said is applicable to 2018 and Ragnarok. Yeah. On easy or even normal, you didn't have to worry about that stuff. But there were still things in the game <laughs> when you just kill it, just civilians kill fell. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, classic. Listen, guys, the first three God of War games they were really funny. They were funny. Way. They were yeah. much edgier. Game that asked you to use your head and demanded coordination. That's where we get into puzzle solving and, most importantly, platforming. If you can't time your jumps to make it across a hazard area, it doesn't matter if you're on easy or hard. This section with the archers shooting arrows while you're... Uh, so... This actually... Oh, yeah, you, sorry. You, you do your thing. This yeah. is... Well, this is, this is kind of fun, because this was uh, something I talked about in the Crash Bandicoot video, an interesting thought about the nature of uh, difficulty in video games. The idea... I think it was spurred in that by the, the, the conversation relating to the idea that games should have difficulty settings, that that's mm -hmm. something that they should do, that there's something wrong with a game when it chooses, there's only one level of difficulty, sorry. But I mean, in a certain sense, it could be said that like all platform, like a platformer is a game, at the end of the day, you've got to be able to make the jump and there's not really anything the game can do to help you with that. You even see it in Mario where they, they started adding the um, invincibility to Nuki's suit. It doesn't matter if you're invincible if you can't make the jump. You just need yeah, to have yeah, right. sufficient dexterity to make the jump. They can't fix that mm -hmm. for you. That's not like mm -hmm. a bridge. That is like the baseline level of difficulty in a platformer is can you make the jump? Which is kind um, of weird as well in God of War specifically because if you fail enough times, the game is like, do you want to switch to easy mode? It's like, that doesn't I help me. Change anything. It's only a problem. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of uh, why it's interesting to bring it up here because... This is a game that has difficulty because it makes sense to implement that as a feature because of the, well, or rather it's something you can actually do in a game like this because, mm -hmm. you know, you've got health and the enemies have health so you can buff the player's health or increase the amount of damage dealt. But I mean, yeah, platforming sections in a game like this, I mean, yeah, I guess it is just a matter of if you can't make the jumps too bad. Well, but platforming... I wonder where he's going with it. Platforming is an interesting sort of phenomenon in a set of mechanics in video games when it relates to difficulty sliders because you have to make sure when you're developing a game and you have platforming sections that you don't accidentally softlock players from being able to complete that section. If you take, I'll use Guild Wars 2 as an example, as an MMO with a lot of platforming in it, a lot of jumping puzzles and things of that nature. However, Guild Wars 2 is also, being an RPG and MMO, is a game where you can give yourself a lot of buffs and boons, like swiftness and super speed, to make your character move faster. However, if you don't have access to those boons, which you might not, depending on your class and the weapons that you have at the moment, you have to make these jumping puzzles so that even a player who doesn't have those upgrades can still complete the puzzle. So, uh, in games where you get to a section where you can't get back, you can't make puzzles that rely on the player making upgrades if it has to relate to like double jumping or jump distance or their speed because you'll lock the player out of progress so you have to find different ways of making different jumping puzzles more difficult so in guild wars 2 it might be that the the, the distances are longer so you have to be you know better timed there might be traps and hazards and you might be on a time limit things of that nature even though the actual individual jumps aren't you know change that's so, a pretty cool way to do it adding yeah, yeah so there's, there's always going to be ways because like I mean, for example this box puzzle you could just make it stronger on higher lower difficulties right there's ways yeah yeah you can you can give people less options you can I yeah suppose you, what's uh interesting in this is is the question of because he's made it as an observation which is true that in platforming there's only so much that you can do uh but you can do a lot but, well, like the, this you timing can. the jumps thing. It's like lower difficulty, make the platforms bigger, make the soul blades slower and disappear. So, like this. I mean, that's uh, I man, yeah. I mean, I guess you could uh, you could do that. I, well, I this is every Mario be, game. Uh, what? Yeah, with this every Mario blocks game of the switches. Starts... Yeah, well, no, even in Mario about... Wonder. 
I was just thinking about Sorry, the progression of the game. Starting the first level is really easy, and the last level oh, is no, 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 no. harder. What I, what I meant is that um, there's only so much that you can do before there is no platforming anymore. There's only so much that you can do before it ceases to be like a video game where, like, you can't get rid of the actual jumps. There's, there's got to be jumps, and you got to be able to make the jumps. That's like the, the, the the flaw on the difficulty in a platformer because if you well, that's jump, the argument what, what if making? when failing the jump it just pushes you back out back to where your platform you know like you go whoa and jump back out yeah, of the hole back with where you with were. no penalty yeah yeah you oh, 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 no 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 sure but but it would be that the the idea would be that there's a possibility saying it's soft lock doesn't even sound right because it's just like well you can't beat it sorry but that, like, um, that if if they if you failed and it said that's okay, buddy, and it just teleported you to the other side, it's like, oh, so you. Well, yeah, for no, sure. That applies there is to no all. Challenge anymore. That applies to combat as well, right? Like, if you're hitting, pe if yeah. someone goes, I just, don't oh know, yeah, yeah, if I you keep missing them, you know. Invincibility. But uh, well, do you yeah. remember? Like, that's okay. Do you remember how Cuphead gated its difficulty level? Uh, what, by uh, getting okay. past the tutorial? If you can get past the tutorial. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. It, 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 so Cuphead did something. It pissed off a lot of game journalists, too. So half of the, the back few missions of Cuphead are totally locked on easy mode. So you can't oh, ever play right. them. So hmm. the only way that you can see the end of the game is if you use easy mode to practice, get a sense of the mechanics, and then try it on the standard difficulty. I'm cool with that. I mean, the... I yeah. mean, even the game, um, even, well, Mahler, you'll be, for, actually, a lot of us will be. Helldivers 2 actually does this to a degree. Yeah, where yeah, super true. samples are only game. available at difficulty yeah. 7, 8, and 9. Mm -hmm. So there mm -hmm. are literally going to be shit module yeah. upgrades that are locked behind. Fucking get good. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get good enough to play on at least we'll get level friends 7. friends who are very good. <laughs> in order to, or have, <laughs> have your friends carry you through missions, true. Um, so Honestly, the, wow, that kind of that helps justify the existence of the Helldivers cash store a bit too, especially considering that you can earn everything on its own. The idea that it's like, well, if you don't want to get good, I guess you could buy the stuff, but also you can't, play no, you can't buy that. No, no, but it, it, don't you get different things on every? It isn't it like every eighteen hours or something like Just that? Just to be clear, super credits switches? and super samples are different. Yeah, yeah. The super yeah, samples are the the pink samples you need to unlock some of the ship modules, and you can only oh, okay. get those at, at level seven, eight, nine. They don't spawn at six and below. I you think. you don't get ship levels in the cash store ever because it no. sounds like you get almost everything. No, else. you use no. You get you you when you extract with samples, you use the samples to upgrade your ship modules. Requisition huh. points are used to unlock stratagems, and super credits are used to purchase cosmetics. All of and which unlock war bonds can be found. All of which can be in earned game. in game. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Everything yeah, Helldivers 2 is good, game. everybody. So what's crazy yeah, is like, like, how much conversation this has spawned because the first thing I wanted to say, it's not said yet, and I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Uh, I want to know from Metal and, and everyone else who's played these games, preferably more than once because that's kind of the the mm -hmm. way that I'm contextualizing this. But when in God of War 1, 2, and 3, or any of the ones of the older format, I walk into an arena and it spawns like 10 dudes and one ogre. I'm like, okie dokie. So I, I already know how I can deal with this. And if my magic's full, I'm like, yeah, let's go, baby. However, mm -hmm. when I come across a moment like is presented on screen, I go, <laughs> and, and it's like, yeah, whoa, 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 sections... why? And it's like, because these sections suck. Yeah, they're bad. And you That's might not be even like, the worst one. You know, we, why, we obviously... It's like, oh, why bad. do they suck? Bad. And I'd say it's, uh, it's like playing Guitar Hero songs where playing one of your favorite songs ever and, and you just got to hit 80% of the notes and you'll make it through versus playing Old MacDonald Had a Farm and it's only one note and if you miss any single note, you die. You're like, <laughs> okay. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah. And if someone's like, yeah, but it's a good gonna... challenge and it's like, Pfft, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what constitutes a good challenge or not is always, you know, subject of a great deal of discussion. Sure, many things are technically difficult, but there's a difference between having things be difficult in a good way and difficult in a very annoying frustrating you know mind-numbing oh, kind of way yeah, yeah. i mean famous, I demand, famously you gotta be careful God when you demand perfection from players that's a very uh yeah. that's a, that, that is a legitimately very high bar i mean these these uh jumping se uh, uh sections i mean we have the famous one in god of war one is it right the whole fleshy rotating oh, bits God, yeah Hades underworld the yeah worst. the underworld which is like jesus christ well if That's that gets brought up, God. we will talk about that too. I just like it's sort of chat sure. said old McDonald had a duck. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hades of God of War One is no joke. My least favorite part of the entire series. It's 
I think possibly everyone's is it's definitely one of the lowest rate it's like famous for being horrible and it always was yeah. like even when God of War 2 was coming out people would be like fuck do you remember that stupid fucking level with the stupid he's like yeah yeah I remember and then they send you Hades at the end of the intro mission of 2 yeah but it's not I as cringe like, oh no yeah no it's not nearly <laughs> it's, it's alright <laughs> Most important. Isn't it also platform. the case in these old God of War games that, like, whenever you're walking on these narrow beams, it does almost like a Tony Hawk's pro skater thing where you're on like a lip yes. and you're maintaining balance left to right? Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. like Dark Souls where you can just like run across, you know, if you're precise enough without mm -hmm. worry, you know? Yeah, you can fuck up super easily and oh, then yeah. you just have to do it over and over again. That's just so annoying. I hate it so much. Yeah. Um, if you can't time your jumps to make it across a hazard area, it doesn't matter if you're on easy or hard. This section with the archers shooting arrows while you're trying to move a box forward, that box is gonna break on easy or hard. If you can't walk- That's not necessarily a good thing. Um, well, just, just so FYI. that the interesting part of the conversation is, uh, you know, th these are observations, but is it good or bad when the difficulty is that way? Also, I'm, mm -hmm. it is, yeah, he's got it in here. This is the fucking nightmare realm that no one likes right. playing. Oh, oh, yeah, there it is. Walk across yeah. this box. Do you know what's really bad at it? Is the checkpoints can, like, be triggered when you shouldn't hurt. So as, I'll do my when best to explain this. Die. <laughs> but let's say you need to go to A, then B, then C. Uh, let's say A is a button, B is a button, C is the door. So you head to C, and you, you, you do it first, because you don't know the map yet. So you go to C, you go past all the goober nonsense, and you trigger a checkpoint. And then you go, oh, I need, I need to press the buttons. Okay, I'll go back. So you go back, then you yeah. go to A, and then you press the button, then you die. And you're like, right, my checkpoint is at A, good. And then you go to B, <laughs> press the button, and you're like, cool, my checkpoint's at B. And then you go to C, and you're getting through that horrible pathway again. Maybe get to the end and die, then your checkpoint's triggered back at B. Mm -hmm. Instead of giving you that checkpoint at C, because you triggered it earlier, when you were just looking uh -huh. around. And so you're like, so I, if you do it wrong, <laughs> which you wouldn't know you're doing it wrong, you can fuck yourself over completely with having to do way more than you needed to do. And uh, it's just painful. It's just a series right. of these little, these. Bar while the blades are spinning at you, Ugh. lowering it to easy isn't going to help you out. If you can't time and space your jumps, you're not going to make it across this section. The easy difficulty was just there to help you survive the combat. Mm -hmm. There were still Wait, other... Did you show that example earlier? Mm -hmm. Did he show that one twice? I think so. I think he's just saying... I don't right, know, yeah. Fundamentally. Yeah. You're also, not gonna make it across this section. I don't I don't agree with this uh, saying that Easy Mode's only there to help you with a combat. I think that the issue here is that the whole game is about the combat and not enough either attention, effort, or they oh, weren't what? capable yes. or... How much yeah. platforming is there in like God of War One? Quite a bit. It's, it's um, a bit. No, yeah. that's, it's it's almost uh, not fifty fifty. It's like no. seventy thirty. Seventy thirty, I'd say. Puzzles and platforming well, versus combat. The thing is, if you knock out, if you distinguish between walking around and discovering things, takes yeah. up a lot as well. Like the actual platforming, yeah, I'm true. not sure if that that could be like ten percent, maybe fifteen. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's like a couple of sections, like this one he's showing right now. Like that 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 I would call this is like, small. A puzzle, like a platforming section. Just a lot of people quickly. walking around and, and just... you have to do this one twice as well. So, but a lot of the the sequences where you walk around and just explore and find chests and stuff like that, there's usually enemy encounters that just kind yeah. of bring up those mm -hmm. like not invisible walls, but literal walls that only drop when you've completed the combat encounter. Yeah, typically in games, the difficulty is not going to apply to platforming sections. It'll just be the same no matter what. Um, it does take that bit of a, it shouldn't be really because platforming is part of the game and the difficulty should reflect that. But yeah, a lot of the time it's just, yeah, the, the only thing that's going to be more difficult in a game is, is essentially the combat sections. Well, and like, yeah, the only thing that comes to mind where you could set different difficulties for different things is like Silent Hill. You had like a puzzle difficulty and oh, a combat yeah, yeah, yeah. Difficulty. I think the more other than like modern day well. accessibility yeah. settings. Yeah. I think, like I think the last like, did um, it as well. Lost of Us 2. Yeah. This can actually inadvertently create a great deal of tension in games like, um, I'll use Dead Space 2 as an example, um, where if you're trying to go through the game without dying, or dying as little as possible, which is going to be necessary for you to do if you're going to play the hardcore mode, is that there are segments that are going to be sort of like cinematic and cutscene y. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. you will have to do things that will, if, if you get touched once, you're dead. Uh, whereas, obviously, in combat, you got a lot more stuff to work with and a lot more mechanics. And then you get to these sections where, oh, I, I got to come down from the, 
you know, the solar array and back into the sprawl. And I have to fly through space and not hit any of the debris or else I'm dead in one hit or whatever. How and, many um, people die on a hardcore run of Dead Space 2 at the eye needle puzzle? Mm. <laughs> oh, dude. I feel sorry for those guys. I've, like I've never failed it. I don't, I don't actually... Oh, really? No, oh, my God. No. Yeah, I'm not I'm, good at it. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm really good at Dead Space, but I've, I've never actually <laughs> failed that part. I think um, there was... I remember in my Dead Space 2 playthrough when I did beat Hardcore Mode, and I was planning out... Because I played it a whole bunch. I love that game. I was planning out where my saves would be my first save was always when you go back to the Unitology church and it's all fucked up after the marker, you know, it starts mm -hmm. doing all its spookiness because there's a segment there where there's just a lot of enemies in the main atrium. And that's a fairly difficult part. And so that would be like oh, yeah. my first save would be right before that fight because I knew, you know, you could, you could die here. They come in from yeah. multiple angles. You have all the enemies, so. It was very easy to die suddenly, yeah, like just yeah. with a, the slightest mistake. Good, uh, good stuff though. It was very rewarding to finish that game and do that challenge. Uh, it was. I don't think the first Dead Space had a similar challenge. I think it just had impossible mode, which was just really difficult. Hmm. But I can't remember if it did or not. I got all the achievements for it on the Xbox 360, but I can't remember if it had a similar, like don't die or. Only two checkpoint, three checkpoint systems. I can't remember. Um, and you know, someone said he they, he's saying they designed easy mode with only combat in mind, not that they should do it. And yeah, that's what we've addressed so far. We haven't said that he said that they should do it. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the nature of it, and I I think I would take issue with defining it unless you have a quote or a source that it was intentional. Like we didn't want to change the puzzle combat, of course. We only wanted to change the combat combat. I shouldn't have said puzzle combat, but you know what I mean. Encounters. I uh, <laughs> I find that uh, there's m m multiple explanations for that. One of them could be that they found it easier to you know set a mode for the game of boosting all enemy health by seventy five percent. You know to create a difficulty. Like there you go, done. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, like we were saying, but to change platforming requires a bit more. Yeah, you got to do a lot um, more. Yeah, it, and every every puzzle is going to require a different, you know, difficulty well, and amount of numbers or combinations or clues and things of that I nature. I guess it maybe might it, depend on how you code the game, too, because if there's just one sort of setting in the code for platform speed, then, you know, you could just turn that all down to 50 across yeah, the board. Yeah, or boost your health sure, or reduce maybe. your health or your damage. There's lots of ways you can do it quickly. What I was going to highlight was that... Uh, when you take this moment, for example, and you're like, all right, I want you to extend all the platforms by two times and remove the saw blades, that's time you're spending that could be spent on coding the game, you know, as mm. is. And it's like, fuck it, we'll just leave the puzzles as they are. Like, I'm more inclined to believe that's the case than to believe they thought, you know, when switching it from easy to hard, we will keep the puzzle difficulty the same. Or vice versa. And there is an yeah. element of, uh, like, do we really want to make the platforming more difficult for people? Hmm. or more easy there, like that... they probably when yeah, they designed it's... at the time thought this was reasonable and they were like we'll just keep it this way right yeah, well, a lot of the time the... having it was not reasonable the difficult <laughs> not reasonable <laughs> one of the biggest issues i have with difficulty selection in games though is that it's not often clear which mode is the intended experience because now normal mode is is kind of code for like normie people mode like the casual audience mode <laughs> and not not the easy one so it, it ends up being way easier than you're sort of expecting it to be but then there's plenty mm. of games where if you pick the hard mode it's like oh yeah this is the sweaty get good mode that yeah only only, you'll only be able to even have a chance of getting through this if you know the game like the back of your hand. And also, yeah, I, th I don't I know. Think, I'd, I'd like it, to just know what what's the the actual normal. I yeah. know you mean because I think me and Mel are the same on that. Where if it's easy, normal, hard, expert, we'll be like probably hard, but maybe hard. Expert. Yeah. Maybe. Because the thing is, like a couple of years ago, extreme. when I started playing a game, it's like, oh, you know what? I'll do normal because that's yeah. probably the way they intended to play the game. But that's, the more that's I, usually I, what I do. Is, yeah, because because I really now, want to know. You know. But but personally, now most of the times I just go imme hard immediately because normal is just like super easy. It's usually too easy a lot of times. Um, but you know there are uh, some games like uh, Rogue City where everyone was like play expert, play expert, expert, expert because mm -hmm. hard's too easy. <laughs> and oh like, yeah, oh, okay, that, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, because I uh, you told me to play that on the hardest available, and I did, and it was good. It was good. Was. I think I mentioned this on a previous episode, but I always thought of hard mode as like sort of the developer's normal. And then they'll yeah, fashion and that, the normal and that's, mode for like that's sort of where I'm at players. too. And that could be Halo's influence I wish they on would, you. They were there. being clear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 
maybe. Well, yeah, because heroic. heroic canon they, difficulty because it gets interesting yeah, as they well come out when you like, heroic is the intended experience that's what i mean yes. more games should do that because now it gets interesting because you have like things like new game plus as well where it's like oh can yeah. i change my difficulty up after new game plus there's this games where, where they definitely intend you to hey do normal things and get like the, the loot you can get here and then you can go to a high difficulty because otherwise you're just going to get thrashed yeah it's uh, arpg that, that style yeah difficulty tiers Exactly. Imagine yeah, so the game that opens are... with just expert mode, and the more you play it, the more you unlock the lower difficulties. <laughs> like what? <laughs> you have to suffer and die before we'll allow you to play lower difficulties. It's like grinding experience points. <laughs> difficulty is a fun topic. It's not as it easy is. as you think. It's lots of factors and values you have to consider. And I mean, for instance, that thing yeah. that. It was mentioned earlier about a, a universal slider for a game and one that even affects the platforms. It's mm -hmm. like, well, that might not, not that might not even work if you have platforms that are set at certain speeds to create certain openings and windows. And by yeah. changing platform speed, it might literally make the the puzzle impossible. So even in that element, there is a yeah, that's true. Each puzzle, each platforming section, it requires its own particular look, and it's yep. why I appreciate a lot of the time when games. And when, when developers go through that, that bit of extra effort to make sure that when I say I want the game harder, it generally will apply to everything and not just bump up numbers without any, you know, context. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Hell, Helldivers, again, you just you get different enemies and high difficulties. All of a sudden, those bugs yep. start shooting artillery at you. It's like, hey, excuse me? <laughs> All of a sudden, they have Imperial Walker-sized bugs. <laughs> exactly. There's our AT <laughs> RTs, right? Hmm? You talk about the, the ones what they are. No, because the, the, the ones that the automatons have, they're like the ones from the Clone Wars. Those are oh, those man, are was... AST, those are AT. You mean AATs? Right? What are you talking about? You're talking about the clones. Just they're, they're yeah, the small clone ones, walkers. yeah. Oh. Yeah, the clone small walkers. A I think you're right, yeah. No, no, that's the big one. Because then you got... ATRTs. Okay. Is, it, um, is the walker and the gorilla the, walkers the in um, TLJ, are they called ATARTs, -A -A I think, as well? There's, there's so fucking many of them at this point. I huh? don't yeah, know. They're, they're, I thought those were just ATATs. No, you see ATATs in the scene, but you see the new and improved, better, bigger versions, and I think they're called ATATRTs or something like that. Someone in chat's probably going to know. Wow, that's a mouthful. I'm just saying that you. ADHD, which is... Uh, <laughs> it explains why I could remember. Yeah. Yes. I was talking about the bile titans though. The, the first time I saw one of those, I was like, okay, so these are a thing I'm gonna have to be fighting now. Oh, fun fact, if you didn't know about the bile titans, if you if you take out the little green sacks underneath them, they can no longer spit acid. Huh? That's oh, usually okay. what I'm aiming for. But uh, I don't know if I have Wait. the weapons to take them down usually. I usually bring a machine gun in and it seems like you really need one of the big booms for taking uh, fighting them really. Do you guys hear about that, like, under-the-hood dynamic difficulty adjustment that I think Sony patented, where, like, it'll adjust the, concept, the game yeah. without you even knowing, which I think is f a fucking atrocious Evil. idea. Yeah. I Evil. think there are versions of that that we're all okay with, though. It's dependent on how it's implemented, because Left 4 Dead has that. Right. Resident Evil 4 is a, the, a famous yeah. user of that. It's, um, right. Resident yeah. Evil 4 does not tell you that this system, uh, it doesn't tell you that this is a thing that exists in the game. And it doesn't tell you that this the professional mode of RE4 is just the the hardest that the game can be all the time, regardless oh, of how okay. well or poorly mm -hmm. you're doing. So okay, it's, I, I think it's in the execution. Well, yeah, no, and I think in the case of Left 4 Dead, they at least advertised it. Like that was one of the selling points I remember was that it had an the AI director, director. Yeah, who's yeah. watching you yeah, play yeah. and he's judging you. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't want any games like having that secretly, you know. Where, How or where, where like I find out later, it's like, what the game did that really? Like, fuck. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I don't think want to fuck with my head well, like that. personally. <laughs> but I, I think I, that professional I, mode, knowing that that's just the highest version of Resident Evil 4's experience all the time, that makes me feel a lot better about it. However, it, it doesn't. It doesn't tell you that. Resident Evil 4 yeah. does not tell you that how mm -hmm. that on normal mode, it's it, it's got the uh, difficulty adjustment, and it doesn't tell you that professional is just. It always on the highest tier of difficulty all the time. So these are things yeah. that you, you you have to learn out of the game. I'm happy I know that now. Yes. All right. Anyway, this is a video we're watching. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah. We gotta talk about this game.
The easy difficulty was just there to help you survive the combat. There were still other aspects of the game that remained challenging for you, no matter what difficulty you chose. Picking easy, easy in God of War doesn't mean you can just coast through every part of the game. Now let's look at Resident Evil. Those there's no there's no orts okay. attached to that, so we just have to leave it as a statement. It's like yeah, very well. Because mm -hmm. what he said, there's also the inverse element of it, where the the puzzles, the platforming, things like that. It might be as hard as ever. It might be as easy as ever, and that could be completely independent from whatever difficulty you select. Because like, I mean, Resident Evil Four, right? It doesn't matter if you're playing on easy or professional. You basically muscle memory all of the uh, really, Good really combos. simplistic puzzles. Well, yeah, it's it, it's oh, a. Puzzle. I find the statement interesting because you can smell a uh, prescription in there, but there's none. You're like, well, what are we? What, what do you? What are you, are you implying something? Like the God of War original changes difficulty on combat, but not on anything else. Doesn't allow you to just coast through. You're like. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> what are you, uh, yeah? <laughs> Those games traditionally only offered starting difficulties up to normal on your first playthrough. And while I would love to see a higher difficulty option unlocked right away, like they do for the modern games, the reason I don't think it's nearly as big a deal as, say, an action game like Devil May Cry not offering a hard difficulty is that the challenge of Resident Evil doesn't come from combat. The challenge of a Resident Evil um, game is largely can, about... Um, it's, it's, it's some, it some of it does. Some of it does, yeah. Well, and yeah. resource management is combat, and that's extremely important in the original yeah. Resident Evil game. You don't so have what to is be the challenge of, So what's the semantics. challenge of Resident Evil if it's not the combat? What is that to say? What to say? Probably the puzzles. Yeah. Puzzles, finding... puzzles okay. but also resource management, like knowing mm. whether it's worth it to kill an enemy or not. Yeah. Whether it's or you're going yeah. to... Or am I going to you got to pick your battles in that game, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to use the fire and oil to get rid of the zombie permanently. Yeah, so oh, it's yeah, going to be the way. I presume that the observation is it's not simply a matter of dexterity. you got to use your big old brain to uh, navigate the old... You have to yeah, well, the, the whole uh, Crimson huh. Head system in this game really mixes things up, which is one of my favorite aspects It makes of it, it the scariest game in the whole series, I think. Oh, yeah. Like, the, the presence of the Crimson Heads <laughs> is the... That's the deciding factor for me. I'm like, those are scary zombies, man. Right. In game like Devil May Cry not offering a hard difficulty is that the challenge of Resident Evil doesn't come from combat. The challenge of a Resident Evil game is largely about exploring and understanding the map, managing tight resources, backtracking that's weird. combat. It's weird to say that and also have the visual of shooting and managing. say it's not to do with combat. Like, that's so yeah. weird. Because I feel like managing resources in combat are pretty fucking heavily linked. Yeah. yeah. The three types of resource management in the game are ammo, ink ribbons for saving your game, and healing. And, and they're like, yeah, so three, using surely, your bullets um, in the right place at the right time. It's like, surely that's combat, yeah. not just I'm item not management. Just I, surely all of it is downstream. Downstream from all of the observations of you need to understand how to navigate the map and you need to understand how to use your resources is else the combat will kill you, right? Well, like yeah. that's right. Well, let's start yeah. falling all out of downstream. A like the difficulty is all it, like it all leads to or, or else you'll die in combat. Or like miss a bullet or it'll become... and it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then bad. have yeah. nothing nothing but the knife, which is not very good in this game. Yeah. And then you have to set aside one or two more inventory spaces for one or more keys. Like, you know, in some cases, there's like one door that you need to put two things into that you need to have on you. Mm. So like, yeah. Tight resources, backtracking to solve puzzles with important items, dealing with limited inventory space. Yeah, you're going to get bit by zombies, but the difficulty isn't just from the damage you take. It's that you may not have enough space to carry a first aid spray because you're carrying those puzzle pieces you need. And if you're yeah, not until you yeah, might die, which you die. I, uh, yeah. yeah. It's always so, time. It's, it's um it's kinda like yeah. the whole, you know, my game is difficult because I made the enemies have more health. It's like, oh well I was clever or uh, I made it so that the weapons do less damage. And then another guy goes, Well, I was clever because I just reduced the overall health of the player. And it's like in a way you're all doing the same thing. Well, the third guy's yeah. like looking at the first two going, oh, those are like basically the same thing. When yes. You well, I, what I was trying to argue was <laughs> it's all in a sense like mistake management. Uh, you're trying to avoid, you get through it as kind best of, you yeah. can. Like, uh, 
you know, just to say this, to want to go this broad, but not the, the further step, you know what I mean? To be like, oh, you see, it's actually about yeah. this. It's like, well, it's really about like the broad thing of managing everything, I suppose. Intelligently planning your yeah. route, you're probably ill prepared and not being efficient. If you play Resident Evil on the easiest difficulty, you, you still have to play there? Resident Evil. Turning the zombies into wimps still leaves you with a game that demands you engage in the other systems in the survival horror genre. Okay. Oh, like God of War, right? Well, but again, we, we haven't gotten to his prescription yet, so I can't... I'm, I'm finding... Because I, I feel like I know exactly what point he's making, but he hasn't made it yet. You know, the, the whole... No, this is you, 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 are, you find yourself in the snow situation, huh? He wasn't, we, don't, we never found out if he was talking about snow. I'm just, we're, we're clearly going to find out what he's talking about here. The knives I, that I were in the inventory there specifically save you from one hit in combat. A zombie can grab you and then you can use one of them, you stab him in the head, and then that knife's gone. They're expendable items. But that, they're absolutely tied to combat. Well, so I understand the observation. So, my, this is what I presume is he's ramping up to is, do you understand how uh, the old God of War games and how the old Resident Evil games... Regardless of the difficulty, there were certain things that couldn't be changed. Certain things there were that certain, required like, challenge of the difficulty from the difficulty that couldn't be changed. One of them was platforming, that there is, there is a certain amount of dexterity you need to do the platforming. And then in Resident Evil's case, it's there is a certain amount of using your big old brain that you have to do, no matter how easy or difficult you make the game. Yes. And that God of War fails to provide something. The new God of War games fail to provide same something for Resident along Evil. those lines. That they are, yeah, same for the new Resident Evil Village. Hmm, let's see. I can't hand the <laughs> controller to my dad and pick easy and say, here you go, just play through the game so you can see the locations and enjoy the story. Because I just want to, I mean, want to be clear, so, that's presented so, as a bad thing, right? I'm not saying he's saying that, but it sounds like he's saying that's a bad, like a... Uh, sorry, a good thing. No, no, thing. no. He's saying he's saying this is a good thing. That I just, the game I just said, can't just be. Yeah, is he? Yeah, yeah. He's saying <laughs> yes. it. He, the, yes, that's definitely. what I said. He didn't say it, but it's presented as though I can't just like you know, Guitar Hero is difficult because I you know I'm not gonna fucking toss it to someone. They could just do it. That's why the challenge is there. And it's like which of it, course. It, there's a oh, conversation to be had about the value of challenge. I understand that, but that isn't the whole point of a difficulty selector to reduce or increase challenge well and, and also there, there's a conversation to be had about whether or not games ought to be somebody's first game that somebody could i mean you feel like that that philosophy is represented a lot of nintendo games that they are made with the awareness that it could be someone's first video game mario kart could be someone's I think first that's video game the t like you know new super mario brothers wonder could be somebody's first video game they are designed in such a way that you could give it to basically anybody and they would pick it up fairly quickly. And of course, it would get more challenging as time went on. And maybe there'd be certain things that a totally new player couldn't do or that it would take them way longer to do than the average person. But I don't know if you could say that it's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing when um, somebody, you know, that a, that a game could be somebody's first video game or that somebody would design a game so that it could be somebody's first video game. Also, I, I thought I said something that was, like, impossible to disagree with, but someone said, no, it's not, when I said, is a difficulty selector not the decision to increase or reduce challenge? Does hmm. anyone disagree that with that? Sounds like... <laughs> that I mean, no, that sounds well, like a pretty disagreeable point there, Mola. Like, I, I'm genuinely curious, how does one disagree with that statement? <laughs> like, I don't even know. I he, thought it was kind of... He just basically defined the difficulty. Yeah, exactly. like... Yeah. Obviously, it branches out into more interesting conversations about the nature of puzzle challenge, which is what we've been getting at, but that surely everyone agrees choosing um, higher and lower difficulties is indicative of more or less challenge. Well, I guess uh, something that would be interesting to throw into the conversation, because I presume that the, the argument would be that the design philosophy of newer games has been ruined uh, by the, the essentially this over reliance on difficulty slider and you know the the rather than building challenges that can't be changed with a slider. But I mean, you could have something in Resident Evil right where on easy difficulty you just press a button that says this is the route you should take. Like there based are... on the number of items that you have right now, this is the route that you should take. This is where you should go. This yeah, is the, the item that is the least valuable to you right now. Yeah, like, what he seems to be highlighting is going to be able to go so much further than what he seems to be highlighting, as in, like, it's nice that they kept the challenges so challenging no matter the difficulty, when it's like, well, why why not make them 
you know, uh, say for example, a jumble of letters, and you've got to make the words uh, a word out of it, several words. This is the, that part of the game, and the higher the difficulty, the less letters there are. It's that simple. Well, or um, you know, or that if you're on an easier difficulty, you get additional inventory slots. Yeah, the you know yeah. the challenge is still there. It's just easier. Uh, yeah, I guess you what find, I'm more uh... interested in is the idea that your design philosophy can remain, can potentially remain exactly the same while still incorporating these aspects of difficulty into it. Potentially, anyway. It actually made me think of um, the bunker, uh, Amnesia the bunker. Remember, Mel, the customization for difficulty mm -hmm. in that? It was uh, uh, arguably intense. I mean, you, you told me about it when I played it. The, the, I, I don't yeah, you think it was implemented that way. You can but set yeah. enemy like speed, frequency, and aggression, and then you can set like frequency of oil where you can find it right, and how right, big right. it'll be when you find it. I the capacity love of your that. oil lamp. Literally that everything you could imagine, you could yeah. fucking customize. Yeah. Inventory slots they let you customize. It's, it's yeah. uh, make your own or uh, do try and beat yeah. our presets. You know, like we have a one of my it. one of my very favorite games, RimWorld. Uh, yeah, has this as well with its difficulty. You can uh, set the presets, or you can make a custom difficulty, and it even lets you make custom difficulties based off of the preset. So you can go to, you know, losing is fun difficulty, and then you could go to custom, and then you'll see all the stats and sliders for what losing is fun is as a difficulty, and then you can tweak it. So if you're like, you know what, I want to play this difficulty, but... I still want to keep the same amount of this, and I still want to keep hmm. keep child soldiers, of course. And uh, let's lower, <laughs> obviously, let's lower that slider, and let's make that slider a bit bigger. And so you have the ability to really tailor an experience, yeah. just to what you find most fun and challenging for you personally. I'm a huge hmm. fan of like big custom, you know, difficulty slider options. I love them. The, uh, I I maybe my eyes like, well, were too big for my stomach on RimWorld's difficulty because I tried playing it once and I got messed up very quickly. Part of the game, dying is part of the fun. Keep playing, <laughs> yeah. Um, you can play think, however uh, you want. Difficulty adjustments only going to take you so far. I mean, like with the case of Resident Evil, if you were to give like hand over the controller to a totally novice video game player and ask them to play Resident Evil, they would probably struggle with the idea of fixed perspective and. Yeah. Tank literally yes absolutely yes yeah. if you give yeah. it's it's sort of something that we take for granted being you know elite gamers that we are mm -hmm. but if you gave someone who's never played a video game like whether it could be at a keyboard or with a controller and say yeah so that mm -hmm. that one on the left that that moves you around and the right one there that that that's the direction that you're looking in and then having yeah. them navigate three-dimensional spaces with moving and looking yeah. around it, it's actually a skill that has to be learned it's not like naturally intuitive to the human condition so um, it's it, it takes time to learn, and I think sometimes we got to remember a lot of people just don't have that skill; they just haven't done it yet. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, mentioned in chat, there are games where sliders increase enemy count and therefore resource gains and snowball acquisitions and power in a edge case, but it does happen. The thing about that though is that it's still typically like more enemies is harder than less enemies. You know, so it's like yeah, but you get more yeah. XP and thus you're able to buy more things that make you more powerful, or whatever. Yeah. At the same Ultimately, time, it's still the initial. Yeah. yeah, and, and I, I assume they're called hard, right? The difficulty or hard and expert and stuff. The implication being this is going to be more challenging. I don't know of a difficulty setting that doesn't relate to how difficult it's going to be. <laughs> no, it sounds right. stupid, but what I'm getting at is like, are there any challenge mm -hmm. systems that say like this is going to be uh, adjacent rather than higher or lower? Well, but it's not that they wouldn't play... exist. It's not that they couldn't exist. I just I'm not familiar with that many at all. Have you guys played the System Shock remake? I no. have not. I no. wish to. It's really good. I have. I would it is highly quite recommend good. it. Uh, that has custom difficulties, so for a bunch of different uh, factors like enemy number, how Hacking. aggressive they are, and so on. But one of the difficulty sliders, uh, if you set it to the hardest, it actually sets a time limit. So you have to get to a certain point at the end of the game within, I think it's eight hours. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Even even if you haven't changed any of the difficulty setting, getting there within eight hours is pretty is pretty hard. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like System Shock, I've spent a lot of time wandering around the ship trying to figure out where the next place I can possibly go is. That sounds about pretty right. Yeah, under a timeline. <laughs> it's um, beautiful though, and it's coming out on consoles too, even physically. Oh, oh physical nice. copies. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, someone in chat said, uh, "Tank controls are balls, no matter the game. Never like them." But let me posit to you that I like tank controls, particularly 
when I'm driving a tank. Hey. Something that should not be understated. <laughs> I, I love tank controls when I'm driving a tank. So whether it's Battlefield 5 or whatever and I'm in a tank, it's actually like, oh, I, I'm tank controls. I'm in a tank. I have to factor also, that into how I move around. So. To be curious, um, uh, when we crack full control, like VR, plugging things into our heads, whatever the fuck, however many years, Ooh. Uh, and we got full, easy control that's smooth for a game that's all realized in our head. Like, go, I could see people being like, ooh, playing a game on like, analog sticks to run around. Okay, yeah, that's a bit crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you believe, people play shooters on those things where they have to aim at stuff? Can yeah. you believe that? Dude, it's right, so actually... funny because back in the day, I, I didn't have like a big gaming PC, so I always had a PlayStation. And I played shooters, shooters on there, and I thought it was pretty decent. When I go back to controller and start shooting and aiming at things, like, I, my first... Mm -hmm. Idea is like, how did I do this back then? Like, I I can't aim this. This is balls. <laughs> when I, like, I, I feel like I unlearned that skill on the controller. When I got Rags, my first, yeah. Have you ever played Metroid Prime? I yeah. I actually have oh, not. Yeah. I've played Metroid oh, Prime man. two, but I never actually played the first one. Yeah, oh, did you, did you play it on a GameCube or on PC? Mm -hmm. Like later on. Uh, well, game. I mean, you played on Wii, right? I played on you the GameCube. Oh, yeah. on Wii. Well, actually, on, on PC, the way to do it is to play the Wii version with this mod called Prime Hack, and it just integrates perfect mouse keyboard controls into it. And it's, I just, ooh, uh, it's great. That, would, that sounds like it's really neat, but I, I played <clears> Metroid uh, Prime 2 on the GameCube. Yeah. The original one, though, the Switch version has kind of modern first-person shooter controls, and it feels pretty good. But I, I was just kind of wondering if you preferred the, the tank controls in that game. But if you haven't played it in a while, then maybe you I, I assume it's identical to Metroid Prime 2 in terms of the controls. Basically, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I have, in essence, played it, yes. It was fine for me. Of course, I was much, much younger, and I had much less frame of reference. When you don't have, when the only console you really play on is going to often be like a GameCube, your sense of first person shooters is a bit skewed. Oh, yeah, especially so. However, Star Fox Assault on GameCube, you use that little C stick yeah. as your aiming thing, so they could do it. It was possible. Namco game. We had the technology. Yeah. Because he'll get lost. And that's the point. These games had things in them that were universal across all difficulties. So what happened to God of War when it came back in oh, 2018? Oh, I mean, well, no, oh, that's here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Point? You could, I mean, before we even get started, God of War has the universal uh, spatial navigation thing of <laughs> you need to know where to go. I know this is going to sound stupid, but seriously, that like someone actually knows which places they're meant to go to or how to like maneuver through the world. That's something that will never be able to be changed, no matter what difficulty you're playing on. Of just, Maybe like, he's going to actually gonna... need to know how to get to the location. Even even in a game that's hyperlinear, someone can get stuck or lost or not yeah. know where they're going. That's I guess entirely I'm, possible. I'm assuming, though, he's probably going to reference the removal of the jump mechanic in all platforming. <gasps> I, my guess would be, well, I, I, he could go in a few directions, I guess. There's still possible. Yeah, well, but if it's I think even game, even with uh, oh. with with games that are relatively easier to control, like I remember, I wanted my mom to play GoldenEye multiplayer with me. I'm like, mm -hmm. here you go, nice. let's we'll play on faculty two player deathmatch, and she just could not get the hang of it. She was running into corners. Mm -hmm. She just couldn't figure out how to like look around. And it was so simple to me. It's just like, no, you just hold R and then you can aim around. But like, she just couldn't grasp it. And I remember thinking like, fuck, I wish there was just a mode that I could set where it was just easy for her to grasp it. And, you know, we could have fun. But it was just like a frustrating experience for her. And, and then Halo came out. And like, I probably this... wouldn't, if it was legitimately someone's very first game, I don't think I'd give them a first person shooter. No. I'd probably. I give them a game where they have to control That's the fair. camera. I'd give them yeah, yeah. Uh, a 2D platformer. 2D, or yeah. I'd give them Mario Kart. Well, just a game where you yeah, don't have Mario to Mario Party. The well, like I, that, yeah. I think giving her a twin bad. stick shooter would have been even just, would have added to the like problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's sure. what I mean. It's, it's, um, Twin Tetris might be kind of yeah, that kind of thing. Tetris. Basically, I, I think. I, 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 like, think I don't know. It sounds speak. silly, but genuinely, spatial awareness, like in a three D space and navigating <laughs> a three D space, like that, can just cause problems as like a first starting point of navigating a video game world compared to playing Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, yeah. It's I think a skill you take for granted too. as a gamer. A lot of people can get behind playing a fighting game pretty easily. It's pretty, like, especially if it's a 2D plane one where up is jump, down is duck. You go back with back, forward with forward, 
two punch buttons, two kick buttons, or three and three, and you know you do stuff. You're not going to be good, but you you can develop develop an affinity for video games through fighting games. I yeah, find, I mean, because I've seen I, I, it happen with a lot of people. I remember that happened multiple times just when, when I was, I don't know, in my room playing my PlayStation and my dad comes in and is like, yo, what you playing? Yeah, this thing. It's like, oh, that would be way too quick for me. And I was like, is it? That's a, is it quick? I don't know. It looks like normal to me. It's like one of these <laughs> things where you're just like, oh, I'm just, you're just used to it. Just yeah. yeah, I don't remember the transition to 3D being a hurdle. Like, I remember when I first got my N64 and Super Mario 64, like, I pretty much just immediately clicked. Well, you're, like, oh, I get, you're I get already, you, at that point, you're probably already used to the idea of mm. when you press a button on this controller, things happen on the screen, and you have to navigate the thing on the screen to do things and avoid things based off of the inputs on this controller. Yeah. It's like, um, it's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like driving a car in a way. Mm. And people are and many many people are used to that. So it's sort mm. of like a translation of those abilities into a different format. Well, and, and there were transitionary sure. games between 2D and 3D, right? Like 2D games that simulate 3D that you probably played. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. um, Doom being a well, pretty could, uh, uh, right, important Doom. one. Yeah. I feel uh, I guess interesting ones are like the transition between uh, games that have like full 3D, uh, like 360 degree movement versus the games that had uh, like eight directional uh, stuff. Like a lot of, because OG PlayStation didn't have uh, the uh, twin sticks initially. Mm -hmm. I think I got added later. So like, you know, yeah. original Crash Bandicoot is uh, eight directions, whereas Super Mario 64 is full 360 degree movement. And even even that, you know, that's like a, a notable um, difference. As well as as well as navigating with you know a fixed camera versus uh, a camera that you have a lot of control over. Sure, and and then to Mahler's point, I think there, you know the, you also in the sixteen bit era you had games that were sort of priming you for three D exploration, yeah, like, like the pseudo three D stuff, like yeah F Zero right, or like, like Crash Space Bandicoot Harrier or shit like that. Yeah. Crash Bandicoot as a whole too, like as Fringy was mentioning, the levels in that are very linear, and the camera you have no control fixed. over. So yeah. At, right, and at times yeah. it becomes a 2D platformer, so it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas it's a good it's bridge. Super Mario 64 is a uh, full 3D. This is like, yeah, this is what the promise of 3D games. I think the key yeah. is like, um, it, it's it's like a lot of things. Whether it's video games, whether I, I mean, I've seen this uh, myself in firearm shooting, where if you're trying to get someone who has never done it before into it, there's a place that you want to start them from. Mostly because it takes an amount of skill to get in, you know, to the middle or difficult stuff that you need to build up to. But also you want to avoid discouragement. Mm -hmm. If you give someone who's never shot a gun before a little pistol and say, hit that target 25 yards away, it's going to be fucking miserable. Because yeah. you're <laughs> asking them to do something that's really, really difficult. Whereas if you say, here's this little bitty rifle, 22 LR Ruger 1022 or whatever, and yeah. I want you to shoot at this, uh, that can, and you put it 10 yards away, they'll be able to do it. And that'll be like, oh, it, it'll be encouraging. I can do this. This is something that I can actually do. And video games long are the rifle same way. Is, 22 long rifles really great for beginners. That's... Yes, it is. And so video games are pretty much the same principle. You don't want to hand someone, you know, here's modern warfare. Go and shoot all the soldiers. And they're like, oh, God, all these buttons. And I don't know what they do. And you need to, it'll discourage them. It'll be like, it'll, yeah. they'll, they'll say it's way too much for me. When really, it's just a, a matter of just building it up. You start them on yeah. something super simple. Well then, right. Let us continue. Well, Back lots of, lots of video. We, as you can tell, we love talking video games. Okay. We just, yeah, we, we love talking about good. video games. All difficulties. So what happened to God of War when it came back in 2018? Well, Dad would be very happy because now you really can just pick easy and enjoy the locations and story. Platforming oh, no. was removed, which means that hazard-based puzzles and coordination-based puzzles were also removed. What about progress I, so, blocking puzzles? So again, I, I do want to emphasize you fundamentally still have to navigate the world. No matter how much you describe yeah. it as like, mm. well, it's really linear, so it's easy to know exactly where to go. I'm talking like an even more fundamental base, like you just know how to get from like point A to point B. That's something that can't be removed no matter what. The, like, I don't know what it means for a video game to, to be a video game and for it to like for it to remove any possibility that you can't fail 
But he's I don't in, even know what that looks like. It's, it's also a wrong. Game where it's impossible to fail. I mean, a... I don't, I'm not even against easy modes Wait, doing that. You have to like talk if, to if it's Cage about that, I'm afraid. <gasps> uh... Sean. <laughs> <laughs> there are coordination-based yeah. puzzles in this game. There's a lot of them. I don't know why he's implied that there aren't. Uh, not, I guess he said mm -hmm. for platforming, but like we can't ignore. The, uh, you know, you have to like freeze. Every time you have to throw wheels. your axe. Yeah. yeah or, mm. or like rooms where you have to, uh, God, English is so shit. Like, like spin the big wood mm. thing and, and then you have to freeze it so that you can go underneath a big ceiling, like a bunch of spikes are going to smash down. But then when you get in, a bunch of enemies come in. So you have to fight them with your fists. Because if you pull thing. back your Leviathan axe, then it's going to drop the ceiling on you. Right. That's like a combination of puzzle and combat. But then yeah. you have the basic puzzles, like all the times you have to get the, um, I want to say the, what what are the chests that have the apple of like they they give you health bonuses but you have to get them by the, oh when you have to find the, the little statues yeah you and, have to not uh, only find them but hit them all within a certain amount of time which requires yep. accuracy some of them are pretty mm -hmm. fucking tight as well like these yeah, things like, are still in the Riddler game puzzles that have got away yeah, and Mahler hmm? Mahler remember that we watched in our God of War uh, Ragnarok <laughs> oh. we we watched our our dear friend <laughs> our our dear dear friend our very intelligent. <laughs> Dear friend, synthetic man, try his hardest <laughs> at some of those very simple puzzles. That are present God in bless easy him. mode, by the way. <laughs> God bless him. He eventually got it. But watching him struggle through those was is very amusing. Yes. See, because someone just said those chess puzzles are easy. It's like, yeah, well, some gamer gods have trouble <laughs> on them, so funny. Even if Atreus or Freya say, this is what you need to do, you still got to do it. You, you know? still got to do it. Like, easy, <laughs> oh, I actually, I actually remember do it. there's actually one puzzle in, I think it was in Ragnarok. Yeah, it was Ragnarok, where you have to freeze a thing. And I, I didn't even know that was a thing I was allowed to do. I don't know if you remember which one I mean, mutually. It's when you have to freeze a certain place so it stops the water or something. I think, I think so, you got yeah. stuck in a couple of minutes as well. It's Vodelfheim, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like the character's like, look up there. It's like, where? There's nothing. It's like, oh, I can freeze <laughs> this like wherever I want. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, a lot of people so keep it, highlighting like the puzzles are easy. Arguably, <laughs> the fucking platforming puzzles in God of War 1 are easy. They're just frustrating because one mistake means you start yeah, from the beginning again. Yeah. In concept, they're yeah, easy, but to find... I know finding a thing and hitting it with a with another thing is easy, but you still have to find them. And in the end, if you get stuck by falling down a thing or get stuck by running around and finding a thing, is it that much of a difference and and difficulty in the end? Well, well then probably not, help. right? Once you do all of that, being an inaccurate statement on the actual state of the game, you then get to the question of why is this a problem? Right. Yeah. I would I say that there are. Of... You go ahead. You go ahead. The progress blocking aspect of the Not puzzle. You, is... CJ, who was talking. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> no, no, no. All I, I was basically just agreeing with Mauler. I wonder what his point actually is here. Like, is is it a bad thing that the platforming has been removed? If the intention of the devs was to create a different kind of game experience. Well, in many games, fucking get that platforming out of this fucking game. <laughs> Fuck you for souls. putting platforming in this game. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm just I... saying some games have platforming in them. No, From I'm not going to say it. Many games, many <laughs> games software. have platforming segments in them, and I want them to die and go away and no one like them. There Fuck is off. an argument <laughs> to be made about whether it's a good idea to invest any amount of development time into something that could be considered like a tertiary or secondary aspect that doesn't or rather, rather than rather than focusing all and then making something that's kind of subpar, because I imagine you, I imagine you can't compare the God of War platforming to a platforming video game. No, you know, like a like a no. full fledged one. No. But it might yeah. be a better idea to invest all of that time into the core of whatever experience it is that you're creating. In this case, an action game. Oh, and, and Chad, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I don't hate platforms. It's just a lot of the times. Platforming. Platforms are yeah. great. I like platforms. But, but like platforming, I often hate because it's just, like Fringy was just saying, it's a secondary or tertiary or almost like filler element that's mm -hmm. added to a game. Yeah, we'll toss and once it in. you get to the platforming segment, you're like, ugh, gotta do the fucking this busy chore that I hate so that I can get Genuinely, back to the actual it, game. It can that's come across as though that the developers are like, series. we invented jump yeah. and we invented gaps. We did it. There we go. <laughs> Metroid Prime was a really good example of first-person platforming done well for what I can remember being the first time. 
Uh, that's because the platforming in Metroid Prime is way more integrated as like mm -hmm. an important, rather than just, oh, this is the platforming section. Platforming yeah. is just a part of that game. It's inherent to the like, gameplay. Uh, yeah, it's like playing yeah. like the old Tomb Raiders, you know? It's like platforming is integral to the, you, you do platforming before you do combat in Tomb Raider 2, for instance. That's right. It's uh, it's just something that is right from the beginning. You know, this is a this is a platforming slash puzzle game that has combat in it. So, yeah, uh, so you're never not doing platforming in Metroid. Platforming in a non-platforming game is filler. Then it's like it can be. Depends on how they. It can be. Yeah, it can be. It it's can not necessarily. Be. Again, yeah. I don't know if I would, if you asked me what is Metroid Prime, I would describe it as many things before a platforming game, but the platforming Probably. isn't filler. Mm -hmm. It's integrated into the core framework of the Metroidvania, you know, adventure um, game that it is. Yeah, well, uh, I, I was thinking more of Super Metroid, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Super yeah, Metroid. I forgot we were talking about Metro uh, Metroid Prime, yeah. Super Metroid is, well, I mean, yeah, Super Metroid's got a shit ton of platforming in it. Yes. Metroid Prime, though, the way it worked so much better is because they had Samus sort of tilt down as you were in the air so you could see where you were going to land. It's really well, yeah, simple, but it made a huge difference. Generally, platforming in first-person shooters is awful. <laughs> generally, yep. it's really All annoying. Times, yeah. Um, and I'd also like to say that, because uh, I feel like he might be heading in this direction, he's kind of hinted at it, but I don't want to necessarily create a very, very um, uh, a conspicuous and... A bold line between puzzle and combat because mm. a lot of combat systems exist that have that, that very much have puzzly elements yep. to them in or terms of the amount of uh in terms of the amount of things that you could do at any given point knowing what you're working towards doing the tools you have at your disposal and well uh, even all, down all sorts to something things. as simple as this weapon works better on the enemy that is this color you know, yes. like if it, if it's if it's red, then you gotta use the blue one. Red. If or if it's blue, you gotta use the red one. You know, like yeah, even that. That is a kind of uh, man. I know saying it's like a puzzle sounds so stupid. Well, you're, you're like, weird. Just the fundamentals. Like, oh, Com yeah, combat is often like an action puzzle in a lot of ways, where you have to do this against that. And that against what this. is the best way to win? You know, God of War definitely do has that level of like, you know, it's a fire enemy, get your ice axe. Oh no, an ice enemy, get yeah. your fire blades. <laughs> like, yeah, simple. But, you know, it also has it get complicated with the spear and then the interactions between each of them and the combos between supercharging any of them, right? And then, you know, you take a fiery enemy and hit them with ice, it'll like freeze burn or whatever the fuck the bonus is called. And it's mm. like, ah, oh, sweet. All these different, I mean, it those are all aspects of the combat's puzzles in a way. That lack of. That lack of a sandbox was the reason I think Final Fantasy 16 has bad combat because it's you just do damage. It doesn't matter what it, you can. You Ooh, guys know the you think Final Fantasy guy. 16 has bad combat. Oh yeah, God. well, I think it's I think oh, it's very sake. simplistic and doesn't really have any depth to it. Oh my God! Wow, spicy. Really? That, you, that you it is. So? It is a problem. Uh, I, a lot I of think games. that it is not nearly as complex as a lot of other you know action games. Um, I enjoyed it, but yeah. You know I what the like, you know what I think the problem is with that. Oh, I, I enjoyed it too. I didn't say it was like terrible and like not fun to play, but I just think that they, it, it was, was really sim no. I said it was really simplistically. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, think was, okay. I think it was poorly designed. Okay, well, I guess I'll clarify my oh, point. And well, the reason I think designed. that is because well, because look, there wasn't any <laughs> need to have elemental damage correspond to the type of enemy that you're fighting. There were no status anomalies at all. There was no integration of a party in any way. Like it was, it was essentially a one man show Final Fantasy game, which I think Final Fantasy game combat tends to be better when you've got an interesting party to combine your skills with in creative ways. And yeah, I don't it's, know. Um, just... That that phenomenon sort of becomes an issue in a lot of games. We see it in many many RPGs that aren't really super well designed where there's no point in doing anything except for damage killing the enemy is the is the ultimate goal and there's no reason why why should i drain their magic why should i drain their stamina why should i slow them why should i do anything else when i could just do as much damage as possible and kill them and doing damage is always the correct answer it's well it's an i suppose what, an interesting question when it comes to that is if you were to talk about combat that is well designed or poorly designed how much of the conversation relates to well, is there one strategy that will work all the time basically in yeah. all cases that i can I, use every time or does the I game so. force me to change i'm inclined to lean in that direction i've talked about it before but yeah. as far as i'm concerned one of the big problems with um the combat in the 
Insomniac Spider-Man games is it's very easy to stay in the air where you are fundamentally yeah. less vulnerable to enemies because there are only think... a few enemies that can attack you in the air when all enemies can attack you on the ground. And pretty much every single one of your attacks keeps you in the air if you're already Yeah, you there. can always hold your whole triangle, yank the enemy up into the air, web them up, sling them into the ground, hold triangle to yank the next enemy up, web them up, throw them into the ground. You can do that, and it's going to suck. It's not going to be fun at all, mm. but you can do that, and then just basically like win every single encounter. And, and if that's, you know, I don't know that it's reflective of good design when one strategy is going to work all the time in all cases yeah the I thing is how much that's due to how many I... options you have as in like when you're presented with all of these different combat things and then only one of them works well versus you only have one and the one works well makes you like focus on maybe the game like the level design or the enemy variety if you only have one form of attacking things versus I think, game. I think enemy in the game you have you have several you have several different types of combat you have several types of what are called uh, are they icons in that game or am i thinking of the 14 one anyways there's summons basically that give you different attacks and abilities including in your standard weapons how fast you move everything like that the thing is you kind of just pick your three favorite ones or maybe it was four i don't know it might have been four but and then you can you can swap to them at any time and it doesn't really matter which one you're using at which time it's just what ones you find the most comfortable to use so it's almost like they're um, different weapons as opposed to things that tools in your tool set that you need to constantly be well, aware the, of and refer to something that i i think that you can theo made a video talking about the the score system the style meter and, and devil may cry yeah. seriously like one of the easiest ways to make your game instantly better is to just put in a style meter, some yeah. kind of scoring system that rewards you for mixing up what yeah, you yeah. do. And then, you know, like stuff like that is a huge incentive to not just rely on the same strategy. Cause you want to see, you know, it's if you're playing the game and then you start it to see drop from like B to C to D, you're like, oh fuck, that's lame. Um, <laughs> like I, I want to get, you know, I want to get like triple S rank. Um, that like providing incentives to play uh differently rather than relying on one strategy over and over and over yeah. again is a really easy way to encourage people to essentially have more the, fun with your game. You know, melee kills get you ammo and uh, mm -hmm. whatever have you, like different Flame things to kills force you into get your armor. Positions. Yeah, it's uh, funny yep. you mentioned the style system, Fringy, because I, I remember having a moment like this with Devil May Cry Five. Yeah. When you're playing specifically as V, like this magical spell guy, yeah, yeah. he like summons enemies. If you just move around and alternate between pressing triangle, square, and, and circle, yeah. and just do that over and over again, and just run everywhere, you won't take damage, you'll eliminate all the enemies, and you'll get like the max skill rating, or at least a really high one, you know? Yeah, so it's D just like, wow, really it's like I broke this game, I can't believe this. Sorry, go ahead. Mm. I was just saying the V combat's really interesting. You're right. Right, yeah. Well, it, I, it, it's a shame. It can be reduced to just that simple button combination. Um, Not only can you clear all the enemies out, but you're also rewarded with a high style uh, grade. Well, what I, what I would argue there, at least for v, the way V styles ratings are done, is that's the moment where you're not even interacting with combat except for the executions as V, that you understand how to properly use them, because essentially you're trying to be a puppeteer there. And yeah. the square is your panther and triangle is your... Oh, wait, maybe it's the other way around. Sorry. Triangle is the panther, square is the raven, and then circle is your big monster dude, right? Arr. Yeah, right. Oh, no, yeah. no, 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 wait. That's your that's your execution. Sorry, I might have switched up the controls. You had the well, right it, stick to bring the monster. It is an important distinction because he is meant to be a character who's sort of frail, non-combative, and yeah. he just like summons things that actually do the fighting for him. So yeah, you, you, the same th strategy wouldn't apply to Dante or uh, the other one. I can't remember. Nero. Hey, I think Nero. The, yeah, Nero's got the most kind of balanced style the easier one to learn whereas dante you've got the most flexibility and um so getting style ratings high with dante is i think the most satisfying but theo made a yeah, great definitely. video on this everybody on oh. yeah on theo's mm -hmm. channel also i want to highlight someone in chat said uh mayo is a fan of classic survival horror you guys are not so shut up you don't know shit about survival horror I just want to say, damn true. Anybody <laughs> who is a fan of me and watches people live cover my videos, please don't be this cringe. Like just, just <laughs> like ask them interesting questions. Don't be like, you don't know nothing about Star War. Mueller does. Yeah. But also, this is the video called "How God of War Ruined Resident Evil Village." 
Also, we love Sorry. survival horror. Yeah, we do. Um, <laughs> I wasn't even going to so bring that up. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Like, Resident Evil 4 is one of like my super formative video games. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I, it's, it's bizarre. You yeah, but that's, that's classic classic survival horror rags. That ain't classic. Oh, it's, the, it's only like, what, 2004? It's only 20 it's years classic. old. Yeah, it's yeah. only 20 <laughs> years ago. It's not the real classics. Damn. Okay, but don't, don't say classic rock if it ain't fucking Beethoven, okay? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> ...that hazard-based puzzles and coordination-based puzzles were also removed. Climbing... Yeah, that's substitute not the case. Coordination, substitute it's not the case, and it's not... We already talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. ...was changed to be automatic, oh, okay. so there's no more combat or... Oh boy, well, wait, I love those parts. You gotta... Those are automatic! <laughs> oh. All you do is fucking spam square! Yeah. Well, neither of them were automatic, technically. They aren't. You gotta move. I just... It, the game won't do it for you. you know? I don't like, like, this... This... The smell here. Uh, like, I don't... I don't... <laughs> it's... The thing... Uh, as someone who's played through it so many times, like, I don't fucking like it when I'm climbing up these mountains and they go, Oh, there's, here comes bad guys. Like, great. Square, 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 yeah. square, square. <laughs> cool, I can move again. Yeah. How does that make it better? Now, if someone you know, said, like, yeah, but it's more boring to just travel, I was like, is it? I don't know. This feels like busy work I don't work know, to man. Me. Yeah, Hazard. I've played plenty of games where I just walk around and look at things, and it's been like, oh, oh, wow, look at that. Interesting. Wow, well, I guess what what's yeah. over there? The, that the impression I get with stuff like this is that ultimately what's happening in both games is the same, but one of them said, all right, throw enemies at them while they're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> is that necessarily a good thing? I don't know. If you can climb and enemies also can climb and you can take damage while climbing, I'm glad there's at least something you can do to like get rid of them. But it is annoying just like mashing square until they go away and then you just keep climbing. Mm -hmm. It's a bit or jumping just at the well, right time. I guess, I guess what's interesting is what's the difference between that and uh, like, I don't know, when you're climbing in Uncharted and then something goes wrong and a cinematic plays of Nate like falling down for ages. One of them is well, yeah. you gotta press the square button at least. Mm, <laughs> but at the same right. time, they're both delays in climbing, aren't they? Well, in many <laughs> cases, the words action based puzzle can just be substituted for combat. They really can. Your health bar refills to 100% when you die in a new area, your magic recharges automatically, and there's no XP. By the way, magic recharging automatically is a shit ton of games to where that's basically yeah. the standard. Well, yeah. magic regeneration yeah. rates is in mana. That's that's a super standard thing. Recharging mana based on collectibles or over time is it's just down to how the game was designed. Yep. One hundred percent. Yeah, you have and to take mechanic. it. In, you have to take it within the totality of the design. You know how how does uh how does it recharging support whatever systems. Or contradict whatever systems are present in this game compared to the old ones. Yeah, well, sometimes you want to maintain a gameplay flow, and you know you don't want it to be like Zelda, where you're running around for a fucking mana pot. You know, just like oh, which yeah. one of these bushes <laughs> has a thing, just so I can do this spell for Christ's sake. You know, XP gain difference between mashing like an idiot and performing a long flashy combo and having good defense. There's nothing demanded of you in God of War Whoa. apart from surviving singular combat rooms and the patience. Wait, nothing that's what you do in the other God of Wars. So I that's something because, to serve. Well, because you have to fight people while climbing walls. Apparently, the original God of Wars had way more than the new what? ones do. Yeah, but I mean, uh, if it's about just surviving a, a combat and get, go ahead, that's all you do in God of War, basically. You go into the arena, beat all the guys up, hope you yeah, don't take too much damage. Metal. Also, I would go you're fear the metal. It's the part oh, that everyone yeah. likes. You're getting about the underworld. Yeah. Is it a major complaint though that you don't get more XP for creative combat? Uh, no, I think I think the complaint is that broadly that it, it, that now it's just combat rather than combat plus puzzles plus uh, platforming, but there's still puzzles. There still is game. puzzles. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, but the, pu the puzzles we puzzles referenced the ones well. that you can actually skip in God of War 2018, but oh, if, can you? Well, you know, stuff like the chests, anyway. Um, you know, oh, the, yeah, the ones yeah. in, like, Svartalfheim you can't skip in, in Ragnarok. I'm trying to... I haven't played 2018 in a bit of time now. Know. Um, well, there's plenty of time in 2018 where you're having to push a cart to a place that you can then jump on it and then get to the other side of an area. Okay. And why? what is that if not platforming? You just don't have a jump button. The thing is, it depends on, you know, you can describe mm -hmm. any game very reductively. Um, mm -hmm. 
you could just say, well, all first person shooters, you're just centering the screen on the thing you want to kill. Yeah. Um, you can do that, but like then you lose basically all of the elements that you just, that's not a very meaningful observation to make. Yeah, I, I could hand him, I could say, here, Apex Legends, all you have to do is be the last squad alive. See, it's simple, no, right? You, and you'll get your ass like, kicked. All you do in, in the old God of War is you press the square button. Like, you could do that, <laughs> but that's not yeah. fair. That's just not fair to uh to those games. Um, there was that combined with well, yeah, because the broad point just seems to be that uh they made it easier. Um, everything is well, is way well, easier it, on the easiest maybe, difficulty than the easiest difficulty on the previous games. I, it I seems think like a really I odd way to compare more, games is which which easy think, mode is easiest. I think he's gone further than that. It's more so that they've removed the things that couldn't be affected by a difficulty slider. But they could. Uh, they could, but they weren't. Yeah, so that that's a whole but conversation it, 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 in and of itself, right? <laughs> the the idea that if God of War had puzzles in it in twenty eighteen that were very difficult and they wouldn't have changed for lower difficulties isn't even true. But it doesn't have those puzzles anyway. You know what I mean? Like the box puzzle where it's going to get destroyed if you don't, you know, avoid the archers in God of War 1. Not a puzzle I think is particularly good, by the way. But the, if it were mm -hmm. present in 2018, they may have made it easier on easy. And that wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> that would be fine. Wait. Well, even that sequence is easier if you don't die as quickly because you don't have to worry as much about getting hit by the arrows yourself. Like I said, I, I don't have any issue with um, puzzles being made easier along with combat because as Rags was pointing out, I think a couple of us, in a sense, combat is a puzzle. And so yep. when you lower combat difficulty, you're lowering the chances for you to fail the puzzle being this time like, oh, look, he's doing a big yellow charge-up move. You, you can't stand right in front of him. Got to move back, but then once he does that, he's got an opening on his back. Got to go behind. You got to make sure you charge your big blue laser. Just stuff, you know, all the basic understanding of systems and then taking advantage of your time slots to do the things. Well, it's the soft implication that the puzzles in the game are less worthy of being affected by difficulty than the combat is. But the puzzles are a part of the game, right, devs? You made it a part of the game. You built all this. You made assets. You programmed it and coded it. It's part of the game. Why are you ignoring this? And when I change the difficulty, how come these parts aren't affected? What is that telling me? Hmm. Well, and is it why just are we filler? Is or what? Why are we okay with making the combat a breeze, but we're not okay with them not having puzzles that are always hard? Do you understand what I'm saying? He's saying like, yeah, you have Resident Evil's combat gets way easier, but at least they still had the puzzles. And it's like, are we saying that it would be better on easy if the combat weren't easier as well? Like, what is the point of difficulty, if if not that? I don't get, like, why... Of... Using easy mode as a benchmark is strange, anyways. Well, he's trying to use it, it to is. explain a philosophy, which is that they've lost the interest in making things harder, harder. in the in-between portions of, like, the main pull of the game. Yeah, when instead it seems like they just focused all their time and attention on not just the story and the characters and everything, but also in the combat itself. I'd much rather play a game that was super focused on delivering a combat experience instead of one that had mm. subpar segments in between them where I could get annoyed at the platforming they threw in. I'm going to tie this into Resident Evil Village, by the way. I just wanted to remind everybody. The... Oh, man, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be the same thing that like Resident Evil used to have. I mean, it's kind of gone over it, right? It's more prevalent with Resident Evil because there used to be a lot more item management and challenge in relation to backtracking, mm. this, that, and the other. It'll, it'll be the yeah. broad observation that modern game design philosophy has ruined everything. I presume that's the... Yeah, but it's kind of like the there's loads of holes in. in this already in terms of shoulds. Mm-hmm mashing like an idiot and performing a long flashy combo and having good defense. There's nothing demanded of you in God of War apart from surviving singular combat rooms and the patience needed to deal with Atreus screaming at you every seven seconds. Whatever. With nothing left in the game. I mean, this is the thing. There the way, are you, progress you, blocking puzzles, though. Like, that's the thing. It's, but why couldn't someone sell puzzles? God of War 1 as an awesome action game that is plagued with nonsense, boring-ass puzzles that take you nowhere and make you think for about one second, mostly delaying you? Yeah, the, the whole point of God of War is killing things, and this isn't killing things, so that's pretty lame. Yeah, why the fuck am I, I the mean, God of War, trying to play chess with a fucking I mean, little yeah. frog or something? Why am I like, running <laughs> around on this this little beam that's spinning? This yeah. ain't this ain't what I was promised. 
Yeah, and that it's it's Even someone could just say it's incongruent with the fucking design of the game. The philosophy is silly. They're just trying to delay us. Where you I mean, go I know... with the canoe and when is also sort of up to you in this one, and that was never a thing in the original games. Also, I don't I mean, remember. Go ahead. We talked about Resident Evil Four, you know, a bit, and like the puzzles in that are barely puzzles. They like the the game. I don't I don't think the game would be worse if they just just didn't have them. They're so simplistic. They're Come so yeah. easy. Blocks. Yeah, it's like and a small amount of flavor. You just, You're just like, oh, look, I'm doing this. Yeah, thing. it's just a yeah, it's basically just a little bit of flavor, a very tiny mom, you know, momentary pause before you get back to sort of playing the game, and then your next playthrough. I mean, there are puzzles that I just know muscle memory, whether it's. You know, Batoris Mendez's door, whether it's the seven sacrifices in the castle. It's just like, I, I know all these puzzles. I just, I, they're not even a puzzle. I just boop, boop, up. Yep, it's done. One, two, three is a combination, and then boom, the door opens. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like, why even bother at that point? If there's like three spaces and two of them are occupied by skulls and there's one empty one and then there's a skull back there. Oh, yeah. If I just pick that up and put the skull there, <laughs> well, the door will open. Like, why even bother? Like, that's it's what I mean. So the, 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 the wall climbing stuff is like in this game, you just wall climb. But in this game, you wall climb and then enemies come at you and you go, oh, you got to kill them. And you go, oh, and you're just like, why are you? It's boring. Like, why is this? It's yeah. so simple. There's no combat to it beyond. You can press triangle, yeah. I think, if you want to. Square is the quick, broad sweep, and then triangle's like a heavy. You can just do either. You can also grab them. You can, you can grab oh, them. Oh, yeah, you there. Can you can press, you can press any one of those them. buttons, and it'll just do the kill and then move on. Yeah. Which is precisely what he seems but to have issue with yeah. in terms of button mashing gameplay combat at its lowest difficulties, which I still don't understand why that's okay when you switch difficulties, but puzzles being either reduced or gone isn't okay game to challenge players outside of combat, the game is now playable for any old Joe off the street. He can pick easy no, and... No, no way. No, that... this, can't, this wouldn't be somebody's first video game. I don't... Maybe maybe someone's this first would video be a... game in their life. Definitely not on average. Well, yeah, I don't think my dad, dad could be God of War 2018 <laughs> also, on the easiest difficulty. He'd be very confused by it. That, that yes. statement seems really elitist. Kind of. Yeah, I think I, I, think I agree. The idea of if so, someone can just pick up this game, set it to the easiest difficulty, which is literally called like story mode, and then they can beat it. It's like, yeah, that's why it's called this the story mode. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry that there aren't unnecessarily bizarrely difficult or out of place puzzles for them to have to solve oh, when yeah. they just want to experience the yeah, story cause and the, characters. Because I don't think God of War was designed to be this super hard game that's supposed to be like an incredible, crazy challenge for everybody because there's a, a big thing of storytelling happening well he's already highlighted you play, on. play god of war on easy the original it's pretty fucking easy yeah it's like yeah but there's puzzles yeah. that get in your way yeah, like, puzzles, <laughs> okay right, they get in your way on hard I is it, is it, it's, like it's that's not a good thing this is like uh yeah it's it, it's two pronged one is there something wrong with a game being designed such that it's easier to get into is that necessarily a bad thing i was like well it's, you know depends um, and also, this is not somebody's first video game compared to something like Mario. Well, like, would you make the same Files claim or... for Mario that the new ones offer you an invincibility thing when you die enough times? Does that ruin Mario's design? Uh, maybe. maybe. Well, maybe he would, but but then but the, I guess he'd say that that's way less intrusive. What you mean? And it's optional. Well, but there, so is this. It's I was going to say, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> if somebody wants to play these games and just experience the story and they and they just set it to easy like man go for it i'm glad I, you experienced the story my, and my characters that's why I do, I do that the broader observation is that the experience for everybody gets dragged down because it's designed at a, a fundamental level to be more accessible that would be that i assume that's his main point Maybe he'd have to show that, like he'd have to give mechanical examples because well, I think you would say I just did. I've shown you that this game has now stripped it to where only com combat is the only obstacle and combat is scalable. Whereas in the other games, there were obstacles that weren't scalable no matter what, like the platforming or the uh, inventory management or something like that. Well, obvious. Though that just creates a separate issue, which is inconsistency. If you have really hard platforming, then on easy mode, it's super out of place. If you have very easy platforming, then on hard difficulty, it's also super out of place. Well, and you weird. would say that it's the requisite level of difficulty, and that's good, and the new God of War game is, uh, has fucked it up. Do well, we if, know if that he doesn't he's... say that by the end, then he's... <laughs> I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty 
awful if he doesn't actually say that, if that's what he means, because we're having to infer all of this. Does he know, though, that the scaling of the easy mode is the reason the platforming was taking out? Because that, that seems like a fairly large assumption. Well, oh, it might well, just be fucking boring and most people don't want it. And maybe awful, the developers yeah. just don't consider that a vision that they have for God of War. Maybe him jumping around on platforms and climbing shit, they're just like, you know, let's just not, we don't have to have that. Well, I mean, something we that they just had focus on other and they things. reduced dramatically was QTEs. People didn't like them in the original games. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so there's yeah, a lot less of them now, thing. like hardly any. Shocking. I wonder I if he would make a. I wonder if he'd make the argument of you know being able to complete the QTEs are a, is the baseline prerequisite level of experience you need to have to beat the game. Well, which the is thing is, is um, there is fundamental baseline prerequisites outside of combat. I know it sounds silly, but like actually getting from one place to the other, regardless of how linear the game is, requires somebody to do something. They have to actually push the joystick, you know, the joystick in a certain direction to get there. It doesn't right. play itself, even well, down to those... the most basic things of navigating the world or moving the camera. I can see a lot of people getting overwhelmed with the wealth of options you have as far as places to go in the newer God of War games, because the, the other ones are very linear. It's well, yeah, that's level, interesting the next level. mentioned, is that there are just big open, like, hub areas yeah, like, it's uh, like, okay, Midheim, where do I go Hub now? Area, Lots of... Or Vanaheim mid, uh, you know, hub area, or the Svartalheim uh, hub area with optional objectives that you can do that are, that are going to influence the experience you have because of, you know, getting more or less experience. And then, of course, just making choices about what kind of um, upgrades that you're going to get as well. Oh, That's yeah. not something... The game's not going to tell you system. which ones you're supposed to get because the game can't tell you which ones you would prefer. That's still a decision that you have to make, which potentially creates new challenges. Well, I can give you a, a, an example would be... It sort of applies to God of War, but I'll use an example from a game I've played. It was a Gears 5 has two or three segments where the game is no longer linear and it opens up, you have a little vehicle and you have this area you can explore and you could go around and do a bunch of side objectives, grab some upgrades, do a little extra story character stuff. And if that was a, and, and I thought it was pretty neat. I liked it. it. It didn't seem super intrusive. I could skip it if I wanted to. Um, it didn't overstay its welcome. So if it showed up in gear six, I'd be like, yeah, good. But if those segments were like boring and dull and super easy and pointless and just a waste of time, then I'd say, you know what, just don't put them in. Maybe you don't have to put them in Gears 6 or you have to work you know, better at making it actually good. The way that we engage with something in one game is probably going to affect our expectations for it in the next game. I got distracted by someone saying Maul is being defensive. He acts in aggression rather than result. Dominance. <laughs> <laughs> Dominance. Dominance. Yeah, it's, it's, the point is, Muller, is that this is your this you are you're no, too you, you can't stop there. They compliment game. me. You you're, don't you're, stop me there. You <laughs> got a war game. That's what's happened. This is your you 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 need to defend their honor, and it's making you irrational and angry. He says Rags Man. is using 4D chess to converse to push back on Mahler's style, oh but this God. could all be in my head. <laughs> I am using 4D chess to push back Whenever on Mahler's style, place, because Mahler has a pathetic soy jack defensive style. Oh, mm -hmm. no. This is, uh, this is, yeah, the, the virgin Mahler versus the Chad rags. But I am the Chad 4D aggression. 4D aggression, dog. Well, it's, just, it's just so funny, because I'm like, which, what, what are our teams? What, what, what do we have? It's Mahler versus everyone. Okay. You're on the defensive. You're outnumbered. Oh, damn. Okay. Sorry, available for any old Joe off the street. He can pick easy and stroll through the entire game to admire you know what, all the CJ, beautiful you're art. Right. Design. There, is, there is a level of uh, sort of like <laughs> right. kind of uh, kind of seeping from that particular statement, isn't there? Yeah, you can I get agree. any old Joe off the street, and he can play it. Any old Joe, not like us hardcore yeah. gamers. Am I right? <laughs> I <laughs> like coming uh... here, gonna play my video games. Those pieces of a... shit. Why I like the idea that a lot of these games have an easy mode that is clearly labeled as easy mode that allows people who aren't good at games but want to experience them to some degree the ability to be a part of, you know, this experience. Yeah. It's labeled sure. as what it is. 
No one beats story mode and goes, I am such a cool fucking gamer. They go, oh, I really, you know, that, that was fun. I, I liked these characters and I liked the story because I specifically chose to play on story mode. And, you know, I, I really enjoyed the game and I feel like I'm better at it now than I was when I started. Maybe I could, you know, play it at a different, harder difficulty and maybe that could get them, well, you know, kind of ease them into the door of playing games at higher difficulties. Because that's I where think, we all start. We all started I, somewhere. I would imagine that everybody here, and I would imagine this guy would agree that it's lame and annoying when you see those articles that say, like, FromSoft games should have an easy mode, or that Correct. games should must have an easy mode. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that the idea that it describes that a developer kind of has, like, an obligation to provide um, multiple... Uh, ways that the player can experience it rather than saying, well, no, a developer can make a decision of, no, that there, there is a level, this is the game that we want to make. We don't want to invest the time into creating difficulty uh, sliders. We yeah. want this to be a certain experience for there to be a certain meta around the game. Everybody would agree, yeah, that's chill. But surely there would also be the same way around if a developer says, well, what we want to do is we want to create a game where there is scalable difficulty so that if you want to go into it for this crazy combat experience or if you want to go into it for the story, those options are available. But that would similarly well, be a case. Okay. okay. It, wouldn't, I mean, it wouldn't flip it. I mean, they wouldn't. If there was a game that came out that was designed specifically by the develop, developers to be super easy, I wouldn't. I, I don't expect games journalists to be you know, in an uproar saying, this needs to have a hard core hard mode. mode. <laughs> this game must yeah, no, no, have, no, no, have a, I, a difficult mode course. for the real gamers. It's like and the also, mandating let's... of a difficulty adjustment, right? It's just like, if they yeah, want yeah. to fashion a game that is just one difficulty and that's it, they should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, would, I would appeal to artistic freedom and creative license that, like, you, it's, it's an artistic vision to have your game be difficult. And people would be like, well, that's absurd. It's like, no, it's not. I almost, difficulty I'm pretty sure that was challenge our and interactivity. On the EFAP well, yeah, about this, we, we, survival... there's a Mark Brown video we covered about. Dark Souls difficulty, and I'm pretty sure our conclusion was don't force them to make every difficulty you want. However, I'm fine with the devs choosing whatever difficulties they want in terms of design. Fundamentally, yeah. if you are designing a game with the knowledge that you're going to have multiple difficulties, that can be built up with it. But if you take a game that mm -hmm. is complete and then you go, I'm going to mod it so that all the enemies are half health, you might have very unintended uh, consequences in terms of damaging the yeah, game. Yeah, you might screw it up. Yeah. You might have mm -hmm. ruined it. Might have the they, they were trying to create. Well, like, you know, Soma's they came out, easy mode of removing all zombies, uh, zombies, monsters. I uh, I remember thinking, like, man, that really mom. hurts. <laughs> uh, that hurts yeah, a lot bombs. of what that game is about, removing yeah. them. It's like, yeah, yeah but, yeah, but you you, have don't, a game don't you want people to be able to complete easy. it? And it's like, of, of course, there are ways to do it that aren't that. That's not the, I don't think that's the way. I don't I don't easy mode like can ruin, like, uh, it can have narrative impacts. If you're creating an experience that's supposed to be about the struggle of mankind in a post-apocalyptic wasteland and how people have to scrounge together to make it through and life is tough and uncaring, but it becomes a power fantasy because of how easy the game is, then it's like, mm. well, you're kind of shooting yourself in your foot narratively, aren't you? And also, the, the whole game journalist, this game has to have this difficulty, they would have had an easy win that was totally agreeable if they just said, you know what, games in general, there should be easy games. There, there should be easy things in games so that people can get into the hobby without feeling discouraged and overwhelmed because we were all there at one point where our, with, with our first game and we sucked balls and we were terrible, but we, you know, we got encouragement, we played it with friends, we were able to get some positive feedback, and then look at us now. I yeah. think his argument would actually work better if he was trying to make that this should only have one difficulty argument. But it, it, like the focus on easy modes is, it, it seems like every point he's making is very weak because it's like, why? Why do you care? It's well, he mode. showed he showed the menu <laughs> well, of say the difficulty select of it. This is just for doing the story, and then he's bitching about it's too easy. It's for people who who just want to get the story. He's like, yeah, that that's why that mode specifically is there. It just He's seems like trying to hide what it is. What was that, CJ? Go ahead, CJ. Uh, just saying it seems like unnecessary gatekeeping. Like, why is why is this a bad thing? Well, yeah, this is where it's this is where it's fine. There's definitely has that, its but place 100%. I think the overall picture he's painting is the that interest, which I don't even buy, by the way. Like I said, I'd love to have a source from the original God of War slash Resident Evil developers at the time. Like, my goodness, we are going to make the combat easier on easy. But we will not be changing those puzzles because we want people to be able to have to work somewhat through the game. I don't believe mm. that they actually had that thought as we've been over. 
But he no, believes now with modern really. philosophies, with the interest of getting everyone through the game on easy, that means you have to remove aspects that simply can't be in the game because uh, they would be hard on easy. But that's not true. You can make puzzles easy on easy. They just don't have those same puzzles you were looking for. When you don't have enemy encounters on the walls you're climbing in 2018, it's not because we have to remove this, otherwise people on easy will never be able to do it. It's like, they could just remove them on easy. So they're obviously not yeah. in for other reasons. Mm. It's not for saving the people on easy mode. That is an insane conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, get me a citation of the original developers saying we will never change puzzle difficulty on difficulty options because that would make it too easy for easy players. No way. I don't buy it. I think they just didn't change the puzzle difficulty. Yeah, yeah I, I think, yeah. Almost certainly, yeah. Your storytelling. And I know this because, like I've pointed out in my story. other two videos on God of War, easy mode is literally called Give Me a Story. Mm -hmm. So they... Okay, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, there, are games that, there are games that, uh, that have Give Me a Story that are what you would typically describe as ultra gamey games. We have proved this well. point. Well, well we this have is games... part of the, the narrative. This is part of the story, which is that uh, look, they're so interested in telling their story that they don't, they don't they ain't that interested in making a video game. Well, there Maybe. are games with story mode and easy mode. Sometimes it's specifically very much designated to be the very, well, very, wow. very easy one. Sometimes not. I just don't understand the problem. No, that it, this is telling, all right? This is telling. The <laughs> no, fact that they would have give me a story, it's telling of their priorities. Oh, no. Even though they, even though they have one that says yeah, give it's... me God of War, which isn't telling of their priorities. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> Especially because even in the names of what the difficulty is called, the player is like... This is, this is basically the player saying, choose your dialogue. Well, I suppose what I find funny, I, I knew this was the case as well. Um, Deus Ex, the new Deus Ex games, because obviously the old one just has, you know, like easy, medium, hard. But the new ones have give me a story as one of the, uh, like, difficulty settings. But then they also have, you know, give me Deus Ex. It's like, dude, those are gamey games, all right? So mm. I don't even know why you would bring this up as a point. So... That because it says, tell me a story or give me a story. It means that they're not interested in making a game that's, like, mechanically robust. I just don't get, like, if you're booting it up next to, let's say, Dean Takahashi, and he's like, ooh, give me a story, sweet. And then you're like, oh, fucking, give me a story. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't fucking matter, whatever. He, he's going to play through it, I'll and you're going to play through it on whatever you want. Well, the difference I'll will be that Dean Takahashi, will, <laughs> Dean Takahashi will play the game on super easy, and then he'll write a review for it, because he's a fucking game journalist. <laughs> yeah, but that's scumming. that's a whole game journalism <laughs> so, industry problem. That's not, that's go away from it. Is, yeah. It would, it would be funny if they had a mode that just said, give me game journalism. <laughs> <laughs> I need to write a review game. before the embargo. You know, how, yeah. uh, you know how, like, for the difficulties, it's like in, in Doom where they have a different expression or, like, uh... Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Where yeah, his face is all busted up. Yeah. Yeah, they need oh, one yeah, for yeah, the yeah. game journalism. It's just giving him a pat on the head. Just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah dude, I was just blue. thinking he's, that. I, I think on the easiest one, yeah. it puts your character in, a like, a baby outfit. It does. And it's called called something like don't hurt me or don't something hurt me, daddy. Don't exactly. hurt me, daddy. Well, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't one argue give me the story is arguably like a tongue-in-cheek sort of the devs being like yeah you'll be fine don't worry about it you could have the story um, you could yeah. but i would probably lean more towards it is just like ah, oh, yeah you're only here for the story you're not interested in the video game part of this video game well, they well, specifically yeah. have it contrasted with the other three names. Do you want a story, a balanced experience, a challenge, or God of War? Well, and let's not forget, if they're not, it might not be they're not interested. It might be they are that shit at video games, which, by the way, some people mentioned it already. Watch Gary play The Witcher. If he was to yeah. play God of War, <laughs> you do not want him on anything other than give me a story. He's going to have trouble. Yes, oh, absolutely. I mean, I kind of That's okay. To. I'm not saying it's not it's okay. Fine. It's okay. <laughs> like... There's people out I there who are shit at video games. That's fine. Well, yeah. So I, here's the thing, though. Isn't it? Do you think? Do you think that having put like BJ in the uh, in the just like looking like a clown or something? Is I think it's funny. Fun of people. Yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five. Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. That's yeah, just the chicken hat. Well, yeah, I've heard of it. No, I didn't. I, 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 I think it's a great meme having like the easy difficulty be putting him like with a pacifier and like a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Deliberately like, patronizing. Bang. 
I, w- I yeah, kind of wish they would bring it that back. It discourages you from jumping right to that one. Well, let's like, not forget. Okay, maybe try the um, standard difficulty. Was it Quake? I can't remember what game it was that if you quit out, it says, like, are you actually a, like going to be a coward? Are you running away? Like, that sort of thing. You're like, I, I, I want to go to quake. sleep, but it's like, coward. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. Oh, I remember it was, um, it was something that was fun in Crash Bandicoot was uh, whenever you got a game over, Cortex would be like, oh, giving up, huh? Like, yeah. And then wait, yeah. it's just be like, oh, yeah, is that? You were you done? You gotta run away. You gotta cry, little goblin junior. It's funny. It is great and funny and fine with me. Yeah, I, I do wish we had more of that in games. Oh, making here, fun of you. James, send it to me. There it is. Yeah, yeah that's good. I want, no, I like can that. I play that? <laughs> that's funny. Don't hurt me, Daddy. Damn it. Maybe that's the original Wolfenstein. I don't know. Maybe my memory's fucked. Yeah, Wolfenstein. Meme. I think. Yeah, that the was new it. order did that as well. Good memes. Right. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. it. They're making they designed the their game. game. Yeah, that game looks out. not good based on that. Trailer. I know. <laughs> it looks, looks like very jank. lame Wolfenstein. Looks it's jank. not like I, I... Like, I totally understand the frustration, too. I mean, like, I'm a bit... I have a deep appreciation of the Souls games. I fucking suck at those <laughs> games. But, like, like, the only reason I know... Dark Souls from start to finish is because like I watch my friends play it who are really good at it. They'll play like randomizers and shit. And uh, but I I still wouldn't make an argument for like give me an easy mode because well, I understand what it's trying to do. It's not like to get into I get that. It. you're fashioning an intimidating experience and atmosphere. I understand that you're not a lot of Dark but Souls players. Would they tell were... you there is a, an easy mode built in. It's the there are mechanics you can take advantage of or farming or leveling that that all changes how difficult the game is. You know what I mean? They would tell you yeah, there, there are... to avoid oh. these things if you want to put, like, you know, soul level one is like the hard or one of the hardest things you can do. While a lot of people will be like, I just want to fucking play the game, dude. And it's like, yeah, but. Dude. I like that as, as a conversation, you know, the yeah. idea of soft difficulty, because again, that yeah. Crash Bandicoot video I made, um, the, the crates, you know, going for getting all of the crates is essentially, well, I mean, you can do that if you want, but this will be harder. It's like a way of introducing soft difficulty or a difficulty setting without you thinking of it that way. It's just optional challenges, options that you can pursue to make your experience harder or easier, which uh, can be interesting in terms of, you know, game design sort of philosophy and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh, something to discuss. There's, I mean, the infamous example that's in my head right now is Apex Legend is actually a game, it's the only one I know of, where you get a pretty substantial advantage by playing on a controller because of that game's extremely generous aim assist and recoil oh, compensation. Okay. Oh yeah, like ev- all the pros and everything use a uh, controller. Oh man, I've only ever played it on a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, it, it's it's legitimately like crazy how strong the controller is. I've I've never seen it like that in any other game, but that's why it comes to my mind as an example. So. Um... Actually, I think yeah, I played it on PS4. Never mind, that was a lie. I don't remember it being that forgiving, though, if, unless they've changed it. It's 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 very very strong. Oh, it is. I mean, the, those things that you can do in the Souls games. I mean, I appreciate that, but it probably still wouldn't help me. I suck that bad. Like, I mean, my <laughs> friend was telling me, like, you know, if you pick this character and you have this build, you can probably make it a lot easier on yourself. But for me, I suck so bad the difference is so marginal. It's just like Elden it doesn't Ring even matter. Might be one like, you I'm could just get through. Well, Elden Ring had that. Like, I don't know how it is now, but the fucking tier clone the mimic tier, mimic tier, mimic. yeah. It's that was like that was like summoning another player to just do the game for you. <laughs> Mimic tier is pretty late <laughs> in the game, but you you can get you can get carried by summons in in Elden Ring pretty hard. Well, well yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's the fair, one thing that saved a lot of Souls that's, games. That let me play through Elden Ring and enjoy it was the ability to like summon people to help you with the boss. Oh, yeah. and well, and, and no, you know, yeah. no offense implied oh, yeah, in any way, shape, or form. But like me and Mattel when playing a Souls or Souls like game for the first time, it's like summons are off limits. You're not allowed. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's a completely no, different game it, at that point. Which is fine. It makes it way easier, but like I need that personally. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at, though. Like the aversion to having an easy mode for Dark Souls because it would like ruin it or whatever. It's like a lot of. It's funny how a lot of Dark Souls experts would tell you is like we've already got it. It's in there. You can find it if you really want it. Mm-hmm. Right. They called give me a story. So they designed their game in a way to ask nothing of the player, to present no consequences to anything, so that anyone can play it. And. Also, you Why can have that? a game that has very deep narrative consequences. Which sure. Yeah, that's also true. It doesn't matter. You, 
Oh, okay. Doesn't well, count. Fair enough. The effect of that <laughs> is yeah, that nice on higher rags. difficulties, there's no other challenging aspect of the game apart from the combat. There's nothing apart from the combat. That's like that's the game. Most of the time, yeah. yeah, that's what you want. yeah. Mm. That is puzzles. Like, I mean, there's that's... nothing challenging about it except for the combat. What a statement. Which is a... that's like a that's like a meme <laughs> thing that people say is a joke. It's like yeah, apart from the combat, it's pretty. Yeah, you know, apart from the combat, it's pretty easy. <laughs> But that's like Halo 2 true. on Legendary Lasso, all, you know, Legendary All Skulls on. That's pretty, yeah. uh, you know, as long as you're not talking about the combat. Cool, do World of War of Veteran, I mean, the only difficult thing is the combat. That's <laughs> just combat. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Apart from the shooting, Call of Duty's a breeze. Yeah, yeah I'm really telling you, it's definitely a game where the only challenge is combat in Sifu, really, because it's, it's just a straight up well, beat em up from beginning to end. But God of War is not that. There's tons of puzzles and stuff and exploration. You have Before, to find things to progress. Correct me if I'm wrong, but what he showed us of what is missing was the fucking Underworld segment, which everyone hates, and then platforming in a game that was not built for platforming. Uh-huh. What? Mm. Okay, we lose yeah. those. What else do we have, just so I know? And he's like, oh, you know, on the walls when you're climbing, there's random enemies that you get rid of by spamming square. It's like, I don't see how this makes the game All significantly right. better. I don't understand. Please. What else is there? It's like, oh, well, there's puzzles. Like, there's still puzzles in God of War 2018 that you can more than take advantage of. Secondly, isn't it Muspelheim? You get, like, uh, challenges, like, you've got to knock all the enemies off the arena as opposed to kill yeah, them. Yeah, How is that's that? Like the whole, yeah, uh, that's the whole optional challenge area. Which people yeah. were quite happy with, if I remember. I know I was, but, like, I can't remember how yeah, people yeah. felt yeah, about it in fun stuff. And then you have, you um, is it, it Niflheim? The, the part where you, know, you have to do the echoes and stuff? Remember what we're talking about? In mm. in God of War twenty eighteen, it's the um you have to it's like a challenge series of rooms you have to get unlocks and stuff and you get better armors, more resistances. Do you know what I'm talking about? Someone in chat can help me out. Oh yeah, Niflheim. And it was the air toxic? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh Niflheim. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like an That's arcade where you sort of thing. Start from to get the the armor and yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, I got you. Muspelheim and Niflheim essentially combined to be Valhalla in way who designed differently, yeah, and, but and it's like, hey, here's the someone, challenge. <laughs> if he said to us like, yeah, combat, I'd be like, well, yeah, it's the game. <laughs> like, what? Of course. <laughs> what do you mean? Why are you saying it like that? Like they were all the challenges. Yeah. yeah, this this art gallery would be a just a room without all these paintings everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you're, you're describing something that's the, the core fundamental real part of the experience a lot of the times. Like, yeah, it's almost tautological. Mm -hmm. Age with or think about. They watered down the entire experience for the general audience and then offered up a bullshit extreme difficulty to satisfy the whole. Ah. It's not bullshit. Oh, oh he couldn't oh. beat extreme difficulty. <laughs> the truth. There it is, friends. The ugly truth. Oh, okay. no, that's there funny. it is. So Don't we... put that in the video. So this this feels like when the actual point comes out. Oh. You think the hardest difficulty in God of War 2018 is bullshit. Okay. All right. And you're blaming people true, who though. play on easy for it. What? <laughs> well, so the, Man. I mean, the funny thing about it is yeah, like, you know, here. we talked about it a little bit earlier, but we can go through all of the nuances of all the levels and layers of combat in God of War that make you much more effective, depending on how you spend mm. all of your resources. It's all there. And it gets harder and also, harder the higher the difficulty. Is that works? Give me the God of War 2 primarily is based around you understanding the mechanics that are specifically in that mode. And then once you understand them, it becomes significantly easier. That should be the kind of thing he respects about a difficulty mode. Well, there so, are games that... You go ahead. I'm just going to say that he said it was bullshit, so we're going to find out why soon enough, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I guess. But, like, yeah, this is pretty bad. There are games that uh, I've got... So, 1,080 a, a hours in Vermintide 2, and I only play on Cataclysm, the hardest difficulty that they oh, had to add post-launch. That's the only difficulty to play at. I play Just because I of really you, because you were so good at the game. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm so fucking good at this game, the only way I could feel like I'm being challenged is playing a Cataclysm. And I know that if <laughs> someone who wasn't as good played that mode, they'd say, this is bullshit. And it's like, well, a lot of it's just... You have to practice a lot. You got to practice. Well, you need to know the games. game. You probably need a good team. Well, that have to know the mechanics. How, to how to use your tools. Your how abilities. to use your tools. How to use your weapons. How to. Vermintide you know... can fuck you up. Oh, absolutely. Can fuck it's, you up. It's one of those. It yeah, it's like many games. Like God of War probably is. I couldn't play it on the the hardest mode until I practiced. Until I learned the mechanics and I learned yeah. the things and what all the buttons do and everything like that. It's like don't be upset. That you couldn't beat this one game at its highest difficulty and instead call it bullshit. I would. Because I have a feeling that 
highlight the yeah. Valkyries as examples oh, yeah. of how because yep. like you would have they all border on like rhythm game stuff right like I always compare mm -hmm. it to Guitar Hero. Um, my favorite probably in both games was Ragnarok with the uh, the the king of the um, what are they called like the champion dudes the zombie champions. Yeah, Berserkers. I know what you want to mean. Berserk, that's it. Um, Berserk, that's right. I think the last one I did on that, I had quite a few tries and like the absolute feeling of fucking relief and achievement of beating yeah. him at the end because you, you know, you learn everything. You learn where his weaknesses and openings are, where you need to avoid, how to, each each attack you have to figure out how to avoid and then, you know, just all the stuff of like, which rage do you want to use and when? And you can counterbalance yeah. like impacts of damage by activating rage. Obviously, all the armor sets, all of the relics, all of the, the the different spirit powers you have, the company you have being Atreus and Freya, and all the moves they have and upgrades, different shields. Like, and it's just, when you play it all. And I think me and Mel did that on the one below hardest difficulty, right? Uh, I, uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, Give me a challenge. I think so. Uh, Knowing that, like, it's like, yeah, this could be harder. I could, and the ov obvious way is I'm allowed to make less mistakes every time. Yep. It's just like I can make 100, then 50, then 25, and then the hardest difficulty is like you can make 10. You know, like, whoa, it's gonna get real hard to nail it. But once you do, it's gonna feel amazing. And, and those, fundamentally, a lot of them... difficulty, ma uh, difficulty management is about that. And I just like, if he's gonna yeah. say it's bullshit just because it's, you know, it, there's a difference between enemy sponges and learning how to play the game. Yeah, yeah, and and those those mm -hmm. uh, extra boss fights, they're mostly pretty well made. I think there's a couple of attacks where it's like, oh, that's kind of hard to actually make out because of the camera. Uh, yeah, most of the time, there's definitely complications go, with that. Yeah, because they go behind you and you can't go around that quickly. Uh, the way they attack or something, I would need to replay it to specifically tell you what. But yeah, those are those are good boss fights. Like they're really good. Well, I was gonna say they're they, really they, satisfying to be, as you already said. They replace the Valkyries because you'd done the Valkyries in 2018, so like, what do we do now? And the Berserkers, once you discover that's what they are, it's like, they're fucking fun. They're very, mm -hmm. very straightforward, sort of. And so are the Valkyries, to an extent. Like, the first Valkyrie kill feels pretty good, and then they just keep getting harder and harder and harder, and then you got to fight... It's uh, Sigrun, right, at the end of 2018? Yes. Yep. And she's fucking very hard. Yep. Though they, yep. they never nerfed the laser, so as long as you have that, <laughs> you can mess her up. <laughs> Oh, I was so I was so I was so 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 sad when I got the laser Ragnarok. Game, yeah. and Ragnarok. Practically practically useless. <laughs> Hardcore. I like that she has a romance with Mimir. Yeah. <laughs> that was good stuff. They gave her a whole bunch of time too. Cause some people don't care about any other aspect of gameplay as long as there's a super hard combat option. It doesn't matter if there's nothing else to think about. All that matters is that they get their asses beat. Oh, he's oh, he's uh, he's upset. He's, he's salty. I'll, I'll go for he's salty. Yeah. yeah, he's off the rails now. Salty. Like this isn't. He's salty. He's big mad. He's very mad. All uh, it's about is getting your ass beat. If you, all all you do is get beat and killed, that's all the higher difficulties are. And it's like sure thing, scrub. I don't even know what to I'm say. I'm not even like, sure um, what he's arguing here. Like he's, the he's lack saying, of any. He's not. He's whining. Than... He is whining. This is the <laughs> whining segment. <laughs> It's like he's saying, like, yeah, you're going to tell me, oh, it's fine because you can choose harder difficulties, so it doesn't matter if there's an easy one. Yeah, well, your, your hard difficulty is bullshit, and you only like it because you get killed a lot. But there's two difficulties between that. You, what yeah, about, you, you what about those? Give me challenge is a good good run. Uh, as as they're, veteran they're right players, there. me and Mel had trouble on it, you know? Yeah. Especially when you just learned the game. Do I remember when I went into Valhalla and forgot all the mechanics? Oh my <laughs> god. Got, if you watch thrashed. those streams, I'm like actually like an old man trying to press the button at the time. But then by the time you get to the end of my runs, I'm doing everything perfectly. Like, yes, I'm yeah. back in it. Brother. Oh, I know which ones, are, which attacks are good. No, let's get, get on. Yeah, I, 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 I this seems uh, like a pretty pretty extreme. Like we go to, oh, easy is just too easy. Like they just uh, just, just go, go through it, every scrub. And then, but the, the last one, that's bullshit. It's so yeah, hard. but I, I mean, that kind of difficulty to give me God of War difficulty, I always would refer to that as a bragging rights difficulty. You know, like it's yeah. it's not the one you needed to finish. It was the one that if you really wanted to challenge yeah. yourself and be able to tell your friends, yo, bye. I beat this on Give Me God of War, whatever it is. Then that's the one you play. A Give Me God of War, though, I think is actually pretty reasonable as far as difficulty goes and once you learn the mechanics it's it's quite good and it actually kind of improves the experience of of combat in the game the the combat sandbox of this game the idea of the combat puzzle and 
I don't know. I, I think I think being pissed that you can't beat the bragging rights difficulty is not something you should ever do because it's like well, well, it's part of part of maturing as a gamer and as a parallel maturing as a person is as you get older, realizing you know what I I don't have to be excellent at every game. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be the best at every game. Maybe I don't have there's to some get games big mad when I don't do well. <laughs> yeah, maybe games. I don't have to blame. Maybe I don't have to make the, these these cringe cope videos about like easy modes <laughs> because I didn't have what it took, or I didn't care enough, or I wasn't skilled enough to beat God of War on the hard mode or whatever. Because this is a huge self report, and I don't know. You, part of maturing is being able to say, you know what, I'm not going to be great at well, everything. I think I, be... we all have our skills and talents and I'm not going to be good at every game because I'm I'm I think I'm really damn good at video games, but there's some games I'm shit at and I know it <laughs> like it just that's mm, just that the happens. way it is. And, and I feel like he could have done this so much better, like advice for future. Don't start out with your thesis of like, fuck your hard difficulty. You're a bitch who loves being killed. You're like, don't st <laughs> you can may maybe at the end of the video. No, don't start that section like that. That's the. Because you're going to put off loads of people who are like, oh. Because you could obviously target, like, the thing I expect him to go for would be the, the spongy enemies. Something like that. Yeah. You can go for that. You can, would... Most hard difficulties, you can target that in almost all of games. Because that's probably going to be there. It's just a matter of what I... strategies are there to counter that. And in Give Me God Award, the most obvious one is your gear level. Because yeah. it, in more so than in any other difficulty, in Give Me God Award mode, because the enemies have such high levels themselves, you're really incentivized to engage with the gear system and not ignore it. Where in the other games, you can kind of say, oh, I like Kratos looking like he did in the old game, so I'm just going to put him in this yeah. one single strap armor mm -hmm. and then be done with it. And you don't really have to care all that much. But in Give Me God Award, it's like, you know, if they have a purple health bar, it's a real problem. Yeah, this this bizarre forty chat. Ironically, this mental platforming he's doing to blame <laughs> the lack of platforming in God of War at twenty eighteen for why he couldn't beat the hard mode. It's like it, it's pretty it, insane, indistinguishable uh, from parody. Yeah, this is just... insane. This is a to, this is a huge. This is a massive gold plated L to all of the the Mayo defenders in chat from earlier. <laughs> oh, and also, <laughs> oh, um, boy. So we'll just highlight, remember when Synthetic Man was like, this is too hard, and then he realized he had XP that he could spend, and then he was like, this is too easy. <laughs> Listen, Synthetic Man is that a real funny. true gamer. True gamer. Right? That was funny. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, a, he's a real gamer. But yeah, I, I, think, was, yeah. I was curious funny. if he's going to mention the, the, you know, all the other difficulties you can choose. That we'll see, we'll are see. Not that hard. Well, I, mean, I, I wonder if his frustration would be alleviated at all, at all if the most extreme mode wasn't called God of War. Maybe and, and or, or and just called like impossible or, or insanity, extreme mode yeah. or something where it's just like if you're playing this, this is like the fucking crazy mode. Like if you want to yeah. really yeah. have a give yeah, yourself a tough time. Difficulty. But if if you call it God of War, it just feels like well, I guess all the other ones are like the pussy the, version, well, <laughs> I, <laughs> even like the second to hardest one. You know what, I mean? what if they switch those? What if they switch the two top ones? What if it was Give Me God of War was the one above normal and Give Me a Challenge was the the hardest difficulty. I think that might have actually alleviated that. Well, so the, that, that's, there, that's, you're... that's down to interpretation, right? Because when I see give me God of right. War, it's like, you are the God of War. You can't be fucking beaten. That's that's why you choose this difficulty, right? You're that good. Yeah. You would... know every enemy yeah, back to front. You know how to yeah. beat them. If you loaded up Halo and the difficulty was called give me Halo, then I'm like, so this is the way it's supposed to be played? I like get that, real yeah. real serious mode? Right. So anything it, it but it isn't the called. true Halo experience, or yeah. in this case, God of War, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, the, the, like, it's, it's funny to say this, but literally just how they're listed, right? You, you give me a story, and then at the other end is give me God of War. You're like, oh, that's the hardest one. Like, <laughs> I imagine. I mean, yeah. yeah. Especially with the description. Yeah, and they have they have literal yeah descriptions. Yeah, that that helps a bit. I, I think option. John got it though. I think it's just he sees give me God of War as a taunt. Bit, this yeah. is just him. This is him coping at being bad at video games, which is fine, but that's fine. It doesn't matter if there's nothing else to think about. All that matters is that they get their asses beat. It's Shifting over to Resident Evil Village, mm -hmm. this design philosophy started becoming apparent to me around the time of the castle stage. I stated that the castle is the worst map in the entire Resident Evil series. Okay. Whoa, that's uh, a I bold mean, claim. I, I don't know why I, I think the worst map is. I don't know if I would disagree. Yeah, I don't um, know. I mean, I, it's oh, got some... No. It's got some pretty fucking awful design flaws in it. And I don't. I remember not liking right it. Next to one of them. 
Yeah, it's got some pretty awful design elements. Um, I, he might be correct. I'm Maybe. not. I mean, I'd have to really stop and think. There's definitely areas from four and five that I would. I mean, well, maybe not but for there's, I'd have to there's think, so but... many there's so many Resident Evil spinoffs like Gun Survivor and Operation Raccoon City, Umbrella right. Corps, so, and like I'm just like, are you really saying it's worse than any of those like straightforward shooter levels, or does he maybe. just mean numbered games? Because I, I assume he might mean like mainline Resident Evil games. Well, even those style. have three very distinct styles. The only other one that's like this is Resident Evil Seven. Well maybe i mean he might be just referring i when i when he said that i, I think he re probably was probably referring to just mainline entries but maybe not either way it doesn't it doesn't really make a difference um to say that it's the worst level in all of resident evil whether it's all of the mainline or those plus the extras and outliers is is it worse than the on rails it is strong five but it's a strong thing maybe. either way but maybe. i mean maybe it, i think you could probably make an argument for it even with my limited knowledge yeah, fair enough. If you, think the, if you think the castle's well designed, I don't know. Um, I I don't know if I go that far. I just most of I what I like it would hit is... more of being worst Resident Evil area ever. I I think that's going a bit too harsh on it. I just like big castle area mansiony place. That's probably all I remember in the yeah, positive. The, the negative. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I remember weird pathways and doors that were difficult to remember, and so you can get like awkward places on the mini map, being like, no, you can't get through that way. And you're like, oh, I fucking I gotta go around. Well, down I like the wine cellar. I mean, he's next to sure. the he's next to the the safe house where Dimitres just oh, can't yeah, go through. Oh yeah, that was that was awkward like, as that's, fuck. That's that's such an insane blunder of game design. I, yeah, I, I I don't know if I can think of one that's like worse in terms of like a story and immersion breaking elements in a video game. She's like probably literal the reincarnation villain in the whole series. Well, yeah. I, I was just gonna say, is the issue here less about the level design and more about the AI? boundaries and the fact that it's so easily it's uh, all of it. circumvented there's a yeah you know? throughout the entire game it's very apparent in the castle because of the just the play area is very well, it's it's a human-made interior it's often very maybe, rigid and structured so when enemies will just refuse to cross an invisible line to come and get you and they just saunter back to where they were yeah to, it's like yeah. man but to make how, it very clear this is shit you can drag her up to the door of the safe room i'm pretty sure like her ai gets that mm. confused and bobs back oh yeah all the time yeah, so, it's part of it. So yeah, control. what I'm trying to say is like they didn't really sort it. They didn't make it so that the second you're in this general area that she fucks off and stays fucked off for at least a minute, right? So that you can you can't fuck with it like that. But they didn't. Yeah. They were like, eh, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, they were like, you have to come up with some reason why Dimitres will not follow you into that door, even though she wants to kill you more than anything else. But nope, oh, you're in the safe room, and that's I the, guess... that you just can't. She just well, can't go in there and get you. Mr. X in Resident Evil 2 does the same thing with the save rooms, right? Like, yeah, like that. Follow you in. Yeah. But I guess people just accept, like, okay, this is a save room. I get that enemies just well, won't come in. Well, I think if here. that was the only I thing that was happening in the castle, it would be fine. But there's a lot, and that's one of the things I remember, is just being able to find yeah, it. I'd have to, I'd have to think, looking back at Resident Evil 4, if they had a safe room that was... I think there might have been a couple places where if you could, you could lead enemies to I the think, safe room. Well, Mendez but... is the only stalker in Resident Evil 4. Oh, I guess maybe that boss you fight in the, the yeah. hanging shipping container thing, too. He stalks you for a bit. Yeah, and there's no safe room but, in the shipping container or in the no underground before yeah, you vertigo. encounter it. Yeah, they designed it so that the safe room you get before, you walk in, then the doors close, and then it, he bangs on it, right? Like, and you're like, oh, God, there's no safe room after that. Like, because you... I feel like that's better. <laughs> like you don't want the safe is, room yeah. in the room with the thing that can chase you. It, it can work. The, you can get moments where you're like, "Oh god, I just made it!" Oh, thank goodness. But like at the same time, it can cause really awkward moments. Well, yeah, a lot of the other Resident mm -hmm. Evil games would have that first-person black background view with the door opening and going through, and the, there was something about that little loading screen that made the idea of that monster just getting lost and forgetting where you went a bit easier to take. But I think now that you can leave the door open and see her. It's, I mean, it's weirder. with modern That's games, a good it's point, just, yeah. you just don't have an excuse in modern games, especially when it can be so obvious, like Dimitres at the, the first safe house in the, the castle. It's so obvious. She will she will just stand there and stare at you, and you could do you could shoot her with bullets, infinite bullets if you've unlocked it, and she will not just get you. Um, the, no attempt, it seems, was made on trying to make it good. And the whole game is full of this. The entire game front to back is full of these issues 
where enemies just will not oh and i've just i can't go there because you know yep. I, I just can't i'm not allowed to cross that invisible line they just can't do it oh he ran up the stairs well oh well he got, he got away oh well well <laughs> and i'll clarify what i meant by that Sure, of course there are other maps that are technically worse. There's like 25 <laughs> games ah, out there. Guns are but wrong. it's not even debatable that the first map is the most important in a Resident Evil game. The mansion, the police department, El Pueblo, the Raccoon City streets, the Baker Estate. These starting maps are the most intricate, the most exploration. That is a really oh, interesting not, thing no, to, that was to one say. Of the Wii one. They, are n they are the most intricate? Well, but wait, go even further back than that. You said they are the most important because they're the most intricate, the most one is like, well, wait, wait, wait. Well, that's just not, that's, that's not true. If we have, so let's say we have a game. His only thing is this the worst mansion. Well, because he's about to, he's, he's almost summarized why I have such issue with Resident Evil 7's, like, almost continuity of design. You start out in the Baker Estate, as he said, which is actually pretty solid, a lot of the design in there. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. They clearly fucking gave up the further along in the game you go, or they ran out of time, which is much more likely. Easily. Um, and if you say, yeah, but they've got to make sure the first place is the good place, I'd be like, why wouldn't we want all of it good? Wait, what are you... What good you're place. essentially saying is these games need to get more and more simple as they go, which think you, which seems counterintuitive. Well, but to, like, I don't... Like, you should want most the challenge to right? go up over time. Isn't it important to make the whole game good rather than make sure the first encounter place is the good one? He's saying the reason why he's picking on the castle in Resident Evil Village so hard, it's not the worst design technically, but it's the first big hub world, and if you fail that, you know, that's that's worse than designing a place that's worse. Mm, um, that's weird. I say that yeah, is weird. Like, obviously, there should, be, there should be consistent good quality throughout. The only reason that you would have the first area be the best is just, like, constraints and limitations and having to focus yeah. your efforts in particular places. It would be, well, if we only have limited time... It's a pragmatic time, choice. We should pr yeah, yeah, if we only have limited time and resources and everything, and, we, and this has got to be out by a certain time, we want to make sure to have, like, the first part of the game be really, really good in particular, because, you know, we want them to get to the other parts. <laughs> But a lot of people... Yeah, if I got to the last part and it was, like, super shit, I wouldn't be like, well, at least the castle was good, so it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah, I, uh, that's kind of what I'm getting yeah, at. Like, if, uh, if you could only make one of three good, sure, I can understand making the first one good. But why are we... Then it's strong. Yeah, make them all good, though. <laughs> like, make just do that. Well, I mean, yeah. I would almost argue that in a lot of cases, the ending is probably your better thing to focus on because yeah. people will remember how something ends well, more than it begins. That's if they I get think. that far, though. The reality, point, yeah, well, yeah, the reality yeah. of video gaming is that a lot of people won't finish the game. Yeah, yeah no. So the amount of people who, you know, play Resident Evil 4's Village versus play Resident Evil 4's Island is going to be, they're going to be two different numbers. Yeah, that's fair. The Baker Estate. These starting maps are the most intricate, the most exploration and puzzle focused, and the most interesting to spend time in. They're when you're learning to manage your inventory oh. space, retracing your steps to solve a puzzle, figuring out how to avoid enemies to save ammo. The a lot of these are just random things that are thrown in, along with stuff like they are the most interesting. I feel like like he's, um, he's crossing wires on analysis yeah. here. This the, is starting to become a bit nonsensical. The mansion in Resident Evil 8... Autofor broke his brain. ...is bad because... Like, the worst, because it's bad at the worst time to be bad. That seems to be the argument. And you're like, okay, develop that. Why is it bad? Why is it bad to be bad at that time? It's like, because it's supposed to be good when it's the beginning. I mean, implying, the implying majority... of course, that it's not supposed to be later on. It's just like, this is very strange. It's okay if the end is shit. Like, mm, no. No. <laughs> the vast majority of the Yakuza games, like, start pretty slow, but then end very strong. So, I mean, like, I, I don't know. I think it just depends on what your goals are in the story and, and what people are playing your game for, too, right? Because if your game is primarily narrative-based, then the ending to your story is probably going to be one of the most important parts of it. Whereas if it's all gameplay based very flashy and targeting a large audience having a, a good opening might hook people in the way that you would want to but i think you should probably have both the ending and the beginning be strong it's just like he's penalizing it more than anything else because of the fact that it was early instead of just strictly talking about the design of it which i think is way more important mm. um because mm -hmm. he's like you know in the early sections you're learning how to play the game and you're going to be given a lot more puzzles with this all of that and it's like i'm guessing he's going to say it fails at those things however there are places in other Resident Evil games that are worse than it. It's just that those weren't at the beginning, so it's not as bad. 
it's a yeah, very strange it feels like be... two different arguments at the same time because i kind of agree with him that you need to make a strong start but i don't agree that a thing should be considered you know like if someone said the first act of this movie is really bad uh but the, th the second and third are way worse but the first act is actually the worst because that's the first thing people see <laughs> i'd be like that's i mean strange. yeah this is mixing up uh, <laughs> yeah it, it feels weird, like it, a lot of stuff's getting mixed up i mean the arguments I make here might be the special consideration should be paid to the first segment of a game because it should lean into teaching the players the mechanics or leaning into some of those things. And by the end, it's safe to assume that the player is aware of and has at least some level of mastery over the mechanics. But to say stuff like it, it's the first bit has to be the most intricate, which is almost counterintuitive and it's, it, it's the best or something like that. It's, it's bizarre. God of War broke his brain. I mean, no, if, if anything, you want the end to be more intricate because well, then what, you, you sort of well, let yeah, the player can take advantage of their the skills. The challenge goes up as the player progresses. That is yeah. actually true. Yeah. Yeah, you typically find the complexity, you know, because it's like, welcome ice enemy, welcome fire enemy, and then halfway through the game, oh my god, a fire and ice enemy at the same time. Whoa. And at the end of the game, it's like, this guy switches between ice and fire. There's a Nintendo right. Switch game called Astral Chain that has a really solid oh. final boss fight where you really have to you have to learn essentially use every lesson that you've learned over the course of the game. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to beat it. And I yeah. found that pretty interesting. Astral oh, Chain, I mean, good combat. The rest of the game can suck my dick. That's yeah, my yeah the, 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 the investigation stuff isn't too great and it runs like absolute trash because it's a Switch exclusive. The, um, Metroid Prime, right? The first phase of Metroid Prime itself requires all kinds of different, well, all the weapons you've used, and then the second phase requires different visors that you've developed over the game as well. Like, that's cool. As opposed mm -hmm. to other enemies throughout the game, the well, first set, you just shoot them, second set, shoot them, but also with rockets, third set, you have to, like, use environmental things and also use other weapons. Like, it's, yeah, that's just how games usually do it. So, this is and a you... strange argument. I'm not sure what it has to do with God of War as well. I don't know, it's, you'd feel bamboozled if you got a Resident Evil game and the first area was intricate and big and lots of stuff to explore and things to find. And then once you got done with that section and moved to the rest of the sections, it was way more linear. Oh, you mean like Resident Evil 7? To find, way more. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. like the fucking section on the ship where you're just shooting gooey monsters that and sucked. then the cave. That was like, what happened, guys? They phoned that <laughs> shit in so much. Mm -hmm. They were like... Because, yeah, I, 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 I remember yeah. liking the, the Baker State. I love the demo. I was like, you know what? I'm sold. This game's cool. And then I was like, wow. Yeah, the first four hours were, yeah, first four hours were pretty you. decent. First time but, yeah, they did. It was in VR. They really did. I, I love the uh, old, old cabin. That was monsters. great. It felt really creepy. But, yeah, the, the ship at the end was so lame. Such a lame way to end it all. Yes. It was, mm -hmm. The ship wasn't even the end. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's tough to... It's it's tough to keep oh, it all yeah. straight. Yeah, see, right. yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. all mine. Yeah. <laughs> you see, though, God of War's fault. Well, I forgot it leads back to the mansion overall. Yeah, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. Fucking yeah, God you of get War dumped there at the end of the cutscene mm -hmm. where you shoot a monster and then it oh dies yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Enemies to that's save ammo. These first maps make a huge impression. They are not just visually engaging. They are mentally engaging and full of systems that push you into smart play whether it be the more classic survival horror style or the action shooter style. When you arrive at the okay. castle over an hour after the game... I don't see why that would stop at mid or end, though. Yeah, or not a, increase. Yeah, it I, it's, 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 I like to be engaged all through my game. This isn't what cool. his video is about, but those passing comments, I'd be like, God, I have so much to say about that, but okay, we'll just... <laughs> yeah. we'll village just is also on. very shootery. Like, there's yes. there's tons of combat in Village. Well, he's about to... Yeah. I think he's well, about to say, like, Village really failed. Luckily, fucking mediocre, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, village doesn't stimulate your brain. It's just like God of War, new God <laughs> of War, where it just kicks your ass. Like that's because that's all you want is to get your ass yeah. beat. What you want? It's it's started and you have very shooty, and then you get to like the monster baby part, and it's just like, what? What are we doing now? <laughs> Done anything? Uh, also, this... uh, in regard to this video, what was even the segue that brought us back to Resident Evil? He just, he just, he just said, in, he just yeah, went yeah. Right <laughs> he, he just started another sentence where Resident Evil. After, after it? Speaking <laughs> about the difficulty in God of War, I he think just, he's about to like, show right. a behind the scenes like dev team thing, and they're all working happily on an amazing game. And then Kratos comes in and kills him. And he's like, "You see, mm -hmm. don't give me right. feelings. <laughs> Make it soy. 
Make it story. <laughs> Make it story. After the game has Being started and you haven't really story. done anything, this map needed to impress and do its fucking job, and it doesn't. Oh my god. For all all right. <laughs> what, what is his issue with the castle? I'm curious what his issue with the castle is. It needed, it needed to do its fucking job. Because, <laughs> like, visually, it looks really good. Well, but, like, but everything in. Is there yeah, a, it looks good visually. Genuinely, but... is there a moment in a video game that you wouldn't say that's the case? Like, yeah, it's all supposed to do its fucking. What do you mean the castle is supposed to do its yeah. fucking job? I don't know what it is, but just. <laughs> it's a castle. Castles need to do their fucking job. You just Fuck seem you. particularly angry about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, show me on the doll where the castle touched you. Show me on the soy <laughs> where the, the Kratos touched you. Job, and it doesn't, for all the reasons I went into in my village video. Okay. And then oh, beyond well, the castle... Oh, fuck us for not watching it. <laughs> I, mean, I guess like, it's not relevant. Could you, give me the re homework? could you give me the Reader's Digest version here for those of us who are watching this video? I was just saying, <laughs> you just put very big emphasis on this. And then it's like, yeah, all the things that I said Mel, in the other video. He made it clear. He said it didn't do its fucking job. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Which is important because it's the castle at the beginning, so it's supposed to do that. Video. Listen, I'm just saying, if you emphasize a thing very hard, and then you <laughs> say, Brown does. it's in this, it's in this. <laughs> he did. <laughs> this other Where is the secret of Mario's jump, damn you? <laughs> like, give it back. The castle in Resident Evil 4 is in the middle. Yeah, but he's just, I don't think it matters that it's a castle as opposed to the opening main hub, I think. That's all he's saying. Right, but um, that's kind of an interesting comparison, though, because a lot of people pick between the village and the castle being their favorite area in Resident Evil 4. You know, yeah. Like it's not strictly the village. No one, not everyone says the village is absolutely the uh, the best part of the whole game. Most people agree, though, that the village or the castle are the better ones compared to the island. Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. And it's I mostly for vibe reasons. It's vibe I think and I'm um, a castle guy. I less prefer dealing with everybody who has guns in that game, but I'm okay with it. Like I, I like the challenge of the different enemies because the castle plays with it in ways that I really enjoy. Um, is crossbows more than guns? Too. Yeah, but then the castle you have, like, um, I'd have to play it again to be more specific because I think the game itself is a fucking masterpiece. Let's be honest. Yeah, you have mm. uh, the, there's people in the, there's more. Really, it's just crossbows at the island. You have one tough enemy with the minigun. You have some of them have RPGs. I think yeah, some of yeah. them do, yeah, but yeah. they have the big bright lasers on them at least. Um, so. And, and at the well, end, like there's those guys in turrets. So yeah, it just I, for me, it's just the vibe and the aesthetic just feel like they're different. I I I love, I've always like the castle the most. It's got that, especially in the remake. One Dang. of the things I really oh, like yeah. about the remake is it leads hard into the evil cult vibe, which I really dude. Love. It was fucking cool. Like the fog and then the different areas for like mm -hmm. sacrifices or chanting and cult shit. Mm -hmm. Like you said, yeah. Oh, I yeah. also will never not love the village as well. It's uh. Oh, yeah, I really love the village. It's really I, good. I'm inclined to agree, though. It is more vibes. I, uh, yeah. Well, I think that one of the issues just fine. with... It's just vibes. One of the issues with the island is it's substantially less creepy all of a sudden. It's just like, okay, we're just kind of doing action games. It feels game more like now. an action movie, With the exception movie, yeah. of the regenerators, right. I guess. They're, yeah, yes, the segment yes. with yeah, the regenerators, regenerators where they creepy. get into more, like, sci-fi, science-y horror lab. That, that, that segment there was really good, but... That segment's great, yeah. It it does but, I mean, I agree. Like, the village yeah. has a really cool, eerie vibe. Oh, yeah. yes. Well, awesome. and you have the aspect of... I think that's you at your least powerful, almost. Or at least it feels that way, right? You've got your pistol, and that's it. Yeah. And dropped in. It feels like you're most sort of uh, fish out of water. Mm. You don't... You're in an unfamiliar place, and the scenario is unfamiliar, whereas by the end, you, you've come to basically understand what's happening. God, yep. beating both sure. chainsaw guys on the hardest difficulty. <laughs> and uh, I think mo moving the to the castle... Moving to the castle from the village sort of doubles up on the creepiness, where you have like, the cult factor into yeah. it but then it, you get to the village and it's like a step down and it's just like, oh you mean okay well i guess i'll just shoot all the guys the island, island. Island. yeah win yeah. the game yeah, the, yeah, the yeah that's what i mean enemies yeah. in the castle are a nice touch this was an yeah, issue yeah. as well in resident evil 5 where you had the african village sort of segment then you had the actually the african tribal levels which i thought i think those are my favorite that they're really they cool fun. like aesthetically mm -hmm. they're very interesting and they play well into the ferocity of you know, the, you know, the warrior stuff, and, oh, and then, then the you get to the island, and it's shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, do you remember so how much fucking fun we were not having playing that? 
it's a fun co-op game until you get to that point and then it's like okay yeah. like w- memes are over this is actually not fun at yeah, all. yeah they have like fucking five guys at you all machine gunning and you're just like you keep falling over when you get tagged by it and you're just like uh <laughs> this is fun yeah yeah once you're uh yeah once you get out of the underground temple and then you move into that last act it's like ugh. Uh... anyway <laughs> And then beyond the castle, when you get to explore the world of village, you see the similarities to the structure of God of War, where there is... Just to be clear, How? explore <laughs> always has massive quotations around it from beginning well, yeah. to end in Resident <laughs> Evil Village. Let's be very clear. Let's see. I want to know why he God thinks of War, God of though. War is responsible for this. Mm-hmm. Well, God of War has legitimate open world segments, yeah. doesn't it? It's no, kinda like... he needs to explain. Let's see. I want to know, I wanna Let's know see. why. He wants to know, okay? Gosh. Oh no. Zooms flow like lean on, but they. Uh, hello? <laughs> That's Hi. a lot of video games. <laughs> I'm afraid my end of things cut out completely, so I didn't hear any oh. of him saying any of that. Oh, okay. I'll, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just glad that fucking. I'd love to hear it. Is everything fine? Okay, stream. Are we oh okay? yeah, everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 I would love to hear him. Say oh, that thank again. goodness. Okay, everything's good. It's Maybe just, you just had a stroke. It's fine. I'm just hoping. So just said that, that problem I had on my internet is supposed to be fixed. All right, I'm just hoping everything's okay. Good. And now you've got like PTSD whenever yes. you think. That wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make a video about it soon. Then this ridiculous difficulty I'm playing life on. It's absurd. Or is like that. Uh, that famous. You should have played life on story thing. mode. Yeah. You know that thousand yard stair painting. That's yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Story path to follow for anyone who just. Oh wait, did I not go far back enough? Uh, go, go back, back a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fuck it. Yep. We'll go here. And then beyond the castle, when you get to explore the world of village, you see the similarities to the structure of God of War, where there is one set story path to follow for anyone who just wants to fly through the game, and then there's a bunch of optional exploration that yields treasures and upgrades. You mean like shit tons of games, just in general? Yeah, like, well, um, yeah. like Bioshock, like, like Mass Effect. Anybody, anybody who wants to fly through the game, it's like, all right, cool, nice loaded language there. I don't even yeah. know. Like, <laughs> this is not something God of War 2018 invented, no, my this dude. Is, this is many games no. where they have the story path and then the optional objectives. That's pretty. Yeah, God of War 2018 people, did not invent side missions. A lot of people might argue that that's the fucking peak way of designing because it accounts for the two pl- types of players if you were to split them that way. Right, right. Super Mario Brothers has side quests. I, I oh yeah, know. God of War ruined Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> How yeah. could God of War do this? I don't know what to do with this. This is silly. Also, God of War, like the optional things, they they also they have like tons of story well, and he's probably dialogue, I, and he has to qualify this, right? Yeah. Upgrades. Both games flow like this. And if the game is gonna play this way, it needs other systems to lean on, but they aren't present. I posit that for other the same reason. Such as what? Yeah, and tell me what these like, systems are. are. Yeah, what are these systems? Because I, I got nothing with this. The, the, I, at least sometimes I can sort of understand where he's coming from, but this one I'm really lost because this is he's describing so many videos. We're, we're talking, you know, thousands of video games that are very popular have this style. I don't know what he means. Yeah. I posit that for the same reasons behind God of War's changes, the creative leads in charge of Village oh, made no, their change. No, he's not going to provide it. I think, like, I think we're just moving on to a different just, point. What can we do God with that? The games are hyper-linear. You can't do anything with that. All he's done is describe something many games do, which is that they have a main story path and then optional missions. And then he said, yeah, but you need systems to support it. Anyway, moving on. What the fuck is that? Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess we'll carry on. <laughs> this is... I guess so, yeah. I mean... Out of War's changes, the creative leads in charge of Village made their changes. The inventory system, which used to be something you had to consider when picking up new items, at least to some degree, has been expanded to such a size that you can play the entire game and never once have to consider what you can carry. Um, that... Um, okay, but how is that, how's that got a worse fault? Well, I before don't... we get even into that even, I'm already taking issue with the notion of like, so this system, what you're presenting here, it has nothing to do with... It's literally that 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 to me feels more just like a design balance fail. Like the you can just stack your whole thing up. 
That you know, mm-hmm. like that that just seems like bad game design in general, not of any trend of any kind. Unless of course they were like we don't want to make it difficult for anybody at all in any way, shape, or form. Like, oh yeah, I guess yeah, that would th- th- that's just I, I think a bad choice because it's a form of item management. I just don't see how this plays into the broader points he's making. Yeah, um, th- this is just item management. I think, balancing I'm pretty sure that yeah, one thing we we talked about before. That's like, why didn't you just do the same like in Resident Evil Four? Because there was kind of perfect yeah yeah <laughs> the way to do it i feel like um even bringing this up is kind of runs contrary to his point because it seemed like his broad point was they have to remove these kinds of features in order to create a game where the only thing you have to deal with is combat whereas mm-hmm. here you pointed out well no there is a system present that is meant to uh create uh the challenge of inventory management but that it didn't work so this doesn't even bolster the point like i wouldn't bring this up as being God of War's fault. If it was God of War's fault, then there wouldn't even be an inventory management system. You would just be able to have all of the s- shit yeah. that you want. And to me, it's just uh, if 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 proven to be true that you can just do whatever the hell you want, your inventory is never stressed in any way, shape, or form. Which I don't quite remember it being that way, but I'll buy it for now. Then uh, I would still argue that's just like a, a d- development issue on the game design balance, which happens all over the place. Like we could go over all the arguments for like. Should uh, the fucking chainsaw guys have as much health as they should in any given difficulty? Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not. Get into all of it. I just, yeah, I need to see how this connects. And never once what's have his, to cons- uh, What's his point? I just got back. I'd use the loot. I will roll it further back. We can have a look. There are changes. The inventory system, which used to be something you had to consider when picking up new items, at least to some degree, has been expanded to such a size that you can play the entire game and never once have to consider what you can carry. I just can't over- Um, this is a complex and deep point. Um, so, I don't think the- the- one of the reasons why the uh, attach case- at, is it attach or attache? Attache. Oh, it attache. At, attache. Uh, the, one of the reasons that the attache grid system is really neat is because it gives you a level of control and, in a way, personalization, and as well as prioritization of upgrades because you to have be fair, multiple places. His language specifically only mentioned that the inventory's gotten so big you don't have to worry about where you place things. So. Technically speaking, that has nothing to do with the attaché case necessarily. Well, I guess I mean, technically you're right. It could just literally be a carry. Uh, it could be a weight limit system. Yeah, he's just saying just it's too many spaces. System. You do have. You have to upgrade it through the game to get that many spaces, though. Well, of I course. Do. But so, if he's this, this is the problem, though. I need to know what difficulty he's talking about, and I need to know yeah. what he's playing this like. Is he playing it like as an expert? In which case, you probably won't be able to carry everything because you'll well, you'll have too yeah, much to spend. Part of the, the point as well is that if you're having a really tough time with a game, then it's not going to matter how big your inventory is. Your, in, your inventory could literally be limitless, and it's everything that you pick up you can keep. If you're expending that at a rate that is not, uh, that's not efficient, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, all, what it matters is how much you have. The size of the kit limits how much you can have at any one given point, and that only is a limitation based on how good you're doing, not how bad you're doing. If anything, it's it, it. The upgrades for your inventory are raising the ceiling for how much you're allowed to essentially reward your own skill by carrying extra stuff. And the grid system from I mean, we can use Resident Evil Five as an example. One of the interesting elements of the shift from Resident Evil Four's attaché case system to Resident Evil Five's much much more simplistic nine slot system is that it would change the priority you might want to take for upgrades, like capacity. It might change what kinds of stuff you carry, what kinds of stuff you don't carry. It might impact the the guns that you take. If every gun is one slot, and I know that the starter pistol in Resident Evil 5 can be upgraded to hold 100 rounds, which it can, that has serious... Uh, like item implica- item implications, you now have essentially freed up a spot because now your gun itself and in that slot can hold like what two slots worth of pistol rounds to where you don't even have to carry around pistol rounds anymore because it's all in the gun. The gun can hold a hundred, so increasing yeah. the capacity becomes probably more important from that logistic sense than it did in the game before. Um, it does come with its own, you know, positives and negatives, even though I far prefer the attache case system. 
So yeah, this is well, then this is a bizarre point that needs a lot of elaboration. I actually think that the nine blocks versus attache, like you can achieve some of the like things you were talking about in both or fail at it in both. As in like as a designer, if you don't get the balances right, you can make it so that you're never worrying because there's enough exploits in terms of certain uh, capacities for guns or whatever versus you can nail it in both because of the ways that you can take advantage of knowing what things work where and what things to drop and all that sort of stuff. Sure. I, um, I mean, we could see that here. He's got, he's got three pistols in his inventory system because he has a lot of space. If he didn't have enough room to bring all of this stuff with him, he might have to drop one on the spot. And what that could mean is, you know, incidentally that, oh, before I sell this gun, I might as well use all the ammo in it mm -hmm. because this game doesn't have an unload mechanic. So before I sell it, I'm going to go and use it a bit longer, use my 17 shots in the, the number one slot pistol before I, you know, use my new one because, well, I mean, I've got the room for it. I can't just drop it. I can't unload the gun. So there you go. And that changes the way that you might play the game. And cause you to backtrack once you use your shots, and then you go back to the, the shop owner. I mean, a also, lot of this I, stuff is like a lot of, yeah. I, should, I think you'll agree with this, Rags. Uh, what an ugly inventory. Yeah, what the yeah. fuck, man? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Guns go down the left. And, uh, <laughs> oh my like, god! What is what is oh. this? Yeah, you have the. <sighs> <laughs> I love how it's just, just thrown you completely off what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, yeah, one, two, three. Jesus Christ, the inventory's big. One, two, three, four. You have six guns with you? Fuck me. Well, this, this is the problem. Mines. I haven't played Village in so long. I don't even remember what I thought of the inventory balancing. Yeah, which... but when you were playing it, did you Mine think, man, up. this reminds me a lot of uh, God of War 2018? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, this is this is a fucking mess. This is his video in like a, a visual form. <laughs> right now. clean your shit room. Strewn, <laughs> shit strewn around everywhere. He needs to read Twelve Rules for Life. Yes. Yeah. Clean clean your inventory. Inventory. Up, Chapter two is clean your inventory. All your guns need to be organized based down the left hand side, so that if you, <laughs> like in the original Resident Evil Four, you, you if you wanted to swap weapons, you had to do it through opening them in you know opening the inventory. Scrolling to the one you want, double tapping A. And so you would have all of your guns going down the left hand side so that you would use the, the least amount of, you know, button presses to do mm -hmm. it. And then it would be quite quick because the menu's quick. But this is like. And then you line up everything what? so you can easily see how much you have of everything. I mean, his, yeah, one of his pistols and his magnum and his mines aren't even hotkeyed to a number. So if you wanted to equip them, if you wanted to pull out that magnum, he couldn't just do it with a button press. He'd have to go to his inventory and do it. So he'd have to scroll all the way to the right, then go down. Also, his grenade launcher is unloaded, even though he has a grenade launcher round. <laughs> Which is fine. Leave him it's alone, Rags. Leave him alone. Is he different types of grenade his launcher ass. rounds in Village? Playing games for ages. I don't remember if there's different types of I can't of remember grenade, either. Man. My mind is trying to cleanse itself of that game overstate how detrimental the removal of inventory management is to a Resident Evil title. Unless you're gonna pack your game full of creative combat encounters to make up for it like RE4. There's creative inventory management on, in RE4! Hang on, hang on. Let's, let's analyze that English there, okay? Because I, I take issue. Mental, the removal of inventory management is to a Resident Evil title. How detrimental the removal of inventory management is to a Resident Evil game. Unless you're going to pack your game full of creative combat encounters. So Resident Evil 4 is okay, though, because it has good combat encounters. It's okay that it doesn't no, no, have no, 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 item no. management. But it don't, does. Give him, don't give him that much credit. He said creative combat encounters. That like, has nothing to do with quality. I'm sorry, is he unaware that Resident Evil 4 is one of the most famously known inventory management games of all time? Yes. Do you know why everyone bitched and moaned, rightfully so, when in Resident Evil 5 they said, nah, you get nine <laughs> slots, take them or leave them. No. What's that? The egg? Yeah, it takes up as much space as a grenade launcher. What's the Obviously, problem with that? It's a very big egg. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a very small grenade launcher. Oh, oh, the part that yeah. stresses me out Resident Evil 4 every time is when I get all the fish and I'm like, oh no, I can't fit it all in my uh, big yeah, briefcase. I have to sell them immediately. No, I don't want to. Would you rather eat one massive egg or a dozen tiny grenade launchers? <laughs> um, and, was, and like I said, he said creative combat encounters. You can have creative combat encounters that can be terrible. You can have creative combat encounters that are good. 
you can have creative combat encounters that it might in no way impact the inventory. For instance, the um the the, the railway segment, right? The when you're when you're on the rails and you're shooting mm -hmm. everybody in both games, um, or at least I think in the second one, you get unlimited ammo for that. Uh, they give you all the pistol rounds that you need. As far as I know, you have unlimited ammo during that segment. So that's a creative encounter that does n literally doesn't impact your inventory in any way. Why is he showing this section for creative encounter? Because they're walking towards him on a bridge. Mm. Oh. Because I know what this segment is. This is the segment that you get right after you kill your first Las Plagas. And it's nighttime now. This is... Uh, yeah, you got to you... move the boxes with yeah, the this water is after shit, the... right? And you get through the cave. Yeah, you get this the is after the Del Lago key. fight, the waterfall, yeah. Or necklace or something, I remember. Yeah, you need to go, because there's a river in front of that, and you have to unlock it, and all the guys come for you. But this, this is not to... creative, Yeah, I you have say. to drop down the crates. Yeah, it's not very creative. It's fine, it plays well. Like, I would argue the encounter in this portion is, like, famously creative. There's so many different things you can do. Yeah, well-designed play of. area. And, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna pack your game full of creative combat encounters to make up for it, like RE4. There are also- I can't believe he's just said in his video that there's like, the item management is removed from RE4, but at least there's unique creative content. Like, I, I can't- I, wow, you know what? So that, and that's said casually, it's not something that's the focus to explain to us why the item management is non-existent in Resident Evil 4. Baller, you know the segment in the castle, in the original, mm -hmm. where there's- L there's there's literally a free rocket launcher mm. in that glass case. Yeah. And then if you're really good at the game, you get to that point and you're like, "Fuck, I, I have no room." For <laughs> yes. <no> room. <laughs> yeah. And then it's I know why it's there. I I know the devs put that in there because they're like, "Yep, if you're good at the game, you got to make a choice. Do you leave behind all of that stuff to get a rocket launcher, or do you leave the rocket launcher and keep all that stuff?" Because mm. those and fuckers never take the knew. Uh, well, the rocket launcher is a free boss kill, so mm -hmm. uh, if you can, if you can take it to kill Vertigo, which is if I have a grenade launcher, I always use it for Vertigo. Mm. Um, I, it's, it's, a, it's a choice to make. Uh, I guess it depends on how comfortable you feel with everything. Um, if I, don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever picked it. I always keep my ammo and stuff, but, but yeah, no, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, it depends on what you have. It, it's interesting because if you get there and you're making it there by the skin of your teeth, it is a godsend that you get a free rocket launcher, which normally yeah, is like yeah, 30,000 yeah. pesetas. But if you're already doing really well, it's basically the game saying, yeah, well, too bad. You're doing really good. You don't need it, do you? It's a lot <laughs> less appealing now because your inventory is full. So it's kind of like a weird... It, it's just interesting how they kind of set that up to where it, it's, 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 a, it's a help for the people who aren't doing good, but not as much of a help to people who are doing really good. No puzzles to, that have to say to... that the inventory management has been removed in Resident Evil 4 and onward is definitely an overstatement. It's bizarre. It's insane. I, you have to I, explain yeah. it's bizarre. I, it's, it's I, I can understand it being a lot less painful than the inventory system in, say, like the uh, Resident Evil remake for GameCube. Because I remember sitting in the save room going, fuck, okay, I got six spaces <laughs> right. here as yeah. Chris. Like, what do I take with me? Mm. Just sitting there for like 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, what can I combine? Like, can I combine three herbs? There's like, oh shit! Yeah. It's like, oh damn yeah. it! It's like, or or even worse, do you combine those two green herbs to make room, knowing that if you find a red herb, you can't combine it with the two greens you did earlier? So, yeah. Mind game. yeah. Like, why won't also, you still need to get your your quest combined. items or puzzle items. Yeah. You need to uh, take those with you as well. And you're like, oh shit! Am quest I gonna run into this one? Spots, I don't actually, actually know which one I need. Which one I need next? So, do I take both of them or do I? Only get that one, take a chance, and maybe have to walk all the way back and encounter more zombies. Yeah, oh, where, whereas with like Resident Evil 4, I feel like the worst it gets is just like, okay, well, I just won't pick up this ammo then, or I'll throw away yeah. one of my flash grenades and then I can fit this thing in, and then, okay, yeah, keep going. Well, it's, well, it, it, say, it's like, worthy to consider. No it's offense to anybody, like but the better you are at the game, the more the inventory management becomes a problem because the more things you have saved, the more things you have ready. And like I said, encountering the fish, or as he said, the RPG. And then, of course, there's just the way that you organize it for the sake of you know, access and everything. It's a luxury purchase. Um, mm -hmm. If you get mm -hmm. to, if you get to the castle and you're not doing that good, everything that the game has given you, you are using and you're just like having a tough time, but you're making it through, you're doing it. And you have the option to get that attache case upgrade. And you're like, I've, I've never come close to filling up my inventory. I don't need to buy this case. 
Instead, I will use that money on, oh, look, the riot gun has just become available or something like that. And so you spend mm -hmm. your money on upgrades or new weapons, which is something you actually need instead of the the luxury purchase that is your uh, your your inventory size. Yeah. Yeah. There are also no puzzles that have you thinking about how pieces could be used to solve some puzzle you saw an hour ago, and now you have to find your way back. There are... Okay. I wasn't listening. <laughs> what well, so he's, he's saying that that's not present in, I guess, Village, or maybe some other ones as well, but the nature of you pick up an item and then you realize it's useful an hour later. Okay. That's what I mean. I don't know what else. Um, I need him to say more before I, I can agree or disagree. Yeah. Just like that is a yeah, fact. Yeah, I don't know if is that supposed to be good or bad or mm. I don't know. Has that has that happened where you pick up an item in a Resident Evil game and then hours later you're like, oh, this was useful. This thing I've been carrying around this whole time. Like normally it tells you what it does, right? Well, usually you pick up and something you... that's like, oh, this thing looks weird, but it also looks like it fits into something. Yeah, and also if it's a quest item, you cannot drop it. It won't let you. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's so that I guess you don't he just, you know, soft lock yourself. I don't know if he's trying to appeal to the, I don't know, Metroidvania style aspect of it. I'm not, I'm not sure. There are no tough early. Yeah, I don't game know if this is what he was talking about, but like it's definitely the case. Where, like you'll pick up a key item and be like, I don't know what this is for, and then like hours later you'll find a door where it's like, oh, that's what that other thing that I picked up hours ago fits mm -hmm. into. But like you probably at that point put it into a storage box, so you have to like I mean, go back. But this, this the box the thing, like, get it. this would open up a whole set of new conversations about whether or not that's good. Is it good to have mm -hmm. items in games that you go, I have no idea what this is, and then hours later you go, oh, cool, it's for this. I don't right. know. That's a bit more complicated. Go, and now you have to find your way back. There are no tough early game crafting decisions to be made. There's no deciding whether to kill an enemy or leave him <sighs> because you'll have to come back here later because you never have to return anywhere in Village. There's no fear of entering a dangerous situation with no health because your health recharges. Don't you do a bit of backtracking in the village itself? So the problem here is that, as you guys Definitely, famously yeah. know, we're not fans of the village. We have our own criticisms yeah. of it that are extensive. <laughs> yeah, I do not like that game. The it problem sucks. here is that what he's highlighting is like the uh, if, if you go weird. like if you say this game has backtracking, this game doesn't. We know which one's better. It's like no, we don't. No, it depends on how they, they did it. And it's like, okay, well, this game, you have to actually manage your uh, bullets and stuff. In this game, you don't really. You can just spend them. It's like, you could be describing fucking anything right now. Like, uh, I know what we know, we know is describing Village. What I'm saying is, like, you need to be more specific with how it's detrimental to the systems if the game is designed with it. We could go into that. We don't like Village, but he's he <laughs> needs to do that. He needs to tell us why this is worse. Yeah, because backtracking can be good and it can be bad. Yep. Remember in the first Resident Evil 4, you go through the village three times. And every time it's different, especially the last yeah. part when it's raining and now the, the Plagas will spawn yeah. and you have Ashley with you. It's like it's, it's a way different encounter. There's literally different enemies and there's traps now and you're going through different places. It doesn't take long, but you do revisit that area. Now, if they built the game around these changes, which, by the way, is famously known, Resident Evil 4, there are videos out there, I think, that claim Resident Evil 4 destroyed the Resident Evil franchise, right? Because it's, it was so... The people enjoyed it so much, it changed the format forever, almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can make the argument, of course, but what I'm suggesting is that, in concept, if someone said, Resident Evil 4 is coming, it's going to have this, 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 and it's not going to have this, 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 you can make this video. You can be like, you see what they've done? Old Resident Evil had this. New Resident Evil doesn't. It's like, yeah, Resident Evil 4 is possibly one of the most beloved Resident Evil games. So, clearly we need to be more specific. Mm -hmm. They removed all aspects of player accountability and decision-making for the benefit of a general, non-Resident Evil demographic of players, hoping the presentation would be so impressive that people wouldn't notice. How do you deal with many Resident Evil fans saying this game was awesome? Because we had that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Like, I'd be curious um, what he would I say mean, to them. I mean, it, it made me feel you like the series was like to get beat up a lot. The thing is, Village was not yeah, like this... broken from the ground up in terms of concepts. Like, all this could have worked. Everything was out of balance, and the like fundamental yeah. game uh, shooting mechanics. We had loads to complain about that. Is yeah, the story was bad. The characters were bad. There was a lot of bad gameplay decisions in terms of just navigating the environments. You'd have those those forks in the road where one of them would lead to the cutscene that you couldn't get back from and the other would lead to like upgrades and goodies to make your character better and you didn't know which one was which. It just like basic 
basic video game fuck ups like that were throughout the whole game. Well, because uh, yeah, and the reason I bring it up is just like if you're gonna make the statement, this isn't made for like Resident Evil fans. This is made to appeal to like the mainstream. It's like, so what do you do with a Resident Evil fan that says this is a worthy sequel and has played like all of them? They just they must yeah, be mistaken, I, I guess. I wouldn't say I dislike this game, but it's my least favorite out of all I the Resident Evil. I can't games. remember if I like, picked I it enjoyed above my first or below playthrough. Seven. I put it above. I put it above seven. I haven't played seven, so. Uh. All right, I, think I actually kind of preferred bit, seven day. Than... I, I think I preferred seven as well. Scary. Yeah. I think, I think seven is. Uh, I think that this game had more going for it than seven did. It felt like they took seven and added a bit more, but seven was like. I'm inclined to like, agree, even though I would say eight is like hollow, right? It's like look at all this stuff oh, we yeah, have. Eight like, is... Whoa, cool! And then you look inside and Whoa. it's just empty. And you're like, oh. Oh yeah, eight is definitely at best an, an, an empty game. But it, it, in actuality, it's a bad game. Yeah. And oh, then they slap seven. Don a bullshit extreme difficulty to satisfy the hardcore. <laughs> oh. Just oh, we're back here again. <laughs> oh, Is that the connection to God of War? Does he not? Does he not like hard video Wait, but, games? Period. But hang, hang on, hang on. Don't the other the older Resident Evils have really hard difficulties, right? Yeah, yeah but they, they're not bullshit. They're not bullshit because they make they challenge you yeah. on inventory management and puzzles, Mel. This is. Only in the the, I mean yeah, but you you're telling me that he's not telling me that. Yeah, even though Resident Evil Four has the <laughs> same attaché case system as as Eight does. Well, as he said, Ranks uh, Eight does not have item management. It simply has creative encounters. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. That's like what, they I... did with God of War. So that if anybody complains about how this game has been watered down and it's too basic, tryhards who have no understanding of what a Resident Evil game is. Oh my god, dude. Why Make an argument. Or... Don't just Ow. fucking saw you out. Make an argument. Did he did What's he stream so... these games at the high difficulties and he failed and his chat made it's fun lame. of him and so like... this is his way of getting back at him? Like, what a p pathetic lad. Just, just... Ugh. Stop crying. Like, just make the arguments. Like, you you can do it. You can say, like, look at this encounter in God of War Ragnarok where on, I don't know, neutral difficulty, it's relatively balanced. You have to do this, that, and the other. And then on the hardest difficulty, you just have to do the same thing a hundred times in a row to eventually kill the thing. Like, you could make these arguments, but he's just instead gone like, shut up, bitch. You don't understand Resident Evil design if you think this is good. Like, yeah, try okay. hard. I guess it is only a ten minute video, but I feel like you could have said more. Mm. Is can respond by saying, "Oh yeah, we'll play it on the extreme difficulty and see how easy it is." When it's not about the combat difficulty and enemy sponginess and taking lots of damage. Finally, there's a some like why didn't why isn't the video <laughs> about something. that? Yeah. Why have you just thrown that on right at the end, being like it's not about enemy sponge? It's like no, of course, but they wouldn't argue that is either, would they? They wouldn't say, "Oh, it's good because enemies have loads of health." Well, well yeah, I mean, spongy. maybe. Earlier on, when he was setting the premise that he made all his points in his previous video, is that what he's referring to? No, well, uh, I think he... I don't even think if so. he's uh, making a video here that relies on those points, you've got to make them again, if that's the case. Of course. You can't just be like, oh, I've... Well, he's, he was talking about his issues with the castle, is what he was in the other video, as far as I remember. But even still, you need to tell us if that's the crux of the point. Oh, I won't argue with that. I just think that's what happened here. Because, of course, if he had said... Everything in God of War sucks on the hardest difficulty because it's just a matter of everything's super healthy. It would be tempted to be like, well, if you knew how to use the combat system, it becomes a hell of a lot easier. That's just, and it's not on, it's hard not to make these arguments when we saw it in real time with a uh, synthetic man, like not knowing how to work it, being like, it's too hard. You know, if we saw examples of him doing really well and still having to deal with ridiculously healthy enemies constantly or something, it's like, I feel like you'd have a much better standing. But instead, and, and remember, what did he say was missing in God of War? The enemies hitting you on the walls, the fact that there's like no box puzzle with archers shooting at you, or that there's no, uh, you know, walking across beams while like big old knives are coming at you. As if if those things were in God of War 2018, which they could have been, by the way. There's no reason for them not to be other than the fact that the devs did not think those were valuable challenges for the player to put in, which I... I'm inclined to agree with a lot of them, if you know what I mean. Like, the Underworld whole mm -hmm. segment, I would've fucking lost that. I'd've been like, listen, I know you probably worked for a while on this, but it is nothing but pain. Like, people fucking <laughs> hate playing this. It's like, yeah, but if you know what you're doing, it's like, if you know what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> <got the> <laughs> if, 
<laughs> yeah. No, a lot of people so, won't get to the point where they will know what they are doing. So you <sighs> think he thinks if those things were introduced in the new God of War games, it would be better? He's, he was explicit. He said the, the change of hard to easy in the older games meant yeah. they still had to beat those puzzles. But in the new games, they don't because they're not present because the philosophy is we've got to make it so that the average person can get through. Even though, had they put them in, had they been difficult, even more difficult, let's say, as we pointed out, on an easy version of that difficulty, you can make all the puzzles way easier. Right. More than enough. And, and if you don't think so, that's just a lack of imagination on your part as a game dev or a game analyzer. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. So yeah, I think he's is, this argument's broken at several points. Like, I don't think it represents reality, and I don't think, in theory, it even matches, because we, we know how to make puzzles easier and harder. I still want to know how that this is all God of War's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think it's just a catchy title. That's the only reason he's put it in, because I ultimately yeah. the point would just be that mainstream gaming has yeah. led to a decrease in sort of challenge or creative challenge, which there's an argument to be made, but it ain't this. It's, I mean, yeah, yeah it, it, it implies that when they made Resident Evil Village, they were like, man, look at God of War. We need to do that. And bosses with a million hit points. None of that stuff fixes the massive gameplay issues these games have. And when I talk about developers not caring, this is what I'm talking about. I'm not saying the artists don't care, or the programmers, or the QA department, and all those people who work really hard and feel proud of their work. I'm talking about the people at the top, who make the games this way. Because this stuff doesn't happen by accident. You end up with a game devoid of any interesting gameplay systems because you choose not to include them. Because I just, you so I just th don't he agree. He thinks that the platforming, all those platforming segments like in God of War, those were the interesting gameplay segments. Yeah, not the segments, combat. Not the combat. Not the combat. Which is mm -hmm. what like a fucking alien pretending to be a human says. I just don't get why uh, he was saying... You know, let's pretend it did have it. Um, and he was like, okay, so God of War original on the hardest difficulty, when you put it down to easy, good God, they wouldn't his possession be they destroyed the combat. They made it so easy you can just fucking tap square. But luckily, I, thank God, they kept the puzzles as hard as they were. Whoa, that was, I was close. Thinking, it was, I was thinking it would, the same thing, but the other way around, which yes. is surely this problem could still exist with those games, regardless of whether they have platforming yeah. or puzzles, that if you had a higher difficulty, couldn't it easily fall into the same trap of having bullet spongy enemies? Oh, or, you're going um, a different route than I was. Oh, well, well I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, talking about how Resident Evil has inventory management, or how God of War old games had platforming and puzzles, is like unrelated to whether or not including higher difficulty levels would still have bullet spongy enemies or just bullshit, you know, bullshit uh, encounters or whatever he yeah. said. It they're, doesn't address they're totally that point. independent. And also, mm -hmm. it w if he's bitching and whining because he's not good enough at video games, so if oh, God of War 2018 had those platforming segments, it wouldn't. It wouldn't impact at all his complaint that it's just a bullshit difficulty where yeah, you exactly. just die a lot. Yeah. It it's literally wouldn't change anything. By the way. Exactly. It, if no, his, no, if his no, problem is the combat, is, he needs to highlight the mechanics. Point. This is an irrelevant it is an irrelevant observation, and it was what led the video. And if we could be a little spicy, what if someone oh. made the video oh, always like so Resident Evil Village drops and they say, Oh fuck, what an amazing game. Yeah, Loved like it. And they talk about all the things like Oh, the characters are so amazing and different, and the mm -hmm. landscapes and stuff. And I, I was so into Ethan Winters. <sighs> oh my god, the combat just top notch, and I was bouncing. Oh, cool, 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 cool. And then Resident Evil One, like original drops, and they play it and they go, "Oof, this is just indicative of the modern sludge of video games." They couldn't even be bothered to have like a full combat system with all kinds of enemies. Instead, you got like very few enemies. You have to awkwardly try and either avoid or kill with your one bullet. Because they, they couldn't be asked to create actual challenges. They instead just hamper you in resources completely. And then they drop so like, oh, do you want to grab the, the sack of flour? That might be useful in five hours. <laughs> and see what I mean? Is this like this this is indicative yeah, of modern it. gaming development where they've gotten so lazy they just put shit in your way. Do you remember some of the scorn puzzles, Rags, that were like boring as hell? Oh god. No, I think in that entire game there was only like two puzzles I actually liked. And the rest were just like a boring chore and a waste of time. I guess the point I'm making uh, is when yeah. you go this broad, you could just make any narrative and it matches. It's like, yeah, whatever. Basically, yeah. If you um if you pretend like you're not 
you know, full of hindsight over which one was first or second. And you got to be specific about the mechanics or you never know how you can, you know, sort of describe things to paint a picture. If they just, like, if God of War 2018 or Ragnarok, they're like, okay, we listened to you, we put in a puzzle, and it's just, you have to <laughs> place, like, you have, like, ten stones, and you've got to put them all in the right slots, and they're all different shapes, but they match the indentations, and Kratos walks when he picks them up and drags them toward it. You'd just be like, this is the worst fucking thing ever. And he's like, yeah, but it's a puzzle. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay man. Is, uh... huh. And, like, if you put one in the wrong slot, and they look similar, it's a game over, and you have to redo it. Yeah, oh, the perfect. floor breaks. Perfection. <laughs> perfection. As long as there's no bullet spongy bullshit enemies um, for you fucking tryhards. I can't believe that a man who I imagine is very aware of gaming matter and has reviewed a whole bunch of games has simultaneously in this video said, we need the puzzles back in God of War while citing the fucking Hades missions, which, which everyone hates, and that he described Resident Evil 4 as not having item management. Can't believe those no, no, two no, things were said. He's saying that we should have the puzzles back in God of War because of the attaché case in Resident Evil 8. Oh, yeah. It's like connecting these yes, connecting these bizarre different points through these, at what can best be described as um, spectral connections. There's just certain things that you make statements on that you should be ready for everyone to be like, blah, 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 why would you say that? I mean, like, isn't the whole <laughs> of making these name. videos to like impart your knowledge onto other people and tell yeah. people how you feel and why you feel it? Like, Hell, don't dude. you want to explain how you feel instead of just saying, "Yeah, this is fine because of the that thing." I'm gonna put it out there. Make it 11 minute video instead of 10. Make it 12, 13. <gasps> oh, what? Oh, stop! Stop! 14. You can't oh, talk that I'm long. Only take stuff. Too long. Gamer wisdom. 15. <gasps> you 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 take that back. Well, like 10 hours, which if I made a video on God of War Ragnarok, you can guarantee fucking to you it would be at least that. Oh, there are, as much as I love, you know, we always talk about Resident Evil 4, especially when we talk about other Resident Evil games, and Resident Evil 4 is just a good piece of knowledge to have when it comes to game design, because it does so many things well. But you could you could talk for a long time about, you know, Resident Evil you know, 4's failures, or its, its problems and its issues, and in order to do that, you kind of owe it to people to be specific as to why things should be the way they are. You, know, you don't want to just throw this stuff out there. Like, like do you really want to bitch about the attache case system and just like, just kind of throw that out there and, and then say it doesn't promote item management? It's like, do you, do you really want to just do that? You know, I feel like you should feel like you need to work harder. A little bit. A little bit. Don't care about your game having engaging gameplay. You care way more about your game being accessible to more people who didn't even like the other games anyway. And fuck that. I've seen this happen to God of War and Resident Evil at this. No, uh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 man, I love how like thin it is. Yeah. I've seen it happen to God of War and Resident Evil. Like, and now what? I'm angry. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the whole thing is amusing. It's not even like it is. This I love is the just idea like, of telling. I'm mad. I'm crying and coping. The video, just you know, like I'm cracking open fucking God of War in 2005, and then play them all over the years. That he's like, you're not really a fan of it if you like Ragnarok. So, okay, yeah. fine. <laughs> you don't like Resident Evil if you like Village. Yeah, which I think is dumb too. I don't even like Village, but this is silly. I think Stop it's it. uh, yeah, I think it's dumb. Village is a shit game, but if you like it, it's like you're not less of a Resident Evil fan. You're just contributed to its demise, but you're not less of a Resident Evil fan. <laughs> contributing to its uh, uh, further in, the, the, in that line, right? Because it's running the um, the remakes, this, and there's some other ones it's making at the same time, right? Like the yeah. over-shoulder stuff. Do you remember how fucking terrified this game made us for the RE4 remake? Oof, yeah. You did? <laughs> Which, to be fair, some of the fears were realized. Uh, RE4 remake is not as good as we'd like it to yeah, be, but it's still as, pretty yeah. fucking amazing, I, I will say. Yeah, it's very good. I, I would definitely recommend. I'm so comfortable it, saying that if you like the Village DLC, you're part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it, it made me realize that the remake team has a better handle on the franchise than the mainline team. Yes. Which is just fascinating. You wonder if that's because yeah. of the fact that they return to the older ones when remaking, and they're like, oh, look at this. Like, this kind oh, of works really well, really, actually. Yeah. pretty good. <laughs> right. And I think it's going to infect some other great series soon, and it's going to mm -hmm. suck. People Aww. are just going to be fine with it, they're going to accept this shit all the way till games literally- This reminds me of like, how everyone 
does the thing like gaming is going to shit but then you inspect it and you're like oh we don't agree at all for why <laughs> if, yeah. if yeah. we were to agree with this statement if, so many people do it's the same with Marvel it's like why is Marvel falling apart there isn't a Muppets movie man that's the big problem <laughs> they gotta get a Muppets movie you're like wait what that's, uh, the Muppets. they gotta do more references to each movie in each movie that's the big problem bro like, no <sighs> no we need more seasons of Loki man that's what's really killing it we need more he asked them to do no nothing. More. Well, that's a depressing note to end on. Oh well. The Streets of Rage 4 here. <laughs> you could have ended it anywhere you wanted. Okay. You wrote it, my okay. dude. <laughs> yeah, you, you okay. did it. You, See, you put a, I didn't want to make this video at the end of the video. <laughs> I guess <laughs> point, points for effort in terms of waiting this long to say no. it. I, I would have liked to sigh at the beginning, but oh well. Good, doesn't it? <laughs> Wait, sorry. Rewind. Rewind like five seconds. Pressing note to end on. Oh well. The Streets of Rage 4 DLC looks pretty good, doesn't How it? How is he allowed to? It's a combat game. It only has combat. No yeah. There's no, <laughs> is there even puzzles in that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, there are it's, it's a beat em up. Damn. Like, like, you, can, you can unlock new attacks and abilities for yourself oh, with yeah. money. That's like yeah, a puzzle. Okay. Unlock yeah. new no, I mean, yeah. Streets of Rage 4 is really cool. I just find it funny. Surely that's irreconcilable with the observations that he's made in this video about how what saved mm. these games before was platforming and puzzles and yeah. navigation. And then he praises a game that is strictly focused on combat. So like, this, like the like like what's this icon? Isn't it weird that he has this like, oh, under the mail, I would do it, and then he's spending this video bitching about how God of it's War a, it's is a marauder from the Resident Marauders from Doom, yeah. Doom Eternal. Yeah. Yeah. But God of God of War is too difficult for me. I, can't I just don't do understand it. why he couldn't have made a better video. It's stupid. Yeah, that's I, a, that's I a actually feel issue. like I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he is capable of making a better video. As in, like I feel like you had better things to say than what you put in there. That was shit. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I could make a better takedown of God of War 2018 than that. As a, as like a efforts of it's failing in the mainstream for video gaming. It's allowing grandpas to play the game. It's ridiculous. Keep grandpas. We out need of more the game. shitty puzzles. <laughs> Fuck <Not> grandpa. <laughs> We got one video left, ladies and gentlemen. Oh boy. It's the shortest Yay. one, so don't worry, oh, you're on the home stretch now. Say, you said one of them is for, for meme potential. So. This is a Grandpa old is one. It is oh, five really? minutes, and it is the man himself, the myth, the legend. We haven't covered him in a little bit, but you'll know oh, him. Boy. You'll know him so well. Okay. Oh, oh really? This is. Yeah. Oh no! It's, it's oh, Robert. God. This is what I'm here for. Oh my <laughs> God! Oh, Welcome no. back, Robert. This is his. Uh, oh, I wasn't he, ready for this. This is a very. I think it's 12 years old or something. His video on oh. Halo Combat Evolved. Okay. What's interesting is that you said it's 12 years right. old, and it just—it's probably just going to look exactly like his videos now. <laughs> you won't so. tell the difference, of course not. Oh man. Combat evolved. Combat evolved? Question mark. Ooh. Is it evolved? Is really? It? Is it truly? Hmm. Oh, this combat does evolve. Oh, I see. <laughs> hey, welcome to my new show. You know, oh when my... the escapists told me they wanted oh me to God. do another show for them. This is the first of his big picture show. Oh Isn't that great? Goodness. Okay. We're watching Genius. It, it has to be an avatar. No, is he? He's, I didn't... <laughs> he's not evolved at all. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't quite process what was going on, but when they said it could be a show where I just get up on my soapbox and say whatever I want about whatever random nerdy thing is on my mind at the moment, while these pop art representations of my fractured psyche spell out my own. So it's state. always oh, been okay. a thing. These yes. really long sentences. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. Is this another one of his videos where we have to play it at 0.5 times speed? I'm hoping we'll get away with. I hope He's not talking too fast, it's just. These are long sentences, dude. Oh, yeah. Am I the only one that caught that those PFPs are supposed to be representations of his fractured psyche? Yes, that's what he said. I think you are. Okay. Even though that is what he said, but I was distracted by a lot of other stuff mentally. Mm -hmm. Mentally. It all became crystal clear. <laughs> I am working for crazy people, and it's awesome. 
Okay. Now, providing my producers don't experience okay. a sudden moment of clarity as to the dark and terrible force they're about to unleash upon the interwebs, on the big picture, we're going to talk... God, he was always lame, too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he was all, yeah, I'm getting... I'm kind of getting boogie vibes from this. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> talk about all kinds of stuff. TV, science, food, movies, comics, politics, monkeys, whatever. But because I like um, to make a big entrance... He, uh, I'll have you know, Donkey Kong is not a not monkey. Not a monkey. He's a gorilla. You wouldn't have thought... True. Movie Expo. Bob would say that make that mistake. You'd think he'd he'd be the one to say the actual. Unless he was referring to just Diddy Kong, but he said monkeys, not yes. monkey and gorilla. Maybe he well, wasn't the one who edited it, and and I feel it's important. Diddy Kong's mention. supposed to be a chimpanzee, isn't he? He's got a tail. Do chimpanzees? No, I guess yeah, you're right. Chimpanzees, chimpanzees don't. Chimpanzees and gorillas do not have tails. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. He's you know what else doesn't a have while. a tail? <laughs> he is taking a while, John. For, You're right. It's but for reference, everyone, I mean, we're a fifth of the way through. Considering the length of the video, he's taking yeah. a while to get to Halo, yeah. <laughs> Kick things off by talking about video games. Ooh. These Yay. video games. Ooh. All right, so it's no secret in the gaming world that I'm not a big Halo fan, but Aww. because some readers right. kept asking, right. I did go and give Halo Reach a shot. Mm. I'm still not feeling it. Sorry. Hey, big ups to Bungie on all that brilliant characterization on Noble Team, though. The girl oh, soldier brilliant. is a badass. The well, no, other he's badass... being sarcastic. Oh, yeah, Rex. Because I was like, they did, uh, I was about to say they actually do a pretty good job considering, you know, it's Halo. I don't, know, but I was just like, I don't think it's brilliant, but it's good. And he's just like, no, it's shit because the woman is duh, duh, duh. <laughs> even though there's clearly character and personality distinction between the two. If you fucking gave a shit. Wow. Like, you just no, shit all over fine. his opinions. Movie Bob's great. I love him. He's my biggest fan. I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> Who's my the biggest character fan. on Noble Team who is not a badass? Well, that's that's what I find kind of funny. All right. Look, all right. Noble Team are very straightforward and kind of shallow, okay? But, like, you can still characterize them more distinctly than just the, yeah, the if... badass soldier person. They each have, like... They, they do the, They've got the thing you, where the team has... You've got the stoic leader, kind of the snarky tech girl... Uh, the, the, uh, gentle giant, you know, those sorts of archetypes. The cheeky yeah. sniper. Yeah, they there is an element of, if you just had a transcript of Halo Reach, you could probably do a decent job assigning names to the dialogue lines. There's, there's something there. Well, well. Mm -hmm team though the girl soldier is a badass the other badass likes to stand out the really big guy is actually a big-hearted softy oh Ooh, there you go boy. All right. way to break the mold fellas but jesus christ <laughs> well i mean well here's the thing uh I, ironically movie bob does not approve of the big guy being a gentle giant i just sorry they, they don't break the <laughs> mold all right but well, Movie Bob is, because he's a big off. fat guy and he's evil. So, there you go. Creative. I know, I know real life soldiers who fit all of those archetypes. Yeah? Yeah, because they're, they're humans. boring. They're humans have personalities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those people. Boring, boring, boring it did lead me to a kind of revelation, or at least a notion that had been oh building boy. up slowly in my subconscious mm. finally broke out and flowered into a full-formed thought. You guys know Movie Bob. Uh, Speculate. <laughs> what is this revelation he's had? I have no idea. Um, but I, I guess it's going to sound incredibly people, racist. Something to do with fascism. <laughs> oh, it's probably going to be something along the lines of gamers are dumb because they like this stuff, and they don't actually like stories or narratives in games, and... It's probably gonna be. It's probably gonna delve into game, something for, meta. For a series that started with combat evolved, the combat sure hasn't evolved much. Oh, oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> oh maybe that's why they only called the first one combat evolved. <laughs> even though there's actually quite big differences between the three. No, but I, I, I don't even reach. know if that would be what he said. I don't know. That might be. Know that might be. Say. He's. Oh, but would he say that when he's openly said he's never been a fan of the others, but he finally tried Reach? It implies he hasn't played 2 or 3 or ODST. Mm. More like Combat Reach. But then so, again, Bob God. is not nearly as smart as he thinks he is, so he might actually say that. Mm. Did he, he play Combat say. Evolved or only Reach? I think he played Combat Evolved and he said it wasn't his thing, but yeah. enough people to told Reach. him to play Reach, which is probably like six people, and then he okay. said that, he, then, then he did it. I think all he and says then, specifically is I've never been much of a Halo fan. He just shows a copy of Combat Evolved. Well, that's why I don't think right. he's played 2, 3, or ODST, because he said he's not a fan of it. So I'm going to assume he hasn't played those games. I'm not 100% sure he's played any of them. 
I think he's probably played Combat Evolve because I think he was honest when he was saying it wasn't for him. I what what is this revelation he's well, come to? Wait, I got a we got CJ's gone with fascism. Rag's gone with uh, gamers need like better taste. Fringy gone with Actually, mechanics. Actually, I'm going with Fringy. Huh? I'm going with Fringy. I'm on Fringy's team. Too bad. That it's no, Fringy's, not you. yours. I can <laughs> no, okay, yes, right. I am. No, he can have. I can. Yeah, I am gonna be on his team. Too bad. Whether he likes it or not. So he's no. not allowed. Mel, what's yours? Right. And it has to be different from the first three. Oh, I, I said it's probably going to sound uh, something that's indistinguishable from a Nazi quote or a Hitler quote. Something indistinguishable <laughs> from a Nazi quote. He's having a re revelation. you got to guess his revelation. I enjoyed playing as the super soldiers, <laughs> fighting the alien menace, invading our homeland. <laughs> uh, it's probably big, I mean, it's a weird lame joke. It's like, oh, it's more like combat regressed or something. That's mine. Can't do like that. Wait. Oh, that's the. That's, oh, damn it. I like well, to put I a say it's, it's on my Moa it's burger. Close enough to mine. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I damn believe it, in you, Mel. Uh, you can come up with something. I, that, I, that's the thing. The only thing I had. It's late. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You think about it. For I'm a not second. really. Uh, Morgan, yeah. I'm not familiar with. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I'm not really familiar with Movie Bob, and I'm wondering if he's the type of person to inject some political bullshit into this, and that's the reason he doesn't like it, or if he's just going to say, like, Halo's too straightforward or something. I don't the know. The political what thing is highly be. possible. Okay. I don't know if that's Is that sort of his yeah. thing? I mean, it's not an unfair assumption. Um, but we'll, we'll go with that for you. Uh, Mark, you got anything? I, I think he's probably going to say that the combat is too similar to the other games, that it doesn't seem like much has changed. That's, That's what Fringy said. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm on Fringy's team then. No, he's, he's gonna... it's not how it works. Yeah, so Fringy's got oh, okay. three people on his team. You have said, <laughs> yeah, Fringy the, gets oh, the okay, points, fine, fine, fine. you two here, get here, nothing. Here, here, yeah. maybe, 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 maybe this I'll... is a... Is a trick by Molly. He's seen this. Maybe, maybe he set us up with the. I'm not at all trying to before. save them from joining a team that'll lose at all. No, 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 no. no. I'll, I'll I think, I think you, he's right. You, you eased us in here. He's going to complain that there's no, not enough platforming in the combat <laughs> involved. <laughs> that's <laughs> a good one. That's why it's I'll, I'll give him be some bad. credit. I'll, I'll, I'll say that he liked the bloom mechanic in the DMR and thought that having to control your recoil really made the game feel a bit more intense for him. And and that really got him into it. All right. Um, actually, I think I think there actually is a platforming segment at the beginning of uh, the one level area. where you get the jetpack. Yeah. Jet What's it? Exodus. Ex oh. New Alexandria, right? Exodus is the Exodus. Mission. It is Exodus. Yeah. When you meet up with the but ODSTs, that's not at the beginning. That's like the middle of the game. Maybe that's what I was uh, getting confused at. But uh, good levels, though. Really good ones. All right. Let us discover this revelation. The Covenant is so much more interesting and diverse visually than the Spartans are. Does anyone else notice this? Now, well, to be fair, this... That, wait, but the okay. Spartans, there's... The, they're more diverse um, than a specific group of individuals. An entire alien alliance comprised of several <laughs> yeah. different races is more the, diverse than a the handful same. of soldiers. Who are all humans from the same program, who are in okay. the same culture. I mean, all right. he's right. He's I right. Guess. The Covenant is more diverse, but that's because it's many, 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 many beings it's, instead oh. of just How diverse six are people. the elites from each other? It's, it's literally, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a cooperation of multiple species he, that are united. He's going to make more points on this topic, okay. right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> makes sense in context. The Spartans are a military outfit specifically raised and scientifically augmented to be largely faceless, emotionless force of living weapons. They're a militaristic quasi-fascist wet dream, basically. Oh, right. wow. yeah. oh my god! No, he did say oh, the other word. No. Oh uh, CJ has definitely won, but it might be, it might be room hey, for more, more than one winner. <laughs> That's not fair. He, you're not allowed to say that Movie Bob was going to say fascism. That's not fair. <laughs> Something to do with fascism, and he is correct. Uh, I think I think you will. Wow. Get but to be fair, good. John said inject some political bullshit, which I mean. <laughs> Again, that is the same. But that's just less specific to the thing CJ said. Yes. Yeah. That's why yeah, no, CJ, CJ wins, wins that one. one. Definitely. Chicken wow. dinner. Oh, you guys have no idea just how much CJ has won this one. Our <laughs> soldiers no. is a fascist wet dream. Right down He's to not going to talk about platforming then? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> fascist <laughs> platforming, maybe. <laughs> how, how old is this video? 
I think, like I said, it's something like 12 years. Let me find out. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 12 Jeez. years ago. Jesus. Man. 2011 it came out. July. Wow. It's kind of crazy how long Movie Bob has been around doing his thing. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know how he's still going, but he's exactly the know, same. <laughs> like, down to the fucking fascism claims, he's exactly the same. <laughs> Just wet dream, basically. I, I didn't right. know he was uh, escapist, but escapist is uh, is yeah. done now, Arbor, isn't it? Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. so he's just on his own now, still doing videos, movie yeah. Bob? Yeah. Okay. Living weapons. Cool. They're a militaristic quasi-fascist <laughs> cool. wet dream, basically, right down to being named after the society that wrote the book on militaristic quasi-fascist wet dreams. This stuff has been the lifeblood of the military sci-fi genre ever since Starship Troopers, except there, the space marine guys were up against an enemy whose collective insect hive mind makeup made them even more faceless and anti-individualist, so it kind of balanced out. I find it so oh, interesting. Yeah, that's he, right. I didn't see that. So, uh, so the thing is, he hasn't been given the update, which is the you can now defend the bugs because they were attacked first. That's the that's the new <laughs> talking point that doesn't actually line up at all with the film or the director's comments. Yeah, I 100 percent right. thought that's where he was going. But uh, this would be this is 12 years ago, so he doesn't know about that. He would have put that in here if it was made today, though. 100 percent. But in Halo. Look who fights for the Covenant. Big guys, little guys, creatures from tons of different Yeah, worlds. but do you know why they're doing it? <laughs> Look what yeah. he just did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they're it's the, the good guys. It's, <laughs> it's an, Yeah, it is an intergalactic theocracy bent on the destruction <laughs> of our entire civilization. Just the fact but at least like, look, they're look, diverse. Look how diverse they are. Big guys, little guys. <laughs> like, what? We got those. We got big guys and little guys. <laughs> like, no, we don't. We only have guys. Brad, I'm so guessing he actually doesn't know anything about the Covenant, does he? He doesn't know he, anything no. about well, the Well, give, like... <laughs> give him a second. It might be worse. He might know the context and still does, make these claims. Does he know? Does he know the nature of the grunt service to the Covenant? Does he no. Let's find out. Guys, little guys, creatures from tons of different worlds in every color of the spectrum. I mean, just look at all these dudes for a minute. It's like Reach is being invaded by a Benetton ad from space. In terms of diversity, the Covenant makes the planeteers look like the KKK. <laughs> what the <laughs> what fuck? fuck? Well, I'd like, listen, what at least, like, I, I know this might be controversial, but at least the KKK only wants to destroy one race. <laughs> Can you oh, no. ever have imagined you'd be in a world where someone would say, the Covenant make the planeteers look like the KKK? <laughs> <laughs> what? The Covenant might, the Covenant might want I to mean... eradicate all of humanity, but at least they're diverse. <laughs> well, the... I was not prepared for this. <laughs> this no is... one well, apparently I, CJ I was. was. <laughs> was <going>. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. This is amazing. It's like, it's like this video... It, you you like oh, it took a while for the video to start, then it just fucking dropped off a cliff. Dude, the video just began with, you know, people, people said I should play Reach, and this is where we're at. We're really halfway. What I are you I'm ready for bed now? What are you doing? I feel like there's gotta be someone someone at the escape has cleared this and what the f against what? someone's wishes. And I seriously think they were kind of trolling to be like, no no, let him cook. He must let have dirt cook. on somebody. He must have a, like a video of someone at Escapist oh. like cheating on their wife or something. He's got to have dirt. <laughs> He's got leverage. It's of the some it's, guy. it's Occam's razor. It dictates that he must have dirt blackmail on Escapist. For a minute, it's like well, that, that's being such an extreme a... comparison to draw that I would usually Ugh. I would think it's satire. It, like, well, but yeah, like, I've heard things about well, movie Bob where it's just like, okay, I guess this guy has ridiculous opinions, so. <laughs> Here we Who go. else but movie Bob? <laughs> for a minute. It's like Reach is being invaded by a Benetton ad from space. In terms of diversity, the Covenant makes the Planeteers look like the KKK. And of course, <laughs> these are the bad guys. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! They're yes. trying to make humans extinct. They're, they're in a war of aggression against our entire species for theocratic reasons. Oh, they are okay. the bad guys. But Rags, they're pretty diverse. <laughs> That's true. They are pretty they are pretty diverse. They have Big guys and little there guys. There are Benetton at. Well, I don't even know what that is, but I guess that's. No, I didn't get it either. <laughs> it's is that funny. An American thing? People like oh, share the goodness. insane commentary from different like accounts these days on whatever website. This is one of the stupidest and most insane things I've heard. It was 12 years ago. <laughs> How did this yeah. not get around? Like, what the fuck? It's wild. Yes, he's like, like the KKK. Picked.
WTF is a question that has multiple answers in this context. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. All these different species come from different worlds because they were conquered and converted by the Covenant. So it's mainly diverse because it's essentially a slave to, army. To, to is... serve okay. one yeah. purpose as well. What is their yeah. goal, movie Bob? Why are they, they on reach? What are they Why doing? Do they Why the do they hate Why our they faces so much? Why are they with humans? <laughs> Which is, of course, supposed to remind us in part of another famous multinational slave army that went to war with another bunch of guys. Oh, wait, it's wait, 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 what, 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 what is the Covenant of Persians? Did you watch 300 and he just animates about it? He thinks 300's racist and therefore Halo Reach is also. You know, the, the people at Escapist are like, they, two guys like play Halo, they just go, yeah, I like the shooting in it, and I like, I like the will and stuff. Yeah, it's just like, oh, we need to write up something about this. We got that movie Bob guy. He'll probably say something unique. Yeah, but they, no, I'm telling you. I, like, they I check out the video and they're like, happened. wow, that's unique. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's... We definitely need to put that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> People listen to this. It's like, wait, dude, we're getting accidentally brilliant satire from this guy. He just doesn't know oh, it. Lord. Well, what's funny is I think it would have been kind of amusing to see if we could have sold this as being a recent video from him, how many people would have believed it because of how crap it is, like in terms of, you know, quality of bit rate and stuff. Yeah. Never improved in a decade. Nope. I think his Starship <laughs> Troopers take would have surprised me more if it was from last week. Well, the thing is, he would if he remade this video, it would be even worse. Like, he would say even more crazy shit nowadays. Oh, yeah. I was, I was actually surprised he brought up Starship Troopers in the way that he did. Because, like, me, Mark, and Metal were talking about uh, Starship Troopers recently. We were talking about yeah. how, mm -hmm. you know, the, the way that uh, movie gets misinterpreted because people see a military that's, like, remotely elaborate, you know, in, with its you know armor designs and the, the budget that it has or whatever. And people immediately think fascism. And so it's just like if he thinks that of Halo, he'd probably think the same of Starship Troopers. Well, but like... to be to be fair, fascism is when defense budget. So well, non-fascism is diversity. You apparently, can't leave the military. In Starship Troopers, sure... you can leave the military whenever you want. If you want to convince people you're not a fascist, make sure to have big guys and little guys in your army. Yep. You can do anything. Call. You can get away with anything. You can genocide anybody as long as you have big guys and little like guys. Like someone sees it. you commit a war crime, you just point to a little guy. You're like, hey, look. He's on my team. Look how little he is. And the guy yep. like salutes. Oh, little little guy. I'm with him. I'm That's little yip yap over but there. come on, how many That's people actually guy. play Halo for the context? Think about how this looks when viewed uh, in the macro. A good number Military of people play Halo. 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 <laughs> Everyone. Halo the story. Halo has a long series of novels. Yeah, no. I mean, the games, the games no. in and of themselves have a good story. So. You take no. that back. A lot of no. memorable no. moments and characters. But, I mean, uh, okay. Spartans. But come on, how many people actually play Halo for the context? Think about how Yeah, this like, why would you say there's a campaign on Halo? Halo campaigns are well regarded. Yeah, they and are. And played. Yeah. And played over and over with in co-op. Yep. 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 The context. There's plenty of people who have, Is like, it, Halo's not Call of Duty. Of their friends playing <laughs> Halo co-op at whatever age. Halo is not like Call of Duty, where there are plenty of people who do not play the campaign and would be surprised to even know it existed. The context. Mm. Think about how this looks when viewed in the macro. Militaristic culture visibly pretext on submission of individual self to quasi-fascist collective equals good. Oh, they're just trying to not die. That's they're, it. They're, they're doing their best to not get wiped out. They might have to. If, you, if you're if you're fighting in an existential you know war for your existence and you, you're you're losing, you're not doing all that good, and so you lean into the defense budget. I don't know if I don't know if it's fair to call you a fascist at that point. It just seems They're a little mean-spirited. Is it Bob also a guy who wants to live in space? Well, he wants well, to live in space yeah, and should, wipe out well, yeah, all conservatives. Well, yeah, because the Covenant are in space. Did he say he, he want to wipe really, out as many as 70, 75 percent of the population? So he yeah. wants this, uh, 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 I guess, organization full of pseudo-fascists. Well, I feel people. like the population would be a hell of a lot less diverse if we wiped out seventy-five percent of it. Just saying. Yeah, Movie that, Bob would not inherent. approve of the elites Ugh. leaving the Covenant. He'd say he'd call them traitors. They're making it less diverse by leaving. I think he would welcome our new Covenant overlords. <laughs> he'd be like, well, look, they got little guys, big guys, guys with tentacles. It's great. I'm a big guy. Multiple races and species working together to a common goal equals 
The evil. common goal of destroying <laughs> humanity, yes. <laughs> also, humanity, which has, in a oh. different context, multiple races and many different cultures and religions and political orientations, they're all kind of pooling their shit together, too, so they don't fucking die. Exactly. They're coming into working towards a common part. goal. What goal, movie Bob? <laughs> what goal <laughs> what might that be? Hmm. To do? Why would, would you not apply this to the Germans in the 40s? They were all getting together for, you know, just to, to uniting for a common goal. It's like, what? They They're were doing divisive. That yeah, they were. I mean, when the skip. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. God. We have a swastika oh, in our Halo gosh. Reach review. Oh, oh no. 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 Fuck, we gotta hear the context. If you loved Halo, you're gonna love American history. Yeah, seriously. All equals evil. I mean, when the skinheads and neo-Nazi bigots in general talk down about how diversity is bad and yet why, why is the, the cat and the well, dog? What's because well, the they're, they're multiple species, different very... species working together. I guess. Look, sure. there's a big guy and a little guy. Hmm. The races isn't this usually the basis of their crazy argument that mixed societies or mud races or whatever they call them tend what to be the these. What, <laughs> what, what are we talking about? What is happening? Why are you making me think about Hitler in your Halo Reach video? <laughs> I, I just wanted to shoot the aliens. What? Is... <laughs> They're trying to kill me, Bob. <laughs> Have you thought about how diverse I mean, they are, though? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Bob, I just hell. want to video games, man. What happened, Bobber? <laughs> like, you need to calm down. <laughs> what is going on? Uh. Or whatever they call them, tend to be these destructive, unclean hordes, while pure cultures emphasizing sameness and conformity are superior. Look, I'm not here to accuse Bungie of promoting fascism. <laughs> yeah, because that would be really what? fucking stupid. Yeah, I mean, you're you're, you're kind of doing that a little what bit. What you're doing, I don't know. You're kind of doing it. You're implying it softly. I wonder what he feels about Dune. I don't. His head would explode. Mm. Especially <laughs> since what we do see of Spartan creation does cast the whole thing in an air of morally ambiguous gray and holy crap! No, no, it's not morally ambiguous. It was a bad thing to do. It's bad. It's yeah. It's not. It's never. It's, it's never depicted as morally um, ambiguous. Especially when you add on the additional context that they weren't created to stop the covenant. They were created right. to stop insurgencies. Mm. So the covenant just came along at the right time for them to be pivoted into that role. There's like right. a lot to talk about there. It's something. That, something that the show sure as hell isn't particularly interested in delving into <laughs> all that much. Um, I know. Games and particularly the novels are very clear that it was uh, not a. You're gonna take a. You're gonna get some renegade points for that one. Wait, wait. Can we go back to that? Did his no. eyes just turn blue? So hold up. You got this young guy. Well, oh no! Just like the well-shaved <laughs> head turned just into like the Hitler. ultimate human weapon, and you know it worked because his eyes are blue now. Uh, Bungie, that's no. some pretty scary unintended symbolism there. This is some kind of <laughs> I've parody, never heard right? This before. Right? Okay. Guys, we, we should have stopped Movie Bob 12 years ago. What, <laughs> what did we do? I don't think we let this happen. Now. <laughs> like, the signs were already incredible. there. Like, I, we, just, we, we failed, like, as a race. <laughs> we like, were as the human did. race. That's we not our failed. fault, but there's outliers like Movie I don't Bob. know, I feel responsible a little bit, at least. Remember, Trump stole his Halloween. That's true. And that's a big deal because that's the that's the candy holiday. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, that's wait, why is not my only my fault. God damn it. <laughs> the show is called The Big Picture after all, and in this case the big picture isn't the creepy fascist undertones in Halo or the rather embarrassingly vast pantheon of Heinlein wannabe space marine stories. It's the fact that this primitive tribalistic idea of the pure and thus noble monoculture under threat How does he square away the fact that well, not the a... human... How does he even square away the fact that humanity then worked with the uh, with the elites in Halo 3? Well, he I was gonna ask all of humanity the, fighting on right our side in Halo. <laughs> well, he can't call it a monoculture because you literally threw a, in the first mission of Reach. You have to have I an interpreter to talk to the locals because you don't know how to do it because they're a different culture from a different part of the planet. I, it's just how how has he gotten 
how did he do this? How did he end up straying this this far into insanity? It's pretty straightforward. The Covenant are an alliance of aliens that are seeking to exterminate all of humanity, and humanity is fighting back. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. But at least the Covenant are diverse. They got big guys and little guys. I just all yeah. working I, I for a common he, goal. I love how he still glosses over the fact that the grunts are enslaved. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're enslaved. Yeah, but still, though. It like, literally so they literally mentioned up. the Grunt Rebellion in Halo 2. I'm the just still hung up on the, on the fact that this is not on his own channel, but on the Escapist channel. <laughs> like, they just let that happen. I, that, I, I love the idea that he uploads it. He's wild, like, you gotta, you gotta watch it before we release it. He's like, oh, I don't think we need to do that, do we? And he's like, nah. Nah. I can't. <laughs> like, if I hired someone to make a Halo Reach review, and it was five minutes long, and this is what it was, they'd be fired on the spot. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I might be like, we could release this on April 1st. <laughs> That's about it, like, just so you know. ...culture is still so tragically pervasive in the human imagination that it even crops up here. Which is especially ironic since the whole idea of the Covenant as bad guys is supposed to be critical of blind loyalty to arcane belief systems. Why does some part of our It is, though. He it is. Supposed to be, well, but yeah. it is. Humans That's are fighting the for their lives. The game, is, that he's real, is that he realizes that he was misled. Misled into doing terrible things based on a lie. It's all yeah. humans, too. Most of the time you spend on Earth in the entire series is in Africa. That's right. Psyche still fear the concept of racial or cultural. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, what? What did Bungie mean by that? You can go to anywhere on Earth, and instead they destroyed Africa. Uh oh. Hmm. What did What did Bungie mean by? They weren't cahoots with <laughs> Capcom <laughs> when they made Resident Evil Five. It must have been. It, it was the It was the style at the time. <laughs> To destroy Africans. <laughs> I order to have Master Chief being the guy who's putting his life on the line to save the people of Africa. Yeah, that's really racist. Yeah, White savior. Bad trope. Oh, God. <laughs> mixing. And why is it so ingrained that we hardly even notice it anymore? More importantly, why aren't we more inclined to try noticing it and even getting rid of it? We'll end up like you. My dude, you yeah. called the Covenant good because they're diverse. Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Bob. That's, and that's wild. That's the big picture. What the fuck is this video? <laughs> that's a big that picture. is insane. What that's the hell was that? Look about a, at a weird thought of yours. That is not the big what? picture of anything. What the? F uh, I that is my god. <laughs> I think I, jinx I think I jinxed it, guys. My bad. <laughs> oh Jesus! That, that is up. wild. Okay, we all love CJ a beer. He I'm played tired, Halo man. Reach, and then he decided to go on this massive tirade about fucking... Oh, man. I... Jeez. He's crazy. Yes, <laughs> He's a crazy yes, guy. he is. And it did not happen recently. <laughs> oh, my God. It's totally really possible he just didn't play the game. They're like, hey, do uh, a review on this game. We'll pay you for it. And he just... Well, no, the, apparently out. they told him, you can, you, you should do another show for us, because apparently he did so well with his other shows. It's like, you can talk about whatever you want. That was their first, their second mistake. Wow. <laughs> then this happened. And I Holy guess he's allowed to upgrade, uh, upload it, and here we are. It's so funny that he presents this as being, like, really thoughtful when his interpretation is hyper-superficial. Yeah. And it's not even, like, a complicated story to grasp. It's pretty straightforward. But it's literally just, look at all of the different aliens. They must be the good guys. <laughs> yeah. The little guys want to kill us, the big guys want to kill us, and the medium guys want to kill us. But there's so many of them. Different to kill us. It looks different. Ooh. God, that was shit. Wow, what does <laughs> he think that. about the flood? Do I even want to ask? Yeah, are um, they ultra-diverse or not diverse at all? They've got to be the... Well, you know what? I can't predict anything from, from him. You never know what you're going to no. get. I don't even know what he would take away from the flood. He'd probably think they were some kind of metaphor for the Jews. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that, yeah. He threw the fucking orcs being like, you see, this was just like, oh, God, don't go there. Not you two. Then again, he probably has gone there. Well, the I guess he was on that well before, uh, um, what's the, what are the extra credits before they decided to throw oh, that yeah. Yeah. I didn't ask for this. And to think they weren't even the first people, you know? Uh, no, they weren't. Well, I find it so funny that Movie Bob's like format of making videos hasn't improved at all in over a decade.
either in substance or style. How, how is that even possible to be making stuff consistently for 10 years and for you to not naturally get better at it? You know, even even down to the most basic things of getting a better microphone. How does that not just happen <laughs> naturally? Never change a running system. But then, oh yeah, yeah because that's... it's all been working well for him so <laughs> yeah. far. The saying he goes by is, "If it's broke, don't fix it." <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's the saying is, "I was perfect to begin with. What is there left to uh, improve?" Mm -hmm. I mean, he he doesn't need to improve his production values. His profound and mind blowing insight is enough to. To see you through to the end. Well, oh, yeah, uh, right. I mean, which of the three right. videos you was your favorite? This? Why did you show <laughs> us this? To ask you what your favorite was. <laughs> oh, I mean, the second one got us off on a lot of really fun video game tangents. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe for that reason, I liked it the most, even though the video was shit. <clears> but, you know. I, uh, I just decided to check the comments. Many people just pointing out that Sergeant Johnson exists. Like, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. a major and prominent exists. character in the games <laughs> that he just, like, decides to omit oh, as part of his narrative. Uh, I think Film Robert's video was the funniest to me. Yeah, I, I mean, figured. It was the most I, I, unexpected. I, I mean, the second video was the one that prompted the most interesting conversations, but the video itself was very messy. I guess the first one is the best out of the three. But even then, that one was very messy as well. This has just been mm. a mess. It is just all around big destructive mess, which is why obviously I wanted to check them out. There's some oh, yeah, of, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. None of the three oh, had a cool. clear thesis. <laughs> well, I mean, Movie Bob had a clear thesis. Halo was fascist. Uh, I mean, yeah, I Halo was fascist fair. and the Covenant are good guys. <clears throat> that, Keep oh, Covenant. I, like, hey, man, I can see them waving a flag when they invade. Like, yeah. And they just yeah, what, like he's just like, woohoo, and then there's them fight charging up their laser, woohoo, yeah, it's like the it's people, people on bizarre. top of the building in Independence Day, They're yeah, like, oh, Independence Day, aliens. right before they got yeah, blown up. Blown up. <laughs> it's just bizarre that that's the thesis of a Halo Reach review. <laughs> <What? laughs> they asked him to review a game, right? Talking about the, the mechanics and everything of the game, is that's not the big picture. That's the little bitty picture. The big picture is something fascism, something diversity, alien good. I don't know oh, what it is with wow. the escapist. Because I remember, like, extra credits really got on my nerves. And now I, I've learned movie Bob is that extra... Or uh, is uh, the escapist. Mm. Like... If the same company hires Movie Bob and extra credits, I have to like yeah, question I, their hiring practices. <laughs> yeah, I, he he they're, really they're must have. Guy. He's got to have dirt on someone because he's never been popular. He's always had these insane, bizarre takes. He's not involved or improved in any way, and he always kind of drags their reputation down. And mm. I don't, I don't know how he lasted that long. I don't get it. He must have dirt on someone. I hear he's best friends with Lindsay Ellis. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Man, that was. She's great. Man, that was uh, that was tough for him, wasn't it? That was uh, that was yeah. like a rough sort of a turn of events. Yeah, it was. For those who don't know, it's just Lizzie Alice basically said, "Leave me alone." He kept messaging her, <laughs> or he kept saying oh, that I remember she was that, yeah. she was his friend, and she was like, "I'm not your friend. Stop saying I'm your friend." It's like, oh, your... Oof. Mm. feels yeah. bad, man. I'm just kind of though. a way to Simpson, like, no, no, you listen to me. I don't like you. I never liked you. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the exact moment where his heart breaks. <laughs> it's the exact moment where he bumped on and rips it off. <laughs> oh, I, I'm Ralph. pretty sure that wasn't far away from when Quinn got it from, uh, from Sarah Z and someone else. I think it was Jenny I think Nicholson. it was also Lindsay Wells. Wasn't it? It was about the same. It was around the same time, yeah. Yeah, because because they badly uh, hid his icon, but people wonder if they did it deliberately. <laughs> like, like, well, we didn't leak it, okay, but it's just yeah, you know, internet sleuths. That's how it goes. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. In any boy. case, that wraps Was the episode. Gabby? That's the three Whoa. the three videos. I feel like you guys need to recover now. You know, I do need to recover physically, yeah, mentally, yeah, and I think I spiritually. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. before we go, we shall have a little little thing about it. You know, what's everyone up to? Why don't we start with CJ? 
It was wonderful to have a chat with you again, sir. How are you doing these days? What's up? Hello. Oh, God, my balls. <laughs> 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 oh, guys. I think my good. balls just dropped. Um, oh, my goodness. No, I'm, I'm doing all right. Working on stuff on and off. Plodding on, as they mm -hmm. say. Anything struck your fancy with, like, new media? Done any um, well, I've got a couple of things in the works I need to m do before, but... Uh, Probably going to take a look at Madam Web now that it's out. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's you love classic. it. It's really good. Best movie it, about paramedics ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's going to be a fun one. We enjoyed it. Uh, so many memes. I'd even recommend yeah, checking out the marketing. I'm sure you will. But just oh yeah, yeah. The, no, yeah. I've been saving stuff for like months. It's it's been it's crazy. <laughs> funny, funny movie. Oh, it'll be fun to see whatever brings forth. I'm sure you 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 probably got a couple things, but uh, keep a bit of secret, right? You know what's gonna what's gonna happen. We won't tell anyone. It'll just be it'll just be between you and us, and we won't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. No, you have to wait and see. Ooh, oh, goodness. very well, John CJG. What are you up to? Uh, last Arby and the Chief that I did was about Chief taking his helmet off because that's such a <laughs> meme triggering issue for a lot of people with the show <laughs> and everything. And I'm pretty deep into shooting a new Machinima series, so yeah, if you want to check my stuff out, John Graham on uh, YouTube. Hell yeah. Um, Marcus, what about you? Right, Tomorrow, you know. Metal and I will be talking about the film 1% Warrior. It's a new Japanese action film that uh, Metal didn't like very much. I liked quite a bit, but I think both of us agreed that the ending sucked. <laughs> <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> That'll be on Metal Commander channel tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern and um, 5 German time? Well, yeah, Yay. if people don't Crushed know, it. Metal's Forge yeah. is now hosted by the two of these fine gentlemen. Oh. Indeed. Is it still called Metal's Forge? Or... Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Metal and Box Forge, Metal Box yeah, was... Forge. <laughs> <laughs> the show already had a title. I think it's a good title. It's a, Mark, it's Mark said he really liked the name, so... Oh. Wow, what a what a cuck, what a oh, cuckoid! Oh, yeah. you know I'm gonna make what a video. A what do you call it, Mark Scarino? What do you think? God of War ruined Please. Mark the Cyborg. Yeah, <laughs> doing like a sweet it. cuck. So, M and M's forge. <laughs> M and M's forge. Well, Maybe. Boy, cuck. That's like getting married and saying, "No, honey, you don't have to change your name." <laughs> Boo, cuckoid. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, you, so you got the the forge. Are you you making any videos yourself? I assume you're streaming games, right, Mr. Mark? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been playing my way through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, I think I've got some sort of uh, busy work to do in it, like going around and clearing open world objectives. But I'm getting towards the end of the story, and then I might be playing some Dragon's Dogma after that. And every so often, you'll see me playing some Hell Divers because you know the only good bug is a dead bug. You well, I just is? hope that whatever game you're playing, there's plenty of puzzles to break up the combat. Hard ones. Oh, yeah. That's right. I guess the puzzles in Helldivers are the stratagems. So we, we all love the <laughs> platforming in, uh, in Helldivers. It's quite good. <laughs> hey, you can dive off stuff and it looks cool. It does. Yeah. Cinematic. Mootle, what about you? Well, as you already heard, Metal Forge tomorrow on 1% Warrior or 1%er. Uh, you find another both thingies. But uh, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, Streaming-wise, I'm playing for Dragon's Dogma. I'll probably do like one or two more streams on that, and then I'm done with that, and move right along to Dragon's Dogma 2 when that comes out. So that should be good fun. Go Come come check that shiz out. And uh, yeah, just working away on other stuff as well. Hell yeah. All right, sweet. Well, links to everybody's Flares of Flasms in the description. Uh, Rags, Fringy, anything you guys want to mention? Any way, shape, or form, perhaps? No, I I don't think I want to mention anything. No, I do not. I don't want to do that. I don't. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to be reviewing Halo Reach uh, from a political standpoint. No. <laughs> yeah, I really want to delve into the politics. Of, through uh, a feminist topic. lens. Yeah. Through. I've been inspired. Uh, I'm just working, editing. <laughs> you know the deal. Very well. I will say the entirety of the EFAP TV Loki Season 2 series is out. Go check Yay. out our entire yeah, coverage, yeah. edited by Fringy, starring Jedi Brooks as a guest, and uh, it was it was fun and totally not mind numbing in I terms of Myrtle. Yeah, if you if well, you Metal... hope to understand what happens in that show uh, after watching this, uh, you're shit out of luck because nobody knows what happens in that show. 
In fact, I think Mel's been in all of the Fab TVs except the new one that will she she'll be arriving, which is uh, I mean it's already pretty much yeah. Uh, we've been doing wow, Halo because yeah. I saw someone ask what's yeah. the plan with Halo. Uh, I think we mentioned it before, but I could don't mind restating. We've got a team for watching it and reacting to it, like creating the Fab TV episodes. Some of them are you know the, the, the whole process is it, it takes a while as you guys saw with Loki. So next week Wednesday you'll be getting your War Arc. Which is going to be Kingdom of Heaven. Ooh. Brace yourselves for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so ready. I'm Good so luck, ready. chat. The eight hour Bring long it. movie, right? You're going to have to Bring strap in. But uh, yeah, the week after that is uh, probably going to be like a gap for for the Wednesday. If uh, we sort stuff out. And then the week after that, I believe, is when the Halo TV arc will happen. So, of course, the show will have ended. But our coverage will have just begun, and you'll just be watching begun. us yeah. descend into madness, probably. Oh but also, uh, we'll be setting up an episode to talk about it as a whole with good old uh, ER and... Oh yeah, John, who's right here. That'll be Yay. nice and fun. Um, but yes, uh, I was just trying to think if there's any other announcements. I'm working on EFAP movies, <laughs> War Ark still, myself, trying to get it fixed up before. Lord of the Rings is fixed. It's all good to go. Uh, as some of you may know, every Friday you're going to be getting a little super cut of stuff from the the mainline episodes. It's just an attempt to have some form of monetization as well as it's another form of people being able to watch it. And uh, I assume that'll be fun for you. Then we got catch-ups every Monday. And, uh, well, more you have every Saturdays, as should be expected. Other than that, I got nothing else to say. Anything else for anybody else? I want to, I, I, just a general thing, I want to try to do more this year. I want to I wanna do more party gaming streams again. We haven't been doing we a lot of We need to do those. small gaming stuff, it's true. It's true. Yeah. New Year resolution. I mean, especially like the... the, the Metal's birthday? Rumble party. Uh, kind of yeah, yeah, Mario? yeah, yeah, Humble, did, but... yeah. Rumble party, that was it. Or Pummel Humble. party. Rumble party, but <laughs> uh, that's always that too, fun yeah. stuff. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to make it my, my mission to make more of these uh, this year, make it happen, whoever is available at the time, but... Uh, yeah, I think that those are always really fun, and we kind of been neglecting those. Uh, so I want to bring it back. I want to bring him back. Just so nice. Just one thing. I'm I inclined to mention. agree. Yeah. Um, is there anything else before we sign off? The Gentleman's Tom. a really good show. It is. Highly recommend it. It was also fun. Um, all right, then. Well, thank you all for keeping us company. Thank you for the kind messages and generous donations. They shall all be addressed, don't you worry, in the future. But for now, good oh. morning, good night, good afternoon, all of them and everything. Yep. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Bye. We'll see you later. See ya. Bye-bye.